What's going on, chat? So before I've even had a chance to fully get on my character, I just got a quote-unquote fax saying that the mayor was arrested. Which is kind of a bummer. Because we had planned on... S the whole reason I'm on early is to swear him in. If they'd sent that fax about ten minutes ago, we would have been starting at normal time. <laughs> What if we just take a Marshall car? You think anyone would stop us from just taking a Marshall car? You are very welcome, ma'am. Hello, Mr. Rehnquist. Hey, just the man I need. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> That's Chris, he's working. Oh. Uh, this is like Mr. Chris. Can I steal you for a moment, actually? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Hello, Chief Justice. Is that is that not just that's not just Wade with cowboy spurs? Well, it is, but I think he's part of this whole thing that's happening because uh, apparently we're all under threat of being killed right now. Well, apparently the mayor's also been arrested. Yeah, and so I'm getting a lot of questions <laughs> about that. Um, uh, Wade signed the warrant, but the prosecution doesn't want to hand over the appendix with probable cause. I don't know if prosecution understands that they can redact parts of it, so I think they're just withholding the whole thing. Um, I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Wait, so they performed the arrest, but they don't want to provide him the information of probable cause? I don't have it for certain from the prosecution side. The defense just came up and asked, do they have to provide it? They are not. Oh, I swear to God. Was there any ceiling provided on the warrant? There or wasn't. The okay, not yes. Not the one that I saw with Wade, which is what I said. Okay. okay. I just wanted to make sure yeah. that we weren't doing something funky. Uh, okay. Nope. I'm, I'm, I'm going to the police department. Is that is that where he's being held? No, he's held right here in these cells. Oh, my God. I don't have to yeah. get my voice down. I'm angry. To answer your question, oh, you guys are to be provided with the appendix. Okay, and I'm out of it. I don't know exactly what it is. Follow, 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 Excuse me, sir. New love, or you can eat us or die, or you can go home or cry, or sir. you can maybe even... Have you been searched? Kidney pie. No, no one searches me. me? No one. No one searches you, sir. We are under attack right now. Everybody gets searched. No one searches me. If you, if you search <laughs> that gentleman, I'll suspend you for the rest of the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I will go upstairs and right into the Constitution right now that uh, no one searches me. <laughs> sir, I need you to put your hands up and face away from me so that I may perform a search of your body. Do you, do you want to come with me over here? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Axel. I swear to God. I'm I sorry. Oh, swear it's not your fault. No, 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 he's generally he's frustrated. He's he's yeah. Oh, you guys scared the crap out of me. He's at Bolingbrook. Okay. Was, yep. was, was, was the arrest warrant provided or whatever problem we were encountering? Did you guys give them the Appendix A? Uh, you, I've just requested Marvin's getting from it. Marvin. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Perfect. Um, Problem. Wait, let me let me grab Marvin. <laughs> I mean, he may be the uh, chief justice of the Supreme Court. Marshall, why are you, uh, is is this because the search or the threat thing? Is that is that the shotgun? Ah, uh, yeah. There were people yes. on the roof. There were um, people on the roof. Yeah, they kept going around, so I tried to. Speak. Good, and I'm also blocking access to the rooftop from the northern side. 
So I think we only have to worry about our building specifically now. I'm very sorry about that, sir. But I was trying to clear off you and then do it. this one today, sir, but one day I will put my hands <laughs> upon your body. What the Oh, my hell? God. Jesus. If he puts his hands upon my body, I will judici judicially order the removal of his hands. Oh. <laughs> okay. that a, I think that's an excellent legal argument. That. Yeah, that's a really good solution. Marshall, who would um, tell me that I can't do that? The, the, the city council? I guess I mean... Are we looking for AD at all? Is that uh, yeah, I should probably have a conversation with the AG, considering the entire right, reason yes. that I should was have that present too. was to swear in Thank a mayor who's... Uh... <laughs> oh. Also, apparently we're under threats, Well, so... probably, probably they're going to say they're putting him in here, just for security reasons, so he cannot be shot at or something, I guess, next. <laughs> <laughs> Also, someone vandalized the courthouse. I mean, no, we only just, you know, to add fire, fuel, fire, shit. You cannot that does not exist. <laughs> you should not be having that probable cause statement. He is in. He is conflicted in this. I'm not conflicted. We were having a conversation. Hey, why can I? There. Why did it not let me I'm buy not, the? Uh, why, did the it, mayor. why did it not let me buy the gun? Mayor elect and you're a public defender, sir. He hasn't been sworn in. He has no right to uh, executive privilege. What you're saying? Oh shit, that's not right. Do not have enough free space in your inventory. Oh, we have too many cigarettes, don't we? Fuck. Fuck. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna let you keep walking away. So hopefully, keep walking further. I'm gonna remain a neutral party in the middle. Yeah, I gave it to you essentially because you were uh, the one that was overlooking his uh, verification of rifle and violated, so. I think the Chief Justice is getting the front end. Oh, okay. Oh, there he is! I'll let everybody out. No, I was just grabbing a gun because apparently okay. we're under threat. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, did you need me to get you a shotgun? Uh, no, no, I just grabbed one of these out of the marshal's locker. Oh, okay. <laughs> I also have one of those. Look at us. Those are nice. Yeah, it's real nice. <laughs> what? So we should better than nothing. So where are we at down here? Um, obviously the facts went through. There he is. No, no, yep. no. The reason that I'm here is because I was supposed to be swearing in the mayor right now. Oh, right. right. He's been uh, arrested. We should go talk about that. Yeah. It doesn't matter. He's been arrested. Uh, no, we should go talk. We, can okay, we, can we go, go talk yeah. in someone's uh, office? Upstairs, yeah. upstairs, yeah. All right. Oh, I should probably, I should probably uh, put bullets Chief in Justice this thing Lottie, just Can I have a second to your Good. team? Good idea. Uh, no, as you can see, right I have now. nine people following me, no. sir. I am not Whistle very... Chief I'm not available. It's not... We can't do it right now. I'm so there sorry. You go. <laughs> How you doing, Bill Good to see you, pal. Seven? No, it is, it, I think it's two. I grabbed two boxes of ammo. I would really enjoy one day without someone starting a headache for me immediately. Well, you can thank the mayor-elect. <laughs> elect? Why do you keep throwing around that word elect? <laughs> he hasn't been sworn in yet, has he? Nowhere in our constitution does it is a formal inauguration required. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, well, that's even that might even be better then. <laughs> yeah, I specifically okay. didn't. Uh, so then, why are you doing that? Well, it was it was just supposed to be a, a formality sort of thing. It was like the mayor's sweet sixteen. I didn't include an inauguration because. We don't have anyone who could technically hold the power to inaugurate him unless the governor himself showed up. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Well, uh, Mr. Marino has been arrested for felony possession of uh, government property, or in this case, stolen property, Schedule B, um, yep. as well as um, obstruction of justice, felony, and uh, conspiracy, felony. Mr. Bishop can explain the... Uh, the ends and outs of the case for your for your uh, interest if you'd like to I hear mean, it. If you uh, want to hear it, it's up to yeah, you. Yeah, if you want to hear it. Okay. Otherwise, um, um, 
Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a do you have a copy of the the paperwork? Apparently, there's paperwork. Right. Oh uh, yes. Uh, so yes. There's I'll a search warrant. Okay. Do you right. know uh, Wade right. was the one who signed off on the probable cause warrant? So I don't know. How right, this works in terms of conflict and all that, but you know. Just... Uh, people overestimate how conflict works. Uh, I don't there's. Yeah, I mean, the, these are documents that have already been served presumptively on the mayor and his council and will be before the court, so all parties will have a chance to respond and blah, blah, blah. I just I, I just mostly want to know what's happening. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Bishop. It's your call. It's your case. All right, so uh, a uh, civilian come in and uh, report that the mayor had just uh, shot at them at the uh, Benny's that's over here by the courthouse. Well, Santos Customs. That's it. Uh, so it happened right before the uh, the storm, right? So I go over there, and uh, sure enough, there's the mayor with uh, two other people, one of those people being his uh, attorney, the German guy. Uh, Max, Mac Maximilian, the guy we passed in the stairwell. That's the guy, yep. Um, so anyways, they're there, and uh, so it's a shots fired call, so I get everyone to uh, face away from me so I can uh, you know, take any weapons that might be off of them for my safety. And upon searching uh, the mayor there, he had a uh, canister of pepper spray, right? Um, I asked him okay. who gave it to him, you know, because he's not supposed to have that. And uh, he said it was another cop, but he wouldn't tell me who. He wouldn't, he wouldn't tell you who? He wouldn't tell me who. Okay. Okay, so I'm, I'm understanding the possession of stolen property B. Where, where do we get the... Um... No, what were the other charges you said, Greco? Obstruction and conspiracy. Okay, where do we get the obstruction and the conspiracy? Well, the conspiracy, because uh, a cop giving a civilian, I guess not a civilian, but a non-law enforcement officer access to restricted weapons fits weapons trafficking. So uh, he would have been conspiring, um, you know, uh, in, in, in terms of that with another officer. And the uh, obstruction, of course, would be for not telling us who... Uh, gave him the pepper spray uh well somebody who can check actually check the penal code and the mdt see if our update went through for weapons trafficking because it simply handing out one firearm or firearm like thing trafficking be, uh, trafficking big traffic that's a big traffic that's a weapon uh, being trafficked sir that's, that's as clear as day this did change wait no 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 <laughs> I don't think so. This is the same as what it was. Uh, let's see. Where's the... Uh... No person shall without lawful authority sell or otherwise distribute restricted weapons or any kind of firearm that is capable of automatic fire or weapons that deploy any kind of explosive ordinance. Further, no person shall unlawfully transport any restricted auto or automatic firearm with facts and circumstances <laughs> indicating intent for distribution. That's the current uh, description. Okay, I mean, look, this uh, this has already been signed off on by a member of the judiciary. I'm not looking to overturn that. I'm just kind of looking for clarity and understanding. Um, if you'd like to review the probable cause statement, Marvin will get you a copy of that immediately. It's uh, pretty tight. I mean, I guess we could get your initial opinions if you wanted to give them. If not, I can just continue to give you facts of what we're doing. But, um, well, I mean, you know, I've, I've got some rel relatively heated initial opinions pertaining to at least one of the charges, but... <laughs> I want to know... Uh, I think that you're an idiot if you think that you can charge somebody with uh, obstruction of justice for simply not complying with you. They, n no citizen in the state is required to comply with you. Okay. Well, <laughs> we write it then. <laughs> I didn't write it. That's, I mean, that's basic Fifth and First Amendment principles. I don't have to rewrite anything. I can just say the Constitution overwrites that interpretation of it. All right. Well, uh, I talk mean, to your I'm, judges then. They signed off on it. Outside of that, it sounds as though you have probable cause to bring the other charges. I, I don't... The only issue that I'm dealing with now is whenever the mayor has been accused of and indicted on a felony offense, where that leaves us, Attorney General, because you know exactly as well as I do that the council is not really in the shape to put together an emergency election pertaining to these things. Of course not. <laughs> they did have a meeting, though. Before all this went down, they oh. did have a meeting about something. Thank God. I'm sure they'll so. have a meeting about this in about a week and a half. 
<laughs> Might have been about this before. Who knows? <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, yeah, I really, I, I, I'm agreeing. I'm in agreement with you there, Chief. I'm not really sure um, what the mayor is if he's charged with a felony. Um, you know, this is this is just the beginning of a pretty significant, you know, follow up to whatever's happening here. So this is just the first barrage in a pretty significant and, and far reaching investigation. So um, this will not be something that will likely be completed within the space of a week. Um, but there will probably be more charges coming for multiple individuals who are, you know, connected to various things here. So we're still working on it. Um, but this was an obvious one for one that we didn't want to pass up, considering some of the other things that we've been put uh, put onto. So. Um, well, the, the part that I find particularly concerning is, again, what we do during this interim period. Uh, it, right. it's, it's fairly obvious that uh, once this hits the docket, if an appeal is successful, then the mayor continues being the mayor. If the appeal is unsuccessful, then the mayor ceases being the mayor. Uh, the question is, what is the mayor during the interim period of that? Because there are no rules surrounding that. Uh... I mean, frank, frankly, this entire election has been somewhat of a shit show insofar as a, a lack of general procedure is concerned. So, right, this is just right. this is just putting a, a rotten. If I knew who the second the place person bottle. was, you know, maybe we could have some sort of planning in place here. But I don't even know who the second place person was. We don't know how many votes were cast. We don't know who you know what the percentages were. Uh, we don't know how many you know anything like that. We just got a list with winners' names on it, and that was it. So, um, I really am not sure. But I can tell you who isn't going to know, uh, which is anybody other than um, you. So. Yep. So, uh, yeah, you guys are going to have to figure that one out. <laughs> I would just say the runner-up should get it. If I knew who that was, maybe that would be possible. But I have no idea who that Kirk is. Or Johnson, right? Or if, the, no or if the mayor had put together an actual cabinet, then maybe the vice mayor could serve as the interim mayor while we dealt with this criminal nonsense. That that he's would been be really great. busy with other matters, Mr. Marino. He's very he's very um, interested in business. A lot of business <laughs> stuff. So a lot of business stuff. Like I said, first barrage here in a probably very bloody conflict coming up, uh, sir. So. Um, we are probably going to need to have some level of high-level discussion once again about uh, these sorts of things because it's going to be um, messy. Uh, it's not your fault, though, Justice. I mean, who could have predicted that the first mayor would be a corrupt one? <laughs> Couldn't have seen it coming, especially a guy like well, Moreno. It's, well, it's certainly not my fault because it, putting together the rules of a democratic election does not exactly fall on the judiciary. <laughs> Whose job is it? it? Who else then, Chief? I mean, I haven't seen any, you know, I, if I could see any or, or written anything from a, uh, from a council other than a complaint, I swear to God, maybe we'd have a chance. But, you know, I'm, I'm with you on this. You know, we are put in a position where the, our elected officials are committing crimes basically in broad daylight, as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, you know, we have had and will have more of this coming. This is not, this is not the end. So, um, I don't know how far it's going to go, but there's going to be subpoena on subpoena after this. We've got a lot of stuff to work on. So, uh, it's going to be gross. We just need, we just need, I don't know what the parameters are, though. We don't really know where the bounds are. No one's really, you know, I don't know why. I, we can work on it together, sir. I don't really, I don't really know what else to say. Or well, I have no one else to go to. And I don't think the council does either. And it's a fucking terrible position to put you in, in my opinion. I hate everything about this. No, you're really this. the victim here, Chief Justice. I hate everything about this. Victim of crime. Crime, sir, uh, if you will. It, it has very little to do with being a victim. It has more to do with the fact that not only do is my department now responsible for judicially determining the guilt or innocence of uh, Mayor Daniel Marino, but we also have to determine what the consequences and process therefrom will be, which is just an entire lack of any checks or balances. Yeah. I have a question <laughs> for you, Mr. Uh, Chief Justice. Uh, yes. His uh, lawyer is going around screaming about executive um, something or other that's not part executive of the Constitution. Privilege. There you are. Executive privilege. I wasn't assuming he was a thing? president or... It's not a, currently a thing. In the same sense that none of this is a thing on paper, that is also not a thing on paper. I'm, you know, I'm just the, saying because I'm the going concept, into... The concept, as we uh, all meeting, know... Sorry, Marvin. That's, that's going to be brought up, so... 
<laughs> yeah, they can bring it up. You know, I can bring up that uh, on Sundays I'm a unicorn. I can you bring know? up. So it really depends on what you want to believe is true and how hard you want to believe it. Right, you could be a unicorn if you want. Thank you. Thank you, Enzo. Absolutely. I appreciate that. I appreciate the support on that. That's very good. So, as, as, as far as I'm concerned, there would be some common sense that a degree of, uh, let's say, qualified immunity or in certain cases, complete immunity uh, would bar certain actions against the uh, against the executive branch, specifically the mayor himself. Uh, but outside of direct request of production of documents that are involved in the mayorship or... I don't know, him being arrested specifically for holding a meeting in his office or carrying out his executive functions, which this does not sound like is related to that the actual operations of the mayor whatsoever. I don't see how that's applicable. Of course. And that was my concern as well because a lot of this uh, this search warrant stuff took place before he was even elected mayor, so I don't didn't think it was a, would it be applied. Yeah, executive privilege insofar as any of the private communications or anything, you know, private actions of the mayor would not attach until after the election had concluded, so. Understood. Okay. Um, you know, uh, I'm not sure how much else I want to get into here and now. Um, but like I said, there is going to be a lot more there's a lot more common chief it's not just a can of pepper spray it's not just a uh you know not being non-compliant and answering questions or anything else like that um you know there's a lot more stuff that is from a optics perspective uh we will continue to to uh to investigate it but if it were you know even just the notion of it being investigated is scandalous so mr marino is going to have an extremely uphill battle by showcasing himself to be anything other than wholly corrupt in my opinion so, I need to excuse myself. I got to go to that uh, motion hearing. So no, no worries, Marvin. Thank you for your help. Of course. So it's it's difficult for us to uh, sit here and worry more so about the ins and outs of this particular arrest uh, because there is a lot more um, to to be you know understood. So we just want to avoid a situation essentially where what is happening is continues to happen. The lost and others are stacking up individuals around this building. We're having threats on a day to day basis. You know, it seems like it's all hands on deck against the justice system and making our lives a fucking living hell. We can't get one step forward without the entire city knowing what we're doing when we're about to do it. So it doesn't matter how many people know about it. There's people posted up outside our windows. There's people mm. climbing on the roof. Uh, we, are, we are on a situation here and a, in a, in a path of loss of some level of control here if we don't, if we don't keep this up, essentially. So the yeah, one thing I we, agree. The one Things thing are that we... Yeah. So Things one, are spiraling. One, if Mayor, if Mayor Elect Marino, Mayor, current Mayor Marino, can come back in and start making, you know, sweeping changes and start demanding things like executive privilege, other benefits like that, uh, we will have, you know, it'll be only harder for us. And we are already spread pretty goddamn thin with this leaks situation. He told me that he was going to get everyone in city council to make a legislation to where he can carry around pepper spray and then get this dismissed. <laughs> With the possession of stolen property B, doesn't he just need permission from someone? Well, you want to tell me who? He wouldn't tell us who. <laughs> God damn it. That's suspicious. Yeah, that would certainly amount to probable cause if uh, the excuse is that uh, he's basically signing his own permission slips and claiming his mother did or whatever. Um, okay. Attorney General, what do you think of the idea of uh, essentially the only action that Daniel Marino can perform in office is selecting what his cabinet would be so that we know what the chain of succession should be? Yeah. Yeah, we just need to have whoever is next because we just can't. Like, well, I have to go down the dominoes. Um, the only issue is, is that every individual he names is going to have a big question mark around them because we have so many people up on paper right now when it comes to connections to various things that any person that is like potentially liably or like, you know, potentially connected to this stuff, I'm going to have a problem with. So um, we're going to have to find some, yeah, we're going to have to find some middle ground there because obviously I'm not going to get everything I want. Marino's not going to get everything he wants, but we need to have some something. And I hate to lean on you like this, sir, and I'm happy to have a, uh, if you want to, you know, have a, a, an extra conference on this or something between you and myself and maybe some other the 
uh, anybody else that might be involved that might care, um, we can do that too. And, and how long ago did this incident take place? Two days uh, ago. Wednesday night. Uh, okay. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, just thinking purely from a logical standpoint, we do not know who the runoff was on the election. Uh, we have no way currently of gathering that information short of hearing directly from the uh, governor uh, themselves uh, as to what the status of uh, the ballot counting and all of that was. Uh, logically speaking, uh, if the president gets assassinated, the vice president takes over. Um, and as we have seen most recently in the mid-70s, if the president uh, resigns or is uh, impeached, then uh, you still follow that exact same chain. Uh, so what we need to know from Mr. Marino is who the vice mayor is. Um, if you have an interest in that individual, if your office wants to dig into that person, if they end up getting swept up into criminal charges later, then so be it. Uh, but for the time being, we're just going to follow I'll the do line it. of succession. I'll be the mayor. That is a. I'm going to make a note of that, Ace. That's a, that's a good idea. I'm going to write just that down. Just let me I'm do write it. That one down. We'll come back to that one. Okay. I just, uh, I just don't see like, would, shouldn't they be running with their their vice upon election? And so this fucking election was a, was. To it was say a it was rushed, to say it was rushed would be an Shit understatement. Show. It was not Sham. well handled, but it's someone won it, and that person is now up in charge. So we just need somebody else now, for now. I feel like second, second most voted. Makes sense. I don't know who that is. Do we know who that is at all? Do we yeah, have official Aqua Johnson? Okay, you keep saying that, but how do you know that? I voted for him. Okay, so well, did I. I mean, I mean, honestly, that, some, that checks I mean, out. That means Aqua Johnson had at least two. I mean, that's a, that's a good start. I right. For joy. <laughs> I voted for Joy. <laughs> What the well, hell? okay, now we've got a tie. Yep. <laughs> anyway. Why don't we just do a whole nother election? Do over. We'll just need to somehow get this election invalidated, and that should be easy. Well, uh, yeah, the problem with doing an entirely separate election is that we... That would be the right call once this goes to appeal in the event that the charges stick, or if further charges are levied... Uh, but for the time being, he has been indicted, but not convicted. He still has the opportunity Correct. to appeal. Yes, that was my thinking as well. And that's what I kind of communicated. But we just need to uh, essentially, I'm having a press conference here. I anticipated we would have to get this information out. So that'll be happening in, I believe, an hour. 55 minutes, yes. And um, once that info, I'm just basically going to announce that he's been arrested and been, been charged. Uh, I'll announce the charges. And then that'll basically be it. Maybe a couple of questions. Most of it will be returning to the investigation. I won't be able to comment on most likely, um, but it's going to be out there. So um, okay. at this time, we're going to yeah, just try and figure out who his deputy is. Okay, I'm going to work on that, and I will work on getting something actually legislated. And so far as chain of succession and all of this nonsense is concerned, uh, you and I are going to have to sit down with the governor. I think again. Yeah, more than likely. Uh, you're also going to need to. Um, is your office prepared to produce everything you have pertaining to this arrest to defense counsel? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, we yeah. are. Okay, because I would expect them to be requesting the documentation fairly speedily. I know that I would if the mayor was my client. Of course. Um, and I am personally yeah. going to task Wade with following through on this since he, uh, since he teed the ball up, he can, uh, he can strike it as well. Okay. <laughs> that works. So uh, I'll make sure that uh, I think it'll be Marvin has the piece, uh, PC yes. statement all done. Yes. So um, everything's in there. I mean, this is all going to be off testimony of Ace, and uh, Marvin uh, has got some other you know supplemental stuff that really helps out. Uh, we have yeah, we have like photos uh, of them all there. We got a ton of stuff, so we're good. So, anyway, okay. uh, yeah, we'll have all of that to prepared to turn over whenever they want. We had this one teed up as well. Okay, perfect. Um, wonderful. Okay, I am going to go... Uh, how how long was his sentence? On a month, right? Mm, let me look. It was 100 months, 220, 2250, or something like that. 105 so. and 2250 was his fine, yep. 105 okay. months. I do have one final question. Uh, given the uh, apparent 
threats that City Hall is under? Did we con contemplate sending any kind of security detail to prison to ensure, I don't know, he doesn't have to get a shank like you did in prison? Um, well, I... While every threat is potentially credible, sir, um, the, marshal cars in the, front people are the primary to uh, nexus of the communication of when this attack would occur and all the details uh, that of that plan have been produced solely by Jack Riley, who was given a uh, a walking tour of this entire building by so Matt Marino bug, himself bug two days ago. <laughs> so um, he has produced a letters from a person that was only ever arrested for the first time this morning. Um, that essentially indicate a fully articulated terrorist and treasonous overthrowing of City Hall. And, um, you know, Mr. Jack Riley has been the key component of this entire situation uh, and has been Not the good. only person to communicate it. So Mr. Marino has been very concerned with Mr. Riley's uh, status here at City Hall and has been keeping him at his side almost daily. Um, but I'm sure that's all unrelated. So, you know, if this uh, Russian armed attack does occur... Uh, not only will it be repelled, but um, there will be consequences. Okay. Yes, I don't really, I really don't like armed attacks on the institutions of government. It really bothers me. All right. I am going to convene as many of the judges and justices together as I can to go over this matter. Um, sure. Seems like you've can lined. I play? Uh, it seems well. Yeah, it seems like you're already playing. You're the one setting the dominoes up. Don't let them fall back on you, Greco. <laughs> Worst case scenario, I get murdered. Or best, depending on how you look at it. Oh, oh hopefully not. Uh, that being said, uh, in the event that something were to transpire with the mayor, in uh, uh, we can go get him. You might uh, not want to see us. I'm not. I'm not He's saying he's in prison right now. We arrested him, Chief. Uh, well, I know that. I'm I'm suggesting that oh, okay. uh, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that he not serve his time in prison. I'm suggesting that you, uh, I don't know, maybe send one of your marshals yeah. or something up yeah. there to make sure that he doesn't get uh, shot no, from the hillside. I'll send I'll send the security guys up. Okay. Oh, all right, Kerr. Come um, on, we gotta untangle whatever this is. Jake, um, Question for you. And, uh, uh, yes. I'll give you the Cadillac, and you can go was your eligibility requirement? Wait for him when he gets out. <clears throat> eligibility requirements yeah, for the mayor uh, and implied okay. eligibility requirement of no felonies, because I do not see anything in the Constitution. Nope, we hadn't written anything down yet. It's almost as though the Attorney General is playing a very dangerous political game involving uh, systems that are not in place, such as shouting the word mayor elect when our Constitution doesn't formally require an inauguration. Yeah, okay. I just didn't know if we were going to uh, be able to reinforce that a mayor cannot have felonies on their record and still serve. <laughs> hey, Muffin, can you do me a favor, sweetheart? Can you just carry me around? Uh, where's that dumb-looking security guard? Uh, just need to essentially tell us to go out. Oh, my God. So I blow my brains out. Oh my god, don't play your reins out. Don't do it, Axel. Uh, where is he? Yeah, that's a where great did, question. Where'd Chris go? I just need yeah. you to come with me for a ride along, so... Uh, anyway. Oh, okay. Well, he, he's with the AG, so okay. somebody... Oh. Uh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Alright, Doc, let's go. Where where'd did, Chris uh, go? Yeah, where'd, where'd Chris, the security guard, go? Uh, he's doing a patrol at the minute. Okay, let's track him oh, down. Okay. I know Powers is in or Powers and Chain, so he might be over there too. Uh, all right. Oh, my keys don't work. I'm gonna be thinking about something. I just won't be able to hear from him. Oh, okay. Did you like how Reinquist <laughs> went in and grabbed a police-issued firearm almost like it was to prove a point? <laughs> you don't you don't see anybody arresting Reinquist for having a police-issued firearm.
<clears throat> Alright, Chris, the security man. Oh, good lord, what is happening back here? And to be clear, from the <clears throat> Frank v. Delaware case, the holding is effectively that where a warrant contains a statement that is knowingly false or intentionally false, i.e. effectively perjury, the warrant is not valid even if the police acted in good faith afterwards. So that's the ruling in the case. I, Unless there's... And you'll have an opportunity to view the probable cause statement in, the, in 10 days' time or whatever the allotted period is. If at that time there is some kind of legal argument brought forward that that can demonstrate specifically that the affidavit was given in bad faith, then yes, the warrant would be invalid and therefore fruit of the poisonous tree would apply, etc. But in this case, all you're really citing to me is political reasons <clears throat> for why the warrant should be unsealed, and those aren't legal reasons, so I frankly don't give a shit. Okay, uh, and um, uh, what about the security of the mayor? Is that uh, irrelevant? Uh, again, the police could have information of a threat against my life. If they choose not to tell me about that, they choose not to tell me about that. That's that's at their discretion. Okay, Your Honor. Thank you. So, all I'm saying here, Mr. Van Dinkelberg, or whatever your name is, Van Bilderberg, if you're going to be bringing cases in front of this court, have them based on legal basis, not on emotions. Because that's effectively what this is right now. This is an emotional mm -hmm. filing because mm -hmm. someone's feelings are hurt that they're not being told information that they feel they should be party to. Well, uh, we will have uh, access to the probable cause, is that correct? In 10 days time, whatever the original determination was made by. Yeah, I, I will I will personally hand it over myself on the 6th of June or July, I'm sorry. Then Correction. And that Again, is going I, to be redacted. And I'm sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. Uh, yes. I actually have, I actually have no intentions of redacting it at that time. I feel the investigation would have concluded, um, so you could have it as it stands. Okay, that's gonna get the law that you wanted passed. Yeah, it would yeah. be super good if okay, anybody so other than me put together laws on the server that have to that fucking foresee literally every possibility. Investigation to have concluded, <laughs> then you'll have a problem <laughs> And if you would like to challenge it at that point based upon a legal argument, you may go right ahead. Okay, thank you. My entire, my entire life as the Chief Justice is a series of I gotcha, you, you didn't think about this moment. for your taste. I will uh, improve in the future. Thank you. That's fine. And again, I'm not not admonishing you. I'm just giving you very, very firm warning that at least I will not hear a case that doesn't have a legal basis to it. And that's why I held this conference, because I wasn't even going to bother taking it in front of a court and going through that whole song and dance if there was no tangible legal basis to the case. So I just wanted to hear from both parties what the legal basis was, because the paperwork was seemed to be uh, it was not very clear what the legal basis was so i wanted clarification i've got my clarification so i'm going to be dismissing the case at this time okay okay Understood, thank man. you so much all right thank you Evan. thank you all right uh, justice powers can i speak to you uh, yes what do you need mr evans i just wanted to apologize about the, the whole thing on the docket fighting um I'm not the best at writing out like stuff, but yeah, it, it it was it was bad of me to to not put in my um not put in my um my availability on time, and you know I'd like to apologize. But... Well, it's okay. Your apology is accepted. Like I said in my statement on the docket, or in my memo on the docket, is that if you're going to make a very very technical legal argument about why charges against your your client should be thrown out based on a technical very technical argument then at least do your due diligence and have the technical portions of your filing taken care of yep i understand that completely okay um there is a hearing scheduled for the case now um mm -hmm. so we will proceed as instructed um i think we're going to let me just remember let me look through the paperwork here 
Yeah, I think I've got a conference uh, scheduled with ADA Williams and then uh, Eric. Uh, yes, the conference is going to be tomorrow at 3 o'clock Pacific. Um, mm -hmm. Again, I just want to examine mm -hmm. the case. I'm not interested in hearing the actual arguments. I just want to make sure that, again, we're challenging the case on some kind of tangible legal grounds, and I'm finding merit to those arguments. I'm not, you know, we don't need to examine the evidence. This is just like we did today with this case. I just want to make sure that if we're going to take it to a courtroom, we're going to call witnesses and put it to the court that there is some reasonable, tangible basis upon a real argument that can be cited and made and not just, oh, we don't like how the police uh, deployed their discretion. That's yep. all. No, I get that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Evans. I'll uh, okay. be speaking with uh, Mr. Rehnquist here. Have a good time. I think Chris, the security guard, would probably like to be involved in this as well. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so yes, the case involving the warrant and stuff, I just dismissed if you didn't hear that. Uh, uh, because yeah. there's... Is this, yes, this I had is, that. Yeah, this is pertaining to the, the search warrant for uh, Marino, right? And, yeah. yeah, effectively and, the arguments they were making was not based on any kind of credible legal grounds, so I was not going to bother hearing that case. I'm almost inclined to levy sanctions against Maximilian because I explicitly told him that once charges are filed, and if charges are filed against him, then he will have a rational legal basis for asking for the warrant to be unsealed. And I explained to him that charges are not being pushed against your client. Yeah, and he, he tried to cite Frank v. Delaware on me. I was like, oh, okay, well... What what's your point? <laughs> it doesn't apply here. So what are you getting at? Well, uh, the bigger issue that we currently have uh, is that the attorney general's office just arrested the mayor. Oh fuck me! Uh, they have chucked him into Bolingbrook with. Uh, no uh, no security measures, I might add, despite the allegedly big threat that security out front is so worried about here. Well, the security well, threat is actually something completely different. Um, well, this is going to call into question the prosecutor's, excuse me, slash police um, duty of care, which currently, in my understanding, is zero. Well, the other thing that's going to call into question is whether or not the mayor can serve as the mayor while he has a pending indictment against him for several felony offenses. Now, one of those felonies I'm already fairly confident is not going to stick because what they explained to me is that it is possession of stolen property B uh, for possessing uh, uh, police-issued uh, pepper spray. Uh... They are attaching a felony of obstruction of justice to him for not telling him, telling the police where he got it, uh, at which time I... <laughs> really? Yeah, at, at, at which time I, I had directly told the attorney general oh. and, uh, and the marshals that they were idiots if they thought that they could press an obstruction charge for someone not cooperating with them because no citizen <laughs> is required to cooperate with them. Yeah, uh, hello, sir. That please, that please, one probably please. wasn't going to stick, and probably please. not the conspiracy either. I mean, the pepper spray yes, was the only the one, one that I thought was really the legitimate one because they, there was a shots fired call. They responded to it. Dan and his attorney were in the area. They searched them. They found that he had police issued pepper spray on his person. But do we know that it's police issued pepper spray? Uh, yes, because I think that's the only place to get it. Is it? Yeah, I think so. Have you seen any other stores around here selling pepper spray? Well, what I'm saying is a reasonable defense attorney could decide that that pepper spray could have come from anywhere, and just because the police happen to have their own shipments of it does not mean it couldn't be sourced by a third party. 
Uh, potentially, but my my interpretation of that is again, it was just I, when I was reading the probable cause statement, I felt that there was probable cause to arrest him for it. I know that's an open question as to whether okay is the mayor authorized oh, I, to carry this, but I'm not saying there's not probable cause. I'm just merely saying it'll be interesting to hear the arguments in a, in a courtroom. But uh, yes, uh, to be honest with you. Um, did you sign the warrant for obstruction as well? Yeah, in hindsight, I probably should have had them strike the conspiracy and the obstruction charges. I mean, I, I would be... Just in case you guys thought that I was offbeat with illegal uh, argumentation. I didn't, did even, I didn't even have to get into this. the obstruction this. charge was based upon his lack of cooperation during in, during questioning? When I was reading the uh, statement of probable cause in the appendix, what they were talking about was apparently they had asked him where he got it, and he refused to state where he got the pepper spray from. That's, I think, what they were basing the obstruction charge from. I'm gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna be them, completely again, I honest. I told them it was weak, but. If, if you had not signed an arrest warrant on that, then if he had been arrested on that charge, he would be the first citizen in this state and any other state that I have practiced law in that would actually have a malicious prosecution angle. Yeah, I was about to say that, that that's malicious <laughs> as fuck if that was <laughs> the case. And I would sanction the balls off of the fucking attorney general's office for, for pushing that charge if you didn't sign it. Yeah, I mean, essentially pressing obstruction for somebody either failing to cooperate or exercising their First or Fifth Amendment rights is uh, inherently malicious. Um, it's it it's <laughs> it's been ruled in a lot of a uh, lot of cases that uh, even bringing something like that up in court is grounds for an entire mistrial. So much less bringing right. an actual There's criminal action specific for argument, to especially with the uh with the conspiracy charge i believe is there was they were trying to make it out to be some sort of i don't know like a weapons trafficking thing like oh well if the police is giving pepper spray to you then who else is getting government equipment and i guess they are trying to say that that's uh, an ongoing investigation or something of that nature. I don't know if that's actually the case or not. I mean, he that still seemed to be what the uh, statement of probable cause was hinting at. And just out of curiosity, um, uh, did I see a filing about some kind? Did we receive a filing about some kind of executive privilege nonsense? Yes, we did. Yep, that's in there as well. <sighs> I, I really had, wish uh... I really wish someone over at the attorney general's office in regards to the uh, in regards to the case I just dismissed knew the term informant privilege because <laughs> that would have been a they could have fucking expressed that one and mm, yeah yeah i had maximilian come up to me yesterday and try and get me to agree that the mayor has executive privilege and i basically told him look we're looking into it we're deciding whether that is going to be a thing and if it's going to be a thing the exact contours of the executive privilege because again executive privilege is normally something you know accorded to the president or the governor of a state the mayor of a municipality i mean sure he's got executive privilege but it would be like come in scope yeah it's very limited sorry to, sorry to interrupt uh just chief justice said uh, there's a man at the front desk named aqua johnson looking to speak with you about what, what in regard I can go find out what in regards to yeah, please, but uh, please he was find, looking for you. Yeah, please find Mr. D'Angelo. If if the, uh, yes, yes, Your Honor. <laughs> oh, go go ahead, Mr. Franklin. Sorry. If, if he if he says anything about Marshall Bishop saying that he can be the mayor or anything along oh, those God. lines, it's probably then, something along the. I'll if, send him off. Yeah, if it's anything in relation to that, uh, send him to go find a Marshall Bishop to waste Marshall Bishop's time. Okay, wonderful, sir. And, uh, uh, yes, Mr. <laughs> just a question for you. Were you a part of this case involving the mayor of the obstruction charge? Uh, was this like what he was just charged with just now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, no. I have okay. very. I mean, I have very limited pop, knowledge of pop, it. But no. Pop quiz. You ask me a. Qu you're investigating me for something. I don't know what the fuck. It, what make it up? You're investigating me for something. You ask me a question. 
I say I'm not going to answer that question. Do you charge me with obstruction? No. Thank you. Can you please disseminate that throughout the <laughs> halls of the Attorney General's office? That that is absolute horseshit. I will indeed, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. No problem. So, yeah, we are currently left in a sticky situation because we do not have a former el uh, formal eligibility requirement pertaining to public employees. We have it baked into our own bar certification rules saying that felonies will disbar an individual. Uh, however, there is no technical requirement on the mayor or any other such public office that they cannot be currently under indictment of a felony or even convicted of a felony, realistically. Uh, nor is there anything that has been provided uh, either by the governor or the council or by our department that says what happens when a mayor is disqualified. Well, the other the other portion of it is that we don't really have impeachment process either. Yeah, I also explained this to the attorney general. He seemed to think that, oh, you know, you can't be the mayor with a felony. And OK, yes, common sense that is potentially how it should work, but that's not currently how it works. And I know Dan Marino, uh, you and I were talking with Dan in his office, Chief, and he straight up said that the governor didn't give him any direction on what the mayor can do or what the requirements are. So currently, yeah, that's just entirely up in the air. Yeah, I mean, I mean he I could, could be uh... the mayor from prison right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I could write into the Constitution right now is, a disqualification hold, hold requirement. Is there, any, is there any disqualification for members? I mean, I, I suppose there is a bar association uh, uh, ruling. So, on it, but curious if a lawyer and a cop can't be employed as a felon. Uh, why really would a mayor who would also... Under the ethical rules that says... Because who's going to fire the mayor? Who's the mayor's boss? Show me the mayor's SOPs. They don't have them. Removed, and because you don't have a bar license, now you can't be a judge anymore. <laughs> Hello, Olivia. So, just Hello. to go back, we were talking about the only current restrictions on individuals with felonies comes to law enforcement. Is that correct? And attorneys. And attorneys, right. But that's is, that's not written into the Constitution. I'm just speaking strictly yeah, the Constitution. Oh, yes, yeah, it's all... It's just all in prof in uh, professional codes. Like, it's in police SOPs right. that you can't be law enforcement with a felony. It's in the martial SOPs. It's in our attorney code of conduct. But there's nothing in, the, nothing Constitution in the Constitution or any yeah. actual the, binding law that says that. Yeah, the, the mayor doesn't have a standard operating procedure because, frankly, we've had a mayor for all of about four days. Well, I, I was just thinking if there's some kind of precedent constitutionally that law enforcement officers cannot have felonies you know someone might be able to make an argument that, that the mayor being in the executive branch that the same principle should therefore equally apply even though he's not technically a law enforcement officer it's all kind of fucked up but at the same time um, if the mayor wants to execute executive privilege while having a felony I mean that doesn't fly with me either so the fact that they want to cite that the mayor should have executive privilege but he shouldn't be subsequent to he shouldn't be effectively sanctioned yeah, for they, lack of a better they, term they, because they, of felony they, they want to cite powers that they believe the mayor should have that are not written but ignore weaknesses that he should have that are also not written um, yeah that, that sounds familiar that doesn't sit with me the question however becomes from our position I, again I I have actually written a amendment that I could add to the Constitution right now about mayoral eligibility. Actually, just I'm just going to rip the Band-Aid off of it and just call it uh, an eligibility or qualification requirement for anybody to hold any public office within this state. Um, as well as a succession amendment, but I mean, ex you post get a... facto would apply to that. Uh, yes, <laughs> it would. Actually, it doesn't. Would. I thought ex post facto only strictly applied to, like, criminal charges and things like that. Uh, which this could technically be twisted as because it is further yes. penalizing the conduct of one particular individual. It's literally us legislating around Dan Marino. It's the definition of an oh. ex post facto law. Although it could come down. 
could be an executive order issued by the governor to stay the um, to stay the swearing in of the mayor until this matter has been resolved. And in that period of time, because just that, to clarify, the swearing in of the mayor is purely for ceremonial and press purposes. There's nothing in the constitution requiring him to be sworn in. And as soon as he was announced as the victor of the election, he was the mayor. Yep. According to our constitution, the only requirement for mayor is that they be elected by a popular vote of the people once every 60 days. Um, the inauguration. Could the governor not issue an executive order that would. Yes, uh, I think I think that's the only direction that that could come from because, insofar as if we're if we're analyzing this similar to the police or our attorneys, then the the mayor's boss, as it were, through the executive feeding chain, would be the governor. Right, and in 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 most states. Um, the governor and the state has control over municipalities and their existence. In theory, the, mm. the state assembly could completely dissolve the mayoral office because they are the body that has created the mayoral office. Uh, yeah, technically. So that would probably be the only direction that the state could go would be to have an executive order effectively suspending the Dan Marino as the mayor until the criminal matter is resolved. And then in that time, amending um, the constitution so that depending on which way this turns out it could I mean he's going to appeal it we all know he's going to appeal it or maybe he doesn't maybe he doesn't give a shit because it doesn't impact him so uh, this is a quagmire that I don't know if there is any good direct answer on how it should be handled, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, by the way, Mr. Kerr and Olivia, just for your knowledge, I dismissed the, the docket number 0071. Ah, you upheld my warrant. Okay. And the uh, ceiling therein. Well, I didn't uphold it. I just threw well, out the case because it wasn't based on a legal fucking argument. <laughs> yeah, but it was a by doing that they're not going to come back. So no. Um, and I have a if you want to be present for it, um, I have a conference tomorrow on the uh, Alicia Jones case because I'm looking at I look at that filing and. I'm struggling to see where the actual legal argument is being made. Again, we seem is to have Paul a lot Evans of... the attorney on that. Yes, he's terrified for that conference. By the way, good. <laughs> um, he's I'm... terrified about you in general. <laughs> I'm seeing a pattern now of attorneys filing cases based upon. All right emotional attachments oh. of the client and, and emotional arguments of the client but not legal arguments they're supporting and it's starting to rub me the wrong way when it happens more than once oh my client should be exonerated from these charges and the charges should be dismissed because the police did this okay well the, what the police did an infringement upon their rights no okay Yes, and so that that's yeah. what I'm trying to really tamp down on is this filing of effectively frivolous court case cases tonight. because like an hour from now people are, as the kids say, upsetty spaghetti about the way the police are behaving hour when the way now. the police are behaving is fully within their discretion. 
right, and compounded to that by using that incorrect legal guide that I see pop up all the time. And so when the incorrect legal guide tells them, oh yeah, you just do this, and it's wrong, and they don't check that it's wrong. Like, I mean, let's let, let's be it's honest. Sort of the, compounds it. The, the vast majority of cases that are hitting our docket, um, the attorney general's office and our prosecutors have a good chance to stand in the limelight of because they, with the processes that we have set up, they chuck all the losers before they hit the docket. <laughs> When I was uh, when I was questioning the attorney general the other day, he estimated he had dismissed somewhere between twenty and twenty five lawsuits before we even saw them. Mm-hmm. So, uh, while the uh, while it, while while the defense counsel certainly needs to uh, learn what is and is not worth fighting, uh, to a certain degree, I, I think that again the attorney general's kind of got the upper hand on that from our perspective. Yes. Well. So far in this Jones filing, from recollection, and I'm not reading verbatim here, the primary argument is that in the police frisked the individual for a weapon after they had been transported to pillbox, having received gunshot wounds from some kind of scene. And not only is it... I mean, I know we have... Uh, provisions inside of our penal code effectively that if someone's brought to pillbox with a weapon that they by medical staff that they're not liable to be found contravening the law because they've been brought there you know outside of their own free will if they're yeah. unconscious etc yeah but okay your client was first for a weapon as a result of a shots fired scene where they were present for oh, they also happened to be a convicted felon prior to this I sort need, of violent felon I need to, to talk with the mayor what's your legal argument like what is <laughs> what are you trying to tell me oh that's okay if you think if you think that that's a shit show um 004 the townsend case um, i only laugh every time <laughs> I, I'm so sorry. Uh, here, let me let me look at the most recent uh, communication. I, I'm actually I tempted had. to allow the Jones trial, the Jones case, to go to trial, just so I can rule on it with precedent. But that would be it. That would literally be it. I think that a lot of the defense counsel and the prosecutors are actually looking for that out of some of these cases. Yeah, I, I think that they, they are. I think they want us to have case law built up around it even if there is continental united states case law built up around it I, I think they want us to have a case law built around it um well maybe i'll just let the jones case go if if both counselors can't come to an agreement um prior to but from what mail I'm mayor Boyle, looking Boyle at right Rock. now Fuck. i would be hard pressed to say that there is merit yeah. So, case. so this case was filed 48 days ago on May 13th. Um, it was set for trial on June 9th. On June 2nd, I conducted a preliminary hearing. Uh, at that time, a no evidence had been entered by either party. Uh, during the preliminary hearing, it was stated verbally by the... Uh, uh, plaintiff that they would be calling their client to testify and they would be entering the police report uh, the defense said that they would not be calling ace bishop uh and they had no evidence to introduce they would rely solely on the on the police report um discovery was set to close on i believe june 7th so 23 days ago now uh neither counselor entered anything at all on the record uh, for that entire 23-day period. Um, and then Counselor O'Leary forgot we even had a preliminary hearing, so whenever they were questioning, <laughs> uh, whenever we were talking about which witnesses would be called, he was saying he was going to call Ace Bishop, despite having waived that at the prelim. <laughs> oh, God. And he also filed the police report and tried to sneak in an affidavit of his client that has no date on it, at 2 o'clock in the morning, 18 hours before <laughs> trial. Wow. 
<laughs> so if it makes you any feel better, I heard from Mr. Pierce that he might just be settling that one. Oh, they've been trying to settle. Uh, Bishop won't let it happen. Um, they they had a settlement on the table, uh, which Councillor Markov had accepted before she apparently died. Um, she died. Yep. Mm -hmm. She died. What two nights ago? No, no last, last night. night. Last night. Yeah. Yep. And uh, people are going around saying it was my fault. It wasn't. Oh well, I was going to blame you, but how did she? It was die? her own goddamn fault. She was running from the police and fell off of a building. I mean, did Ace of Spades push her? Sorry, that that was a joke because <laughs> he's already hung her out to dry before, so I wouldn't be surprised if he pushed her off a building. No, she got contempt in court, and then when she was told to stay behind, he didn't, and then she ran from the police officers, scaled up a building, and then fell off it. She had bare shoulders in the courtroom, and Mr. Kerr didn't like that. <laughs> Mr. To Kerr be didn't very like... clear, I enforced that across both genders. I sent men out of the courtroom to put on a coat as well. Did, mm -hmm. uh... And she flipped me off as she was leaving the courtroom. Yep, <laughs> she did do that. I did see that. Uh, didn't she also yep. stab you previously, Wade? She did, in fact, stab me, yes. Yep. Well, uh... I, I mean, know if a, a good First Amendment scholar could probably get her out of flipping you off for a contempt of court charge, to be honest. Uh, probably. Ye, okay, yes, yes, you could. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, as long as the argumentation was that it wasn't directly directed at uh, at Austin, but more of just a general, uh, a general gesture towards the court itself. Uh, I mean, you know, people have uh, people have worn. Jean jackets with fuck the draft spray painted on them into courtrooms before, right? And... Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I think that the middle finger is a god given right, but. <laughs> uh, hey, who am I? I mean, I do, I do as well. Just, I would never dream of flipping off a judge. Because mm. the court has to be respected. <laughs> yeah. Um,. Well, uh, it's disappointing that she has passed, but I can at least say that it's not impacting anything because she yep. was no longer a bar certified attorney yep. anyway, so. Yeah, she um, she made that a very easy decision for us. <laughs> Do you want to be a lawyer? Because well, it, it seems like she, uh, she left as she came same fashion and complete disregard for her own well-being <laughs> pretty much do you add uh, a suggestion for you know how like obviously we're getting a lot of lawyers who really honestly don't know what the fuck they're doing I was thinking I had this idea that once we get the obviously when the AG's office and the uh, public defense basically settled down the idea was that uh, for example if you wanted to work within the DOJ, for example, obviously you can go to defense well. prosecution, but if you wanted to be a private lawyer and you're not obviously operating under the purview of anyone, that you should probably do small stint within either the public defense office or the prosecution just so that you can understand the way that the state works and basically each head from those offices can be like, okay, so this person knows what they're doing. And yeah. then they can be our, our, enemy, our attorney general's office and our defense counsel need to uh, slow down and stop trading people as though they're offering college football player scholarships before they're in a mm -hmm. position to offer that sort of training. Yep. You know, as much as I uh, don't think it's a bad idea, Miss Olivia, there's a level of entertainment and dark humor that I get from, um, how do I say this professionally, Mr. Rehnquist? Uh, shitting all over bad arguments. <laughs> so... But eh. then again, I think that we need to be careful if we are publicly, as you put it, shitting on people. Because, let's just say, a lot of people don't have the experience that you guys have out with the city. And I feel that if we, as you put it, shit on people too much, then we won't have any lawyers left basically 
No, I mean, they're not being run out of town. They're just yeah. being firmly encouraged to mm. bring yeah. cases of merit before the court and nothing less. Yeah. I think that the other thing to note, and I think is, um, it's important that we aren't, and I don't, I don't think that anyone in this room is doing so, but even if it's not based on completely sound or true legal argument in our jurisdictions locally, uh, we're still entertaining it. It just has to be based in something. Yeah. Um, and I, I think we're, I think everyone's doing that in this room. So I don't, I don't necessarily see an issue. Yeah. Um, yeah. So well, the, and the, I do agree with, with Mr. Rank was said earlier that there is a level of allowance and leash yeah. that we need to give. So the court yeah. cases can go to court and have official rulings made on them. that will set case precedent, but at the same time, getting a courtroom of individuals together is an arduous task that requires people to attend these hearings and the scheduling this and that uh, so it's a fine balance i think definitely well, oh no um okay well i'll probably in this case slide then i mean i okay. uh wade this um uh this merino thing is very likely to hit the docket quickly i would imagine uh probably yeah since you signed off on the arrest warrant uh, we can just maintain uh ownership of that file as it were uh if you would like to panel it we can panel it but you're going to be primary all um, right sounds good do you want to panel it i mean it does involve the mayor so it, i suppose it might not be a bad idea to have a panel yeah, i'm not just to make it look more imposing or something yeah i'm not i'm not against using all three of the chairs i feel like when we use all three of the chairs people actually hush their voices in the gallery yeah. Uh, yeah, they do. Yes, it's and nice. and I continue to get to play bad cop while you guys get to play good <laughs> cop. Um, <laughs> the other thing about the Jones case is I want to bring that in front of the court sooner rather than later. So out of this conference, I'm also hoping that I can expedite the hearing to be within effectively 72 hours of the conference rather than waiting to the 11th of July. I don't think this case is complex enough to require an extended period of time. Um, so as long as both counselors agree to do that, then that is my intention to hear this case sooner rather than later. Okay. Question for everyone. Um, I've got docket 72 that they just completed the formal filing on. Do you want me to maintain ownership of that? Would one of you prefer to have it? It is a second degree murder charge. Uh, uh, State v. Tuttles, right? Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, that's our first life in prison case. That probably would also be worth paneling, but yeah, given that you were on the bail hearing, again, maintaining continuity, you uh, uh, being on or leading that panel would probably be appropriate. I Are either of you two conflicted on the case? I um, don't believe so. I don't, I don't really know anything about this one. I don't Wait. think anyone is. I know a bit about it. I was the one who assigned the arrest warrant for him as well. But beyond the arrest warrant and just sort of yeah, the IRL genuine, experience, you think that's why you're generally you knowing Stanley Tuttles. I think having people with IRL experience in uh, positions like all, this is good as long really as it doesn't become overbearing. Okay, well, uh, if we want to panel it out and have Mr. Kerr sit on the panel, and then I don't know, I'll volunteer to sit on that panel. Uh, that's fine. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel a strong pressing in one direction or the other to be on there so I, I will be there if you need me to be part of the panel or if Wade truly wants it then he can take the third seat Wade do you want okay. to sit on the panel on that? Uh, actually now that I think of it I probably shouldn't sit on the panel of that because now that I'm thinking about it I've actually had quite a few interactions with Mr. Tuttles just sort of yes, on a personal level I have no level. clue who he is so. 
I they met him yesterday in the courtroom, so <laughs> I, I wouldn't be able to pick him out of a crowd. So yeah, I should probably recuse myself on that one. The more I think about it, okay. Um, if they're ready, if they're ready to throw somebody in jail for, well, pretty much forever, and have a bail hearing, then they should be ready for a trial. So let's see if we can get that one scheduled up. I don't know, next Friday maybe. That would be yep. ideal. I will push. Okay. Can I ask as well, like? What happened? I don't know if you guys have already discussed this, but with the Marino case, like what actually was going on? Like, what do you, what do you, what do you mean? In terms of like charges, because I arrest? didn't hear that. Um, uh, let me have a look. The charges were criminal. What was it? Uh, I forget the exact possession way of the stolen charges property. B. Yeah. Um, Felony obstruction of justice and uh, conspiracy. That was the third one. What did he actually do? Uh, to make a long story short, I'll read the statement of probable cause. Where is that? He was... <laughs> okay, so I guess this doesn't really conflict anyone out of it since I'm going to be the one handling it, but he was shooting Miss Markov's car with a gun, which generated a shots fired call. He uh, shot, shot Miss Markov's car with a arrived gun. Arrived on scene, found both him and his attorney there. They searched him for a weapon. Upon searching him for a weapon, they found that he had uh, pepper spray on his person, which is typically only issued to law enforcement. They asked him where he got the pepper spray, he refused to tell them, and so they arrested him. Or they didn't arrest him then. They cut him loose at the time, and yeah. then they went back to the drawing board and they drew up this mm -hmm. warrant. Wait, uh -huh. I did not know the the original informing party was Katya Markov. Yes. Uh, yes. Although I believe the police arrived not because of her involvement, <laughs> but they arrived because of the shots fired call that was generated from him shooting the. Car, I think, is how that played out. I am fairly confident that when I was in the office with the Attorney General and the Marshal, they said that they responded because of a citizen complaint, not because of a, uh, uh, not because of actual, uh, you know, alerts. Okay, my wires are probably getting crossed, and I don't have the statement of probable cause anymore. Well, here, just, sorry, I'm going to go off on another tangent. Yeah. For our, if we're going to panel this out, How are we going to handle our our panel in terms of rendering verdicts? Uh, I would say... Does it need to be unanimous? Can it be no, two-thirds some... majority with a dissenting opinion? I'd, I'd say simple majority, and whoever the head of the panel is can uh, make any final determinations. Essentially treat them like the, um, the jury foreman, as it were, where they can ask everybody else how they feel about things yeah. and discuss legal arguments among one another, and then the whoever is heading up the panel can kind of state their opinion last so that it uh, doesn't weigh too heavily. Um, the statement of probable cause, it appears that it was simply a statement Miss Markov made to a marshal that triggered them to respond to the area. So it wasn't shots fired. I, that's not mentioned in the statement of probable cause. Interesting. And what did he do to obstruct okay, justice? Yeah. It was Markov's statement that he shot at a vehicle. That's what it was. <laughs> they didn't respond because of a shots fired call. They respond because Miss Markov said that her vehicle was shot. And then they he... went back to the scene, and then they found okay. Dan and his attorney still there, apparently. So, I mean, it's unless there's some, ev I mean, Ms. Markov mm. being dead makes this very difficult for the defense, actually. And at least in my opinion. Yeah. Because they're, they're going to have a hard time proving that her statement was made in anything other but, to, or the police were acting in anything other than a good faith statement. Yep, they're going to have a very difficult te time teasing out the uh, intricacies of those relationships. Did uh, Ace Bishop push her off the roof? <laughs> no. He okay. wasn't even around at the time. Just so, 
just as a obviously a question like what what exactly did he do to obstruct justice uh failed to answer the question as to where he received the pepper spray <laughs> yeah say that say that again nope that's you heard it correctly the first time <laughs> oh who the fuck signed up on that warrant <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, well so, someone's standing here. Yeah, well, oh. <laughs> the, the first person who signed off on it was apparently our attorney general. Um, oh, wow. However, I think that uh, I think Wade's essential interpretation ah. was uh, there's at least one good charge in here, so I'll sign it. So, Yeah, it's a weird sort oh. of circumstance where they continue to use the like proactive uh, warrant form when I think we had a discussion about this before where the police sort of already just file their own warrants normally mm. and I think the marshals actually have the ability to do that now so it's kind of a yeah. weird thing where I don't know why they're bringing warrants to me to sign in the first place when they can just do it themselves because they were well, the mayor. Of, it, it's yeah. a CYA approach I yeah. think yeah. yeah they wanted to cover their asses that's why which which, which, I mean, which has power to them. which has been effective, I will point out, mm -hmm. because now that we are adding the layer to the onion that the original reporting party was the girlfriend of the responding officer, um, malicious prosecution insofar as the you failed to answer my questions take a felony uh, is a lot stronger. Uh, but since it was signed off on by a judge, there's a good faith argument to be made. <laughs> yes. <laughs> also a quick question i'm i'm just obviously trying to like understand this and i do that by asking questions um so you said that he just had, so you like, guys know what, with malicious prosecution yes um, um so it goes beyond looking at like a petty that, squabble or like a um, difference of like opinions between people. people into trouble that aren't what we're looking at is that the so for example i know prosecuting that prosecuting agency EMS out there who carry Mace just that outright they basically use it to protect themselves i know that did not have probable security cause guards as whatsoever. well I mace but as well so presumably other... speaking all of those persons have been authorized by somebody ah. who has lawful authority to issue ah. it to them <laughs> but this is this is the other thing pepper spray and other forget the term lacod like uh, it's sort of the an l yeah um like chad and uh, there's some thing yeah. classification yeah. of chemicals that cause people to you know tear up tear gas pepper spray those aren't unlawful weapons to be in possession of according to our law there's no law against an individual possessing that at all so the real argument here is that that they acquired it through an unlawful means, not that the actual being in possession of it is itself is illegal. Well, so I don't know how true yeah, that, that is, because they're alleging that he was pos in possession of government, as in, like, police issue pepper spray. Wasn't, right. wasn't he but, a police officer in past times as well? So, couldn't it stand to reason that perhaps he might have gotten it from someone in the police department, maybe? Well, that is unfortunately an yeah. affirmative defense, which is the question he refused to answer. <laughs> well, that was fucking stupid. Also, insofar as the marshals equally upholding these laws, I walked into the marshal's locker, took this out of it, reloaded it in the middle of the hallway, and no one said anything. <laughs> well, I'm going to question uh, you. Well, <laughs> well, someone was I... trying to search him. <laughs> I want to... I don't did know. try and search him. Yeah, you did try to search me. That What's was before, word? though. <laughs> yeah, this, sound, this might sound obviously me just making like assumptions and whatever, but again, I'm just trying to talk my thoughts out. This seems very... Because obviously I knew that the the AG was looking into Daniel Marino because of like these ties to the Lost, but to me, this just seems like they're trying to stick charges to him so that it basically allows them to put some sort of my, aspersions on him that no, oh, my, he's, a, he's a bad person. My, my understanding is that uh -huh. they have a larger investigation, which is also underway. Uh, but given that this was, uh, yeah. this was a side dish, yeah. they just decided to go ahead and finish their uh -huh. potatoes before they started cutting uh -huh. up their steak. Yeah. It just... To me, obviously, as a like a outsider, or whatever it is, 
to me, it seems quite political. Like, it seems like they're trying to, again, this is just an assumption that they're just trying to maybe, like, get a win in somewhere just so that the people actually start looking at the marshals and going, oh, wow, look what they did. They actually stopped whatever well, what it's happened. A, so, it's, a, it's, a yeah. it's a dangerous game that they are Very playing dangerous. in relation to this yeah. because, you yeah. know, I, again, depending on how the... Mm-hmm actual proof as to yeah. everything shakes out because um, things are yeah. extremely complicated with the death of Miss Markov um, oh, and I'm certain that they didn't put everything they had in their statement of probable cause mm-hmm. uh, depending on how it shakes out uh, this, let's hope yeah, this, this could very well yeah. be the, the death knell of the marshals or it could be their uh-huh. first major uh, hill that they've climbed and planted their mm-hmm. flag on I'm just confused why they didn't include any charges for Daniel Marino apparently shooting Katya Markov's car. Exactly. Like if 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 the if they said that oh she like he shot her car then why didn't they go with something that was oh like they tried to shoot her car so like misuse of a firearm or whatever well, like but, why why go for well obstruction Katya's of dead, justice? So. Yeah. She can't be called to testify. Number one. Number two. <laughs> uh, well, that is number one. <laughs> He's no longer an effective witness. Yeah. So. I just, yeah. Like I always said, I think it's really interesting that they completely ignored the fact that he was shooting at a civilian's car, but they went with, oh, he's carrying mace. All right. I think it's because the mace, if you approach it from the uh-huh. perspective of all maces police issued, which may or may not be correct, it, they probably just went with it because that one is the surefire thing because it was actually in his possession. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think the circumstances here were, I don't, I don't know. I don't exactly know how gunshot residue works in this city, but mm-hmm. I think it's a bit finicky to test for it. All right, I need to go use the yeah. fax machine. I'm going to reach out to the governor. Yeah. Time for a plus one chat. So I've seen a couple of people mention that the, um, the AG and the marshals jumped the gun. For one, if you did not expect... Uh, <laughs> If you did not expect a bishop to jump the gun on something, you haven't been paying attention to his character. Um, but for two, it creates better roleplay that way as long as everything kind of flows from it. As long as we don't, like, stop anything up too much with it, it creates really interesting political consequences. So... We're faxing the governor. Hold on. Slash me faxes the governor. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Perfect. Fax go burr. Fax go burr. How many times have you guys seen a fax actually sent in game chat, huh? Do I have an actual fax machine? That's a photocopier? Uh Uh-uh, the sound effect says fax machine send. something substantially uh-huh. similar to that and i can only imagine the woman at the courthouse probably refers me, to basically. you so it does seem like somebody is threatening your life over some file which i have no idea what file 
Yay, try some my life. Yeah, yeah, who was, get him sometime. Who was threatening your life? Why? What? Oh, you didn't know, but oh, sorry, we didn't tell you about this. So, oh right. Um, so, Chief. remember when I faxed you earlier? So I sent you a fax earlier about the whole courthouse situation. Yeah, so the, the vandalism happened, or whatever. Uh, not, uh, the, the the place was like messed up. Like we can explain <laughs> more eloquently than I can. Yeah. So when I woke up, you know the bullpen, how there's that box of files in the back there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so when I woke up, that box of files had been rifled through. Nothing was missing, but there was a bunch of, like, weird colored ink around on some of the things. <laughs> and there were muddy boot prints leading from the door into the bullpen, and somebody had tried to tamper with the lock at the courthouse. Uh, so I changed into my Chris Carlito outfit. And then I started walking around the uh, perimeter of the building, doing my regular security work. And at the front of the uh, city hall, by the road there, there was a note that said um, something to the effect of, tell the woman at the courthouse, if she doesn't give me the file, I'll kill her. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, and... I put it in the filing cabinet already under our filing cabinet, but there was a a map as well. So it was a kind of crudely drawn map of the courthouse, and like below it, there was like, like no, it was a map of city whatever. hall. But yeah, oh. map of city hall. Yeah. Oh, that's what it is. Uh, yeah. Sorry, the exact words were: "Tell that bitch at courthouse reception she will die if she doesn't give me that file." That the thing file. is, though, is now that I'm thinking about it, I've heard lots of people refer to this building as the courthouse. So now I'm not actually sure if they're talking about Olivia or if they're talking about, um... Oh, God. Lucy. What if we just, start, what if we just start calling this the courthouse? That way nobody, like, has to be... Con what if we just claim this building? Yeah, this is the courthouse now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the courthouse now. I mean, I have to legislate what happens when the mayor gets accused of a felony. We can just, we can just take a building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's literally just call this place the courthouse. <laughs> also, um, is there any update on when we might be getting our keys to this place? Because um, I remember, I remember, yeah, because I remember the the AG said that we would be getting our keys on Monday, and now it's Friday. <laughs> yes, I believe yeah. that. Uh... I believe things were supposed to roll out at the same time that the marshals received their refurbished mm -hmm. equipment and whatnot, but mm -hmm. um, soon, mm -hmm. TM. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go take a look at the courthouse. Awesome. I'm, I'm curious. Mm -hmm. The courthouse? Yeah, I want to see what all this vandalism was. Oh, I think it got cleaned up. I you believe can, uh, most uh, of it was cleaned up, but there's still some remaining. Yeah, you can also look at the... And none of us have a car here. As well. I, I, wait, where's my car? We discussed this, sir. Okay. Remember, well, you gave it to us the other day. Right, I can give you. I've got my car. I've got my car here. Why so don't you give him a ride down no, to whoa, get his car? No, no, we're the Department of Justice. We can get a vehicle. You can commandeer oh. a vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> no, There's a cop car. Let's just take the cop that, car. But <laughs> we can borrow a different vehicle. We're taking a marshal car. I don't give a shit, chat. <laughs> we're taking. We're just gonna take a marshal car. Oh, that's right. There's the press conference. Yep. Oh, is that happening right now? Yeah, that's yes. right now. Oh. I oh. suspect that press conference is going to go substantially differently now that the mayor is no longer present for yeah. it. Yeah, we should probably yep. attend that. Yep. You do realize this could lock you up for, like, the next four hours talking to people, though, right? Yep. It really could. Well, I, I need to find the mayor anyway to find out who our vice mayor is so that we know how to proceed on things. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. So the funny part is that's something that I actually uh, communicated to several people that maybe... <laughs> They need to appoint a deputy mayor, but it never happened. 
Mm. Now it's just what? our problem. Wasn't that... Oh god, what's her name? That Joy woman that was here the other day, wasn't she like one of the people? Yeah, Hello something. there, sir. Are they using this as the press room? Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. Council mm -hmm. room or whatever. Yep. Alright. This elite unit that Greco has personally cultivated and put together, we're gonna get you, okay? We got the mayor. What makes any of you low-life criminal scumbags think you even have a chance? Yeah, I'm out. You're gonna, we're gonna get you. <laughs> we got the mayor, and now that we went from the tippy top, we're going to the tippy bottom, and we're gonna get everyone. No one. The tippy bottom. From the fuck is the tippy bottom? The super policing of the state marshals or the super prosecuting of the AG's office. You guys are all doomed. Just, just stop about, doing crime. What about corrupt marshals? Who's corrupt? Not all of them. What's happened that's corrupt, sir? Ah, there's been shit. murders and one there. Who's, who's been murdered? Katya. Yeah, right. Katya, yes, that's true. Katya has been murdered. That's true. But the marshals had no part in that, so. Mm -hmm. This Did man, uh, this man with the fedora and pink shirt probably just thinks that, uh, the marshals are corrupt because he doesn't actually know what laws are. Next question. <laughs> Do the marshals make a habit of threatening attorneys uh, when they're advising their clients? Or was that just something you do? What are you talking about? <laughs> Earlier when... when uh... do, uh, do, attorneys, uh, do attorneys realize that they're not allowed to uh, uh, advise co-defendants while they're under detainment? Is he still the president? No, what? he threatened me when I, when no, I said, told the mayor to wait for an attorney to say anything. I'm not, I'm not a co-defendant. What are you talking about? Wait, uh, Mr. Falco, Ace, I think this is just de degrading into an argument now. Uh, yeah, this is unnecessary. Yeah, does anyone have anything productive they want to say? Yeah, let's just keep it to productive um, comments or concerns. Have you ever yes, yes, I do have something. The person of their right? Have I ever deprived anyone of their rights? No. And if anyone thinks I have, then I'd love to see it in court. But next, next question. No more comments, Mr. Von Bilderberg. I have, uh, I have something productive to yeah, say. Go ahead. Hey, Awkward Johnson. Uh, hello, laddies. Now, I know it's been a hard day and there's been some terrible news happening, but, uh... Why well, is Awkward now, listen, Johnson dressed like Santa Claus? If... If I was the mayor of this city, I'd be standing hand in hand with these marshals and the attorney general and would be putting things right. Yeah, now, we there's some bumpy roads ahead. Time. Yes, yes. Shut up, you weird man! Hey, 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 hey! He is hey. a weird man. Now, Let him now, speak. There's, now, there's been some bumpy roads. And there will be some bumpy road to come, but together, laddies, we can get through it. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. Uh, hey, any comment on Kaki's death? It's a tragedy, and uh, we're looking into it, and those responsible will be uh, brought to justice. Anybody else? I mean, I guess, I guess that's it if nobody right. has anything else. Uh, again, uh, just stop doing crimes. I mean, the state marshal department, this is our first major arrest, and, and it's the mayor, so you guys should just give up. Give up, criminals. Stop doing crimes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you guys so much for coming today. Thank you today. so much. Um, Thank you. I'm going to stop doing crime. Drive safely. <clears throat> first major arrest, and it came with him, eh? Um, I got <laughs> Pardon me. I'm not swap. What just happened? Uh, well. Weasel News. Yeah, Alright. Yeah. Hi, I, I, I have some. Oh, that was interesting. Yes. yes. That was a thing. Mm -hmm. I was especially a big fan of the stop doing crime part. I mean, right, that, that whole that would, bit. That would probably eliminate 50% of our jobs, but. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's never gonna happen. Also, oh, they're treating Katya's death as a murder? What? She fell off our roof. Kit was walking around telling people I was responsible for it. Are you fucking what? Wait, uh, what, Kit? O'Leary Kit is or the yeah. hippie He's one? Going spreading rumors no, that you O'Leary. Him. Are you serious? I'm just waiting for someone to try. That is. Um... 
Yeah. I can't believe he'd go around spreading rumors that you killed Kazio. Like, what the fuck? I'm not terribly surprised. Okay. That is not legal parking. That is not how that vehicle should be parked. I found a car! Okay. <laughs> oh, fancy. <Yay. laughs> I mean, technically, you are a marshal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the attorney general put me on the payroll, so... Exactly. Plus, I am the attorney general's boss, and he's the marshal's boss, so technically I'm like the marshal's yeah. grand boss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, like, I don't have your guys' experience with all this kind of stuff, but something seems like... Make it charged? People aren't acting in the... Oh no, whatever would we do? Best interests of... Uh, law and justice basically i feel like a lot of this feels very political basically um yeah i mean that's to be expected out of a budding department right mm. Mm. to be honest it feels like the ag is the one that wants to be mayor or more power or whatever Grand Theft Auto B, here we come. Good luck showing that I don't have authorization when he gave me the keys to, to use it. <laughs> Good luck showing that, that Renquist doesn't have authorization to use the vehicle. We didn't just yoink one, fireman. We... <laughs> <laughs> we pulled one out of the motor pool. <laughs> you can tell that Townsend versus, uh, versus Bishop is definitely going to go to a trial because they're way in hell. Is East Bishop ever going to apologize? Oh, no, they already entered a settlement. I thought about asking a question about that at the press conference. Uh huh. But, yeah, you know, political games and all that. Oh. Yeah, the, uh, one of the, one of the lower clerks came in and dropped off a piece of paper earlier, and, uh, they, and they actually entered a settlement for more than they were, more than was originally being asked for. I think the original filing was asking for $500, and they settled for 1000 Hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> I like that question. Have you ever, um, have you ever, um, like, broken someone's? Uh, right, and uh, well, <laughs> oh, I heard. Chief, where are you going? Uh, to impound because I think that's where my car is, right? Yeah. Oh, I thought we were okay. okay. Yeah, no, I, I don't want to drive. I don't want to drive this thing permanently. I just you know, we needed a <laughs> ride to go get yeah. the vehicle. Got it. I can't remember who exactly told me this. It must have been one of the police, but they said to expect a, a docket coming soon because something happened with the police again. Oh, that's. But he wouldn't. Yeah, but he wouldn't tell me what happened. They just said, just expect another docket coming soon because the police did something, which is always very vague and kind of worrying. I feel like I hear that extremely frequently. Like, we heard from um, Officer Bear the other day about his circumstances, but I haven't seen anything hit the docket about that yet. Mm. What do you think they're in such a hurry for? We should pull them over. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I think is quite funny? Mm. The attorneys are believing... That simply because an attorney is present at the time of an arrest automatically conflicts them. Uh, there's mm. the same concept about uh, conflicting judges. Uh, right. I've heard several officers and attorneys say, oh, I don't want to talk to you about this matter because it might conflict you. And it's it, unless the opposing party is not given an opportunity to respond and it actually pertains to the formal arguments, then uh, that's not going to conflict me. Exactly. So what are 
uh, cases where you can get like conflicted on things? Uh, essentially being a material witness, having a personal stake in the matter. Uh, those those are kind of the big ones. And material is yeah. the important part of the witness part, because I think that's what Curve was getting at, is that simply because an attorney w bore oh. witness to a particular portion of things does not inherently mean that they are a material or necessary witness. Ah, uh, right. So... You know how like everyone's all like, oh, don't tell me that, I'm a judge, don't tell me that. Like, what's that all about? Is that like... It's, know, out like of, when... it's out of... I do it out of general concern because I do not believe that the attorneys know where to stop when they're bringing uh, okay. it up. Okay. I get that. I need to go clock on duty because I just realized I went for a nap and I never went back on duty. <laughs> Give me a second. I really want to kick that car so it shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure that that'll help. Huh? <laughs> Might make it worse, honestly. Prolong the suffering. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> visit City Hall. I no longer have a court case tonight, so... Or not City Hall, sorry. The uh, We'll go visit the courthouse. Uh, I no longer have a court case tonight, so my primary item of agenda is to attempt to meet with the mayor following his arrest so that we can explain to him what is going to transpire after the fact. Did you get any guidance from the governor? Or not yet? I did, yeah. I sent a fax and I received a fairly prompt response. Um, oh, okay. The governor is in agreement with the common sense guidance that uh, essentially a vice mayor should serve in the interim uh, while the mayor clears up or fails to clear up whatever it is that's going on. So, Got it. Um, as part of that regulation, if the vice mayor ends up getting caught in something, then uh, according to the legislative proposal that I put together, the uh, the city council will simply have to have a, another election within two weeks. So. so the report that was done for the courthouse is 2336, but all the photos are in there, but I'll... I'll let you take a guess. Did this person write a report? Uh, for which case? For 2336. So the um, incident report that happened at the courthouse. The whole map and... Oh, I'm going to stuff. assume that they simply uh, paper clipped a bunch of photographs in there and called it a day. Yep. Yeah. And I... it was a senior officer as well. Well, uh, we have individuals who are currently marshals that I've had to dismiss approximately six cases from because they didn't write anything yeah. in their arrest reports, so... So, the detailed report was photographic evidence found at the courthouse. We spent maybe... Oh, maybe Does he have access there. to the weapons we locker? Only people with the marshal 20, or attorney 25 general. 25 minutes to the courthouse, speaking to the Please. officer about it. Do I actually have? I do have dispatch. Also, I don't know if this is a thing <laughs> to bring up to you, obviously, but obviously you can tell me where to go. Um, a lot of the people at uh, City Hall are saying that when they call the police for something, like something happens or they need like police presence there, either 
the police don't treat it as seriously as it should be treated or the police just don't turn up in general. I'd never actually contact back to say, oh, we were busy or we were on a call or something like that. Does so that mean I have radio access? I don't think where so. Where government is, no. they feel unsafe because the police Bro, aren't we would totally RP taking the diplomat down to get a radio are. installed in it. <laughs> that would be fucking hilarious. Basically, helping people. Uh, that's more of a conversation to be had with the... Is that car just tumbling wildly through the air? Yep, that's a cop car. Is that police officer deceased now? Oh, no, they're um, moving. Okay. Are you okay? Did you see that? Yeah, we watched you yeah, wildly you. tumble through the air. Oh, my God. Are you okay? There was, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm a little shaken up. I, I saw... Uh, 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 a vehicle traveling at a high rate of speed and, and blew through a fucking red light and I tried to chase him and then uh, there was a telephone pole and I went flying. Oh, no, okay. Oh, oh. oh I gotta nope. watch that. Yep, you go. You, you get it. <laughs> that was quite the tumble that car did. Yeah, that, he did a cartwheel in a vehicle. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, you were telling me, like, who should I? Because obviously I was talking to uh, Lucy about it, and she wasn't really sure who to speak to about it. Uh, it's probably best to have um, someone from City Hall correspond with the chief or member of command with the police department, because mm -hmm. strictly yeah. speaking, their enforcement or lack thereof of mm -hmm. certain statutes or certain yeah. policing districts... Uh, we get, they, they have broad prosecutorial discretion for a reason, because they tend to be mm -hmm. short-staffed from time to time, or yeah. you know, have to prioritize hey. calls in certain ways. Yeah. Um, There's the boot print that was there. Oh, huh. interesting. Um, you can have a look at the MDT profile, and you should be able to see the report in there. All the pictures are there. Do 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 do. Investigation break in at the courthouse. Boot prints. Held by two men, they... Oh, okay. They're not talking about her. They're role-playing that there was a clerk standing behind the counter here. Red, orange, pink, ink residue. No files missing. Interesting. Okay. Ah, interesting. Yeah, I thought you... I've had to choose some um, clearer pictures as well. Yeah, this is the box that uh, they were saying. Uh, no, certainly rifled through. Good thing the only thing we keep in this is old law journals. Exactly. The um, the map was like pinned to here, but I don't know where that disappeared to. Hmm. Oh, certainly interesting. Huh. Yeah. And then, obviously, they tampered with this lock, and then the door to all of the offices was unlocked. So I don't know if that was by accident, or they managed to force the lock open. Uh, did anybody check back there to see if anything was messed with? I don't think so. I don't think the officer came back here, to be honest. Um, here, let me grab my different keys. Yeah. Different key time. Now we're the head of the DOJ. Thank you. 
Ha! Oh, I'm wow. not sure that I noticed anything Because we came, I think, that today I think we came down here to change someone's um, rank uh, in the department earlier So I probably would have spotted something Yeah, I'm not saying anything to us, you We can check the office down the way that uh, power tends to use yeah. Files and everything else here yeah. seem to be okay. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Why would they mess with the front door but not. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe these. What, uh... I thought was, what I thought was interesting was they were here, but they had a map of City Hall and with everything going on with the whole supposed attacks for City Hall it did make me wonder because obviously it looked like someone had basically had a pretty detailed map of what was going on yeah yeah well, certainly interesting yeah oh yeah and there was a muddy footprint in there as well oh yeah I saw the photographs from outside hm. yeah Well, let's return to City Hall and see if I can't uh, link together with the mayor. He may have completed his sentence. <laughs> yeah, we can't get in. <laughs> Make a little extra room for you. There we go. Okay, well, I am pending confirmation from the plaintiff's counsel pertaining to the settlement on the Townsend case, which is now done, which leaves only matter number 66 on my docket, if I'm not wrong about that. Uh, actually, 66 and 72, but I'm just gonna kind of be along for the ride on 72, I suppose. Mm, yeah. It is our first capital case, so... Uh, second degree is not. Oh capital. wait, it's second it's degree. No, not, you're right. Never mind. Life imprisonment. Yeah. No, I would second's be. Second's not either. Yeah, I would. I would is be. It not? Uh, no, second has the potential for life. Second degree. I think I'm working on an old murder, copy. Yeah, so second degree murder is a felony of life imprisonment. Uh, the oh. maximum fine is ten thousand dollars. Ah. Yeah. Why did I? I'm. I'm referring to a different copy. Yes, you are probably referring to two penal code revisions ago, although two of them happen in rapid succession together. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Well, I always look it up before I talk to people or hear something anyways. So, see yeah. if we change uh, anything. Yeah, I like looking at the, the master copy so that whenever something is updated, it just automatically is like updated so the person just submits the new one you know here's a question for you Kerr. Uh, do we want uh, prosecution to have to plead in the alternative on cases like this um or do we as a judiciary just want to uh, accept any lesser included offenses that we may find the individual guilty of I I think it, uh, that's a hard one to articulate. Um, I'm kind of okay with either. Them, I'm kind of okay with them not pleading in the alternative. Yeah, that's how every, I felt. Yeah. Every jurisdiction that I have 
practiced in, where uh, the prosecution is permitted to plead in the alternative, they just plead everything that could be in the alternative. Yep. Um, and then it's a laundry list, and you got to go through it. So. Exactly. Uh, whereas if it's uh, judicial discretion as to lesser included offenses, then that uh, that makes life uh -huh. much easier for us. Indeed. I will say I am used to pleading in the alternative, but very different. Yeah, I think judicial discretion is the way to go here. Yeah. I was just thinking of a hypothetical situation where uh, somebody gets charged with, um, I don't know, drug trafficking, but instead we find them guilty of multiple counts of possession with intent or second degree, and it turns out to be a manslaughter. It, it's probably easier yeah. for the panel to just make that determination rather than having the prosecution argue all yeah. the way down to, uh, I don't know, mm -hmm. assault with a aggravated assault or whatever. Yeah. And actually, in my old jurisdiction where I sat in your role, I actually Hi, puppy. did that as well. So I just left it up to my discretion. We have a courthouse dog now. I see that. Uh, Justice, may I speak to one of you, uh, if possible? Which one of us? Uh, sure. Whichever one of us Which, or which both one's of that us busy? Uh, uh, neither. neither of us here. Let's head back to the office. You take both. You got more than you bargained for. Here, we can talk in the conversation circle instead of going all the way back to chambers. Okay, um, <laughs> it's, I'll keep it short. But anyway, uh, I, I pretty much talk a, taught a, a case law class today over at uh, PD for the cadets, and uh, Terry versus Ohio came up, and it, it came to the attention of us that Plainfield does not exist in Los Santos. And I want to know if that was ever going to be looked over again. My understanding, based on a discussion with the chief of police, uh, was that for the time being, anything that an officer could reasonably articulate as having uh, the illegal nature, illegal or dangerous, I guess I should say, because you're not only, you know, you could be taking a knife off of somebody that's perfectly legal. Um, but mm -hmm. anything that the illegal or dangerous contours or feel of is something that you, uh, you all can frisk for, if that makes sense. Um, I understand that part, but it was uh, uh, mainly about narcotics, like bags of narcotics, like methamphetamines or marijuana, uh, that uh, I, I believe we were told not to be searching for, or not searching but frisking for, like immediate touch or plain feel for narcotics. As much as I... It's very hard to distinguish something like that for plain field purposes because the difference between an individual having a singular joint on their person and having, I don't know, uh, 30 of those uh, uh, nuggets of marijuana on their person is mm -hmm. obviously uh, an officer who's rooting around would probably be able to feel a 10-pound bag of marijuana. Yeah. Um, however, a singular joint, I mean, who knows, maybe they're keeping that in their pack of smokes or something, right? Um that's a difficult one, and I do believe that Chief Harper was working on a solution to that issue, but it's one of those, uh, it's very similar to the DOJ trying to get keys to this gosh darn building here. It, it, it's going to oh, take time. Oh, I got you. I got you. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, as of right now, at this time, we just believe then uh, just maintain focus on firearms and stuff like that. Yeah, firearms, weapons. Um, I mean, honestly, anything large and metallic or vaguely weapon shaped i would say you're fine frankly coming before the court again if you have an officer who uh you know felt a very squishy bag of what felt like uh, some sort of plant or dried marijuana uh mm -hmm. under those circumstances the court would probably uphold the frisk uh okay. but it's going to be up to you guys as sops how to uh narrow that down enough so that it doesn't become intrusive that's understandable. I think we had a lot of questions from officers regarding uh, like drug drug sale calls and how to deal with that. If uh, you know, 
I mean, I explained to them, you know, just go through public process and try to, you know, find something to stop them for, uh, you know, irregardless of narcotics or get, you know, gain PC to do a search. But uh, some of them were uh, curious as to, you know, obviously, if, you know, if we're going to a drug call and, you know, even see a handoff, um, you may not be able to risk for, you know, narcotics. Okay. That would be, you know... Uh, if an officer goes to a drug-related call and witnesses a hand-to-hand -hand transaction, uh, I, I think that I think your officers might be putting a little bit too much weight on what probable cause actually is. Probable cause mm -hmm. is just articulable facts and circumstances that make it more likely than not that a crime has occurred. Um, witnessing that handoff would be probable cause for an arrest. It might not, you know, get you the entire. Uh, the entire way to pushing the charge, but once yeah. you do that search incident to arrest, I, th I think that's where your uh, your golden nuggets are. <laughs> so that would probably more likely be enough to do a Terry frisk to, you know, said narcotics if we witness the handoff at a drug sale. That would be probable cause for an arrest, which would be enough to drag the individual down to the station and fully search them. Okay. All right. That's perfect <laughs> to understand. Thank you, sir. Yep, Absolutely. And I'll make sure to reinforce that. That's strictly for drug calls itself. Yes, 100%. Okay. All right. Um, thank you very much. Some, another tool that you have in your uh, tool belt, at least for the time being, until it starts getting uh, raucously abused. Uh, technically speaking, negligent driving, if it is properly articulated, is a community service offense, which does allow you to take an individual to the nearest processing station to identify them properly. Lovely. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Have a wonderful day. You too. Looks like a pet. I love it. I love that he looks like a pet. Mm. All right. I'm just gonna have the a mayor. if you can see the mayor. Yeah. To be honest, I don't know if the mayor would want to come back here. Probably not. Yeah. Maybe I might, might just need to send him a uh, letter and ask desk. if he can just meet up with them. Yeah, I don't this have his happens. postal information, I don't think. Uh, has anyone seen uh, the mayor come wandering through? I have I'm not. No? Oh, I haven't okay. seen him since he got arrested. This is his attorney right here. Okay. Oh, actually, you're the perfect individual. To, uh, who's who's his attorney? Oh, this it's is Max. Max. Okay, Max, come I on. I cannot be his attorney in this case. Why not? Of when he when he got arrested. This is a good song. I can uh, not uh, uh, represent him. In court or in front of any administrative figures. Okay. Why not? Was, Are you a material witness? I was. I mean, I was at the scene when they searched him. It doesn't mean that I cannot be his attorney for other legal matters, but I think for this matter, since I was at the scene, I'm not allowed to represent him in front of tribunals. Okay, that's the part where we have a wind down for the day party. That's why Paul is taking okay, care of this matter. Okay, clean up the door, too. Okay, perfect. Well, you're his you general back. counsel, so He's that, that means what I need to discuss can still be discussed with you. Okay. Yep. Uh, of course, Chief Justice. Because what I need to discuss is only tangentially or re uh, related to the fact that he was, in fact, arrested. Well, uh, it was a very interesting uh, warrant, I guess. That too shall have its day in court. Yep, I am quite positive that your co-counsel will be uh, very much on oh, top yes. of getting that on the docket. So. Oh yes, I, I still have a lot to learn from Paul Evans with regards to trials. I don't know that he's ever tried anything, so I think he has a lot to learn too. Okay. Oh, okay. Um... Okay, so I am certain that there have already been questions floating between yourself, your client uh, and your co-counsel as to how this is going to impact the fact that uh, Mr. Daniel Marino is our mayor currently. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I don't think I have uh, thought about anything else uh, since the arrest. Okay. Uh, as I am sure that uh, you're pretty well aware because you've skimmed our constitution, I've seen you make constitutional arguments... Um, there is no current constitutional provision which covers the uh, arrest of a mayor pertaining to a felony offense. So even though common sense would tell us, you know, that 
it, perhaps impeachment proceedings would be appropriate. There's really not a body to perform an impeachment against the mayor uh, outside of the city council. Um, is that the question <laughs> for my opinion? Um, yeah, I mean, unless you've, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, my opinion would be that um, I believe that uh, the charges brought <clears throat> up against the mayor uh, are, uh, I mean, some of them are seriously laughable, so I would see that uh, actually an impeachment procedure would be adequate if, if a mayor would be convicted of a felony. I don't disagree. Uh, the problem that we have is that where a mayor is indicted of a felony, uh, regardless of your thoughts or opinions on this particular arrest, let's let's imagine a hypothetical scenario, I don't know, sometime between 1974 and 1975, where impeachment was imminent for several violations of the U.S. Wiretapping Act against other presidents. <laughs> You, know, you see where I'm getting at? In the event that legitimate criminal charges were pressed not against your client explicitly, but against an individual who was sitting in the office of mayor, uh, that would, uh, there would need to be some sort of Is safeguard safe built around that. everyone safe and secure in this office? We are safe and secure, Chris. Thank you. Well, <laughs> the, the, yes, I understand where you're getting at, but the legitimacy has to be... Uh, how can I say? Um, uh, the saying goes rock solid. I agree. Um, and that is the reason that on advice and order of the governor, uh, we're going to be entering uh, essentially a band-aid solution to this problem, uh, which will provide that an indictment against a sitting mayor will temporarily uh, disqualify them from serving in their official capacity, but they may appoint their vice mayor to serve as the mayor in their stead. Okay, wow. Uh, I have a question. Um, okay. How is the situation? Um, I mean, there is somebody who can testify that he was... Um, uh, he was um, ordered by the attorney general to end given and given affidavit to my information i do not have the affidavit yet so this is not a fact established but if somebody would testify uh, that uh, and give an affidavit that the attorney general has has ordered him to bug the office of the mayor uh, and if is there is no warrant signed for that uh, how do you see this type of procedure because at some point ordered uh, to have him do what with the office of the mayor bug the office bug with bugs to to uh, listen in on conversations interesting um that is i'm totally confused i don't know what, what to do is... i don't want to put up any crazy charges or cases before i speak <laughs> with uh, you know uh, you <laughs> uh, or any other uh, judge who is willing to even hear about that. I had a hearing today with uh, uh, um, his uh, judge powers and he said that uh, political motivation is not a legality and I understand that's perfectly correct but at this point uh, I have also an affidavit from the mayor with regards his personal history with the attorney general so I think uh, in my personal opinion uh, this is more uh, let's say uh, <laughs> There is more logic behind it than the probable cause in this warrant. Uh, my advice under those circumstances would be to file... God, Kerr, what would they even file in relation to this? Because uh, theoretically speaking, in order to place any form of bug or listening device, a surveillance warrant would be required at bare yeah. minimum. And the extent and scope of such is going to be very limited. Um, and it needs to be specific. Um, it would, I mean, it would almost just have to be a civil case. Yeah, you, you would have to. Yeah, which is what I told, uh, I told you that earlier, Counselor, um, that anything politically motivated, you would, like I said, it would need to be civil and, and to research things around different arguments surrounding intentional tort yeah my, my advice to you would be to gather the information that you have uh, since the attorney general's office is the primary prosecute well the only prosecuting body within this state 
Uh, pressing criminal charges at the outset would not be possible, but once you have collated the information and put it into a civil complaint, a special prosecutor could be appointed to review for any criminal charging by the court. Uh, I have a question. Cannot, uh, cannot basically every DA file uh, charges? They can, but expecting them to do so against their boss, uh, the court would probably be better off appointing special prosecution for an independent review so that uh, they don't happen to miss anything. Because yep. as far as I read the Constitution and uh, the Penal Code, no person shall, shall utilize their office to acquire undue benefit or willfully deprive a person of their rights. And uh, I think that is the point which has happened over here. It is uh, the right of uh, privacy uh, and uh, and also there must be some kind of, uh, you know, like uh, imagine the uh, Honorable Chief Justice, somebody back to your office just to hear what you're uh, talking during your, uh, you know, during uh, presiding uh, over uh, different type of issues. No, I, I completely agree that... Um... If it could be proven beyond a reasonable doubt, it is almost certain that doing undertaking those actions without an authorized warrant would uh, uh, certainly constitute a count of government corruption, which is one of the highest felonies that we have other than held until trial and uh, life imprisonment charges. Okay, I have another question. Uh, if, if you have the time, uh, I heard... I just want to say, but on your point, uh, it would not be advised from I, myself or, or the chief justice i don't believe that you attempt to uh, establish some level of a coup of some sort by having one of the da's file charges if you want to go this route it would be it would be best to go through the courts and request special counsel be appointed yeah okay. essentially you would file a fourth amendment claim on behalf of your client against the attorney general's office and then you would motion for a special prosecutor to review the case for any potential criminal charges yep okay uh then i have a final question uh, i heard that uh, the marshals or the, the the prosecution they want to make a bar complaint to me <laughs> uh, against me because I was apparently conflicted in that case, but I have not represented my client in front of any tribunal uh, as stated in the Constitution or against any administrative uh, officers. Uh, I've uh, just uh, uh, talked to him, which is I have to do since I'm his legal counsel on any other matter. So they said, why did you visit him in, in, in when he was in Boiling Broke? And I, I mean... <laughs> I can visit him. Uh, I'm not the legal counsel on this matter, so as long as I don't represent him in court or give like specific legal advice, then uh, uh, which is uh, then there is no conflict of interest. Or how do I understand this issue wrong? Uh, no, you're correct. You can still provide general legal advice to your client pertaining to a litany of other matters that you are not conflicted on, um, and you may also. Uh... Uh, you also retain attor attorney client privilege insofar as those discussions are concerned. So, absent the attorney general's office or the marshals having explicit proof that you were providing uh, counsel related to a matter that uh, you're conflicted on, I, I wouldn't break a sweat over that. So they were trying to claim that I told the mayor not to say anything. That is not a legal counsel, to my opinion. That's just a statement which I even, uh, they don't even have a proof of me saying that, but they just say, don't say anything. That's legal counsel. I mean, that's uh, his right as a citizen not to say anything. Yeah, that's... Uh, well... Go ahead, Kerr. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't I don't think there's much merit behind that. However, I will say if you were his attorney on scene and he identified you as his attorney to them and you advised him no longer to speak after they Mirandized him, then you're treading into that territory if you yourself are stating that you're conflicted here i mean i'm conflicted so. afterwards uh, now since they arrested him but on uh -oh, the spot uh, officer pulled up and i just told him just don't tell him anything because you know uh, uh -huh. it's a uh, it's a uh, sorry but it's ace bishop he just searched my car although i told him 10 oh, times here uh, i told him 10 times don't search my car you just search my car uh, sorry 
Give me a second. I think we're getting him. If you to... want to talk to him. Yes. Uh, go yeah, ahead and uh, go ahead and bring the mayor in. I think they are trying to get territory. Security folks. personnel here okay. at City Hall. Chris, you're not searching the mayor. <laughs> in court, and I think you're on an angle that could make sense. Yes, but I'm just saying I don't want to press charges against uh, Ace Bishop or sue him, but uh, it is uh, it is just uh, Who, uh... unprofessional behavior to stop me. He said I was speeding. I said, okay, if I'm speeding, then give me a ticket. Uh, no, I want to search your car. He said, I'm not giving you consent to search my car. I want to search your car. I don't want to bother you with details more. And then he said, okay, then we're going to impound the car. And he said, okay, impound the car then. Uh, because we have to do inventory then I say okay then impound it uh, your windows are too dark or say then give me a ticket for two dark windows uh, and then he drove off saying uh, after he searched my car against my consent and not impounding it and I insisted on my ticket and he didn't give me a ticket saying I don't have time for this fucking paperwork yeah, I mean I, I just want to say like <laughs> uh, they are the west, east, uh, west wow. wing we're the east wing but uh, you know it is like uh uh, all the time, they, they are threatening the defense with some kind of uh, things, uh, searching our cars, and cuffing me at the scene. With uh, uh, w I was just there talking, not running away. Uh, obviously, uh, it is uh, you know at this point, <laughs> I think that is some type of mobbing. I guess. I, don't I mean, know. That, okay. that sounds I'm, pretty bad. I, I'm 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 not going to discuss this matter in too much detail because uh, this is between. Uh, you, Mr. Marino, and your counselors to determine what your legal strategy will be, and it is extremely likely that myself or Kerr will sit on any panel pertaining to a criminal appeal, which I I'm assuming we're going to see a criminal appeal, right, Mayor? <laughs> you're fucking damn right you're going to okay. see one. Probably four lawsuits right after it, too. So I'm not going to dive too far into uh, legal strategies and things like that, but even if you personally don't want to pursue legal action civilly against a uh, bishop, uh, oh, golly gee, impeachment evidence sure is you know introducible pertaining to the uh, bias or uh, quality of an arresting officer at uh, criminal trials. <laughs> okay. So. Thank you. I have to write this down. That is again, uh, <laughs> excellent advice, Your Honor. Explicitly not advice. Nope. <laughs> Explicitly not, not advice. advice. Just a conversation just mentioned in passing. Conversing. Yep. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I, yes, I'm okay. still writing. Uh, Mayor Marino. Um, Without commenting on the legitimacy of the allegations of the indictment that you have received and served time for up in Bolingbrook, we have to recognize that we are in a sticky situation uh, because we are currently yeah, I sitting... Yeah, from uh, Dr. Uh, Ruby, let me know. I probably should be uh, appointing someone. Yes, you need to yep. appoint a vice mayor. Well, well how Dr. can Ruby I do now? that without What's swearing happening? in? Because the yeah, agent yeah, made it very that? clear to me I had no mayoral powers until I was sworn in. So. Okay, there's, there's nothing in the Constitution that states no. that you need to be sworn no. in. You've been it, serving as the mayor. And an inauguration is fluff. You, you've been mayor since you were voted in. There was no yeah, mayor well. before you, so there was no need to relinquish power from anybody else. Um, so actually swearing the oath of office, I mean... It, we could do that right here, right now in chambers if it would make everyone let's feel better, but it's it's not necessary. Well, let's do it since the AG made it <laughs> fucking clear on his end it needed to be done, so I'd rather just do that to cover my ass. Okay. All right, we'll do it this way. Uh, cover the flag. Unless, uh, Dawson, you don't have a copy of like a Bible or a Constitution somewhere anywhere here, do you? <laughs> Grr. No. I, I, um, well, let me look over here. <laughs> Got like a hundred books in here. Not you don't have the oldest one. Come on, guys. Separation of church and state, Marino. Come on. Yep. You need it to swear people <laughs> in. I found Powers Bible. Oh, perfect. Okay, that'll there work. There we go. <laughs> All right, here. Hand it. Hand it to Marino so that you know. Here you can, go. Yeah. Here I'll. Yeah. I'll hold that out. All right. Uh, let me get my. Add all speech written for this, and then an arrest happened. <laughs> all 
It was a good speech, too. It was talking about the trials and tribulations of democracy. I, it, anyway, we'll get yeah. just straight to the inauguration part. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> All right. Uh, with your hand placed upon the Bible, repeat after me, Mr. Marino. I, Daniel Marino. I, Daniel Marino. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of San Andreas. Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of San Andreas. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith. That I'll bear true faith. And allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the State of San Andreas. And allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and of San Andreas. That I take this obligation freely. I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion or purpose of evasion and that I will well and faithfully and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter uh, discharge the duties of the office which I am about to enter will discharge the duties of the office I'm about to enter and during such time as I hold the office of the mayor of Los Santos. During such time as I hold the office of the mayor of Los Santos. Well, congratulations and my condolences, uh, Mr. Yeah. Marino. Uh, you Listen, have this is getting thrown out in fucking two days as soon as <laughs> I can get an affidavit from my brother because this is fucking crazy. Well, speaking... Probably be stronger to have your brother appear in court if that's an option. Yep. All right, yeah, he's been uh, not feeling too hot, but I can see uh, if we we can make that. Well, we'll need the affidavit to... Can we not just motion to dismiss this at this point? You could, you could. No, okay. you could. I'm an affidavit, I if think it goes that... to court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking purely procedurally, the next step in this is that your defense counsel will file the appeal. Uh, since this does involve the office of the mayor, we will be convening a panel of justices. We won't just have one of us deciding this. Um, that way we can ensure that it's fair and impartial given how this has all gone. Uh, however, uh, based on my recommendation, uh, the governor has issued an executive order, uh, essentially backdating an amendment to the constitution that we're going to be putting in, uh, relating to the eligibility for government employees. Uh, I want to specifically enunciate, this is not in relation to the mayor. This is all government employees. Um, yeah, yeah, AG was talking about this a few days. You're fine. I get it. That's interesting, because I have not shared this with the Attorney General. Yeah. Oh, well, he was making it very oh. clear to me that there shouldn't be any <laughs> felons employed in by the state. Um... So, so if that's what this is about, I, I mean, I guess maybe he just... Let's hear it, let's hear it. The portion of this that's going to be relevant to you, and I'm going to send one of the clerks around to update all the copies of the Constitution that we have lying around the police departments and city hall and whatnot. Um, a person's public office shall be stayed upon the indictment of any felony-level offense, uh, and their service in office will be suspended until such a time as they complete an appeal. So you are not kicked out as mayor. You are not uninaugurated... Uh, the vote still counts. Uh, simply speaking, you just got to go through the appeal process, and we in the judiciary are going to be prioritizing uh, not only your case, but other cases that affect individuals in similar ways. Um, Fair enough. I was going to say that could you know, play out for a while, huh? But if that's the case, thank you. Yeah, no, we're going we're gonna to endeavor to have it heard within a matter of, uh, once it's filed, maximum five to seven days. Uh, and if it's a simple motion to dismiss, probably a lot quicker than that because we don't have to convene on it. Yep. Yeah, no. I Once I get the affidavit from my brother, maybe one from the chief of police, uh, this should be dismissed immediately. In my chief, opinion, chief but Justice, obviously... Yeah. I have a legal question. Um, if, if a warrant for arrest has been issued by a judge, um, and uh, does the warrant for arrest, has, let's say, has three charges of them on them and only one of those charges have actually probable cause for the arrest um what is the consequence of uh, explicitly uh, let's say uh, issuing uh, warrants for charges what's the that... consequence of issuing an obstruction charge when you were read <laughs> your fucking rights 
so there is an <laughs> that is an interesting multi-layered issue uh, because speaking abstractly, simply not answering questions or refusing to cooperate with the police, whether you are a suspect or just a bystander or a witness, uh, would be considered inherently bad faith. However, the fact that it was signed off on by a judge provides a good faith rationale for an officer to execute that warrant because it was approved by a member of the judiciary. Uh, so how... how, how in, okay, in order to tackle a warrant, uh, it's going to be the same uh, stringency that we look at other warrants with. You basically have to prove that there was bad faith when they wrote it or that they lied. Okay. So how do we prove that he lied? They have all that written down? It's nothing spoken testimony that the judge who did the warrant, he doesn't hear is spoken? It's all written, right? Damn it, Chris. Or how does that work? They go to him it is all written unless we have questions which we will bring directly to the individual and ask for clarity and ask them to rewrite um so it, he the, the judge uh, and chief correct me if i'm wrong but i've only ever made decisions on warrants based off of the written information i've received um and i believe justice wade does the same yeah so. It's it, okay. it it should be universal across the board. A judge can ask verbal questions to an officer, but they shouldn't sign off on it until the writing is updated. So if the writing yep. is bad and the officer had bad faith in the writing, then that can still be contested. I have uh, one more question. What if the probable cause from the uh, from the appendix and the statement in the warrant is, I mean, does not uh, really match legal standards at all for two of the charges? Uh, is there uh, any way to uh, prevent such a future, uh, let's say, uh, I mean, to be honest, I'm just afraid that there is going to be thousands of warrants against uh, against uh, the mayor uh, uh, and uh, I mean, they're going to be but, uh, signed off. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, and there I'm is no put, probable uh, cause. I'm going to put it very simply, and Marino is very well aware of this. Uh, arrest warrants it, do not require a judicial signature. The, yeah. the fact that they even got one is just them going above and beyond and covering their asses essentially uh mm -hmm. any technically speaking any cadet with the los santos police department could issue their own arrest warrant um so we do i mean i do review them occasionally i threw out i think nine of them the other day yeah those uh, police written ones are pretty weak sometimes yeah myself and power did a review of them uh not too long ago and they were pretty bad as well um the process for contesting that is exactly what you're currently doing. You okay, uh, you, you you appeal it afterwards, and you, know, you you follow the process that you're already on the on the track for. Um. So, in the event that uh, somebody serving in public office is suspended, such as yourself, uh, or their you know position is stayed or held in some way, uh, whoever is directly under them will serve. Uh, so. Yeah, uh, essentially we need a name for a vice mayor for you who will serve as the interim mayor while you and your legal team process through this. Okay. Um, can I have, like, some time to think about that or what? Need a immediate? Uh, preferably within the next couple of hours uh, because okay. the, the longer that it takes, you are technically currently disqualified from being the mayor and we're doing this a little bit ad hoc on executive order of the governor um so the, the faster the better but i'm not going to squeeze a name out of you right this very moment pick harper <laughs> okay yeah, mayor just, harper uh, okay i need to just reach out and see if this person's going to be available uh over the next few weeks i guess okay Oh, hopefully not weeks, hopefully days. Well, so regardless, they'd be my deputy mayor, right? So. Yeah, I mean, or but that's your choice you to say, replace them. Vice mayor? Well, it would have. she was my first choice regardless, so... Oh, okay. I, I just, you know, the governor has yet to give the mayor's office any uh, hiring power, so... Well, makes All right, feel let me... The judiciary also still doesn't Excuse have to Excuse me, this gentlemen, yeah. sir, yes, mayor. There is a Ruby Montgomery who is waiting in the lobby for you, sir, when you finish <laughs> up here. I'll go and see what she wants. Yeah, for me Thank or you. for the mayor? She is Except here the for the mayor, I believe. Oh, okay. I mean, oh, okay. 
Um, all right. Hand four. Heller, right, I'll you, be you, just a few more minutes. That, is that not Wade? No, nope. that's definitely the new security guy, Chris, and not Wade wearing a red tie. Yeah, how could you say that was Wade? That's Chris is, Carlito. Is, is that not impersonation? <laughs> that's, that's, like, what is... that's literally Chris Carlito. <laughs> okay, all right, Chris Carlito, got it. <laughs> all right. Also, it's not impersonation because he's not currently under detainment by law enforcement, which means you can't impersonate. Nor is he getting okay. any financial benefit from what he's doing whatsoever. All right, all right. <laughs> Just... Apart from kicks. Good shit, good shit. Good for him. Um... <laughs> Let the man have fun, all right? Okay, I guess we'll just get the appeal process started and uh, our will immediately file a motion to dismiss based on the fact that I was authorized to carry that pepper spray. Therefore, the other two charges should go along with that. Uh, I was read my rights, never asked uh, any more questions after uh, I I didn't even say I'm refusing or ask for a lawyer. I just uh, let this guy speak after I was asked a question and then was never asked another question by law enforcement. What and I will... You, you did not introduce me as... Uh, you didn't say, this is my lawyer, and nope. then I said, yeah. So... Yeah. No, what I will... Is... I, I just, in passing, remember, these are passing comments, not uh, advice. Yep, yeah, in passing. Um, I will tell you, trying to go down the route of fruit of poisonous tree is a much weaker argument than arguing each point individually in your motion to dismiss. Okay, I, I'll do that regardless. Well, I don't even know. I need to see, I guess, the Yeah, we need to talk to Paul the immediately. Appendix. I think Paul has it all. Okay, we'll go get that, and then, uh, yeah, we'll just argue point by point and get this thrown out. And uh, I, I'm not conflicted crazy. as long as I don't represent you in court, and uh, I'll just take care of this case. I'm not conflicted. They can far, file complaints and so on. I just talk to the chief of justice, so Paul yes. uh, takes over this case, and uh, and uh, that's it. And any other matter, I can still, uh, you know, be your legal counsel and, and uh, everything else. Yep, Max can continue to serve as general counsel for you or specific counsel as to other matters, just uh, this particular matter. Let's leave it to Mr. Evans. Great. All right. All right, we'll, be, if... uh, we'll get out of your hair then. Yeah, I'm going to pop out with you and see if the director needs anything from me. Now I have some fries stuck on my hand that I can't get rid of, which is annoying. <laughs> Miss Williams. How you doing? How day? Did you need one of us? Uh, Olivia, actually. Oh, oh okay. okay. For a brief second. Hi. Time for time for interim mayor Nolan. <laughs> Hello there, mayor. Uh, Miss Montgomery is in the corner over there. Okay, sorry. Hello, I don't want to interrupt the time that Hi. you're going to have with uh, Marino. I just wanted to see if you needed anything from me since I'm here. Oh, um, I, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, you hear that, Chief? You're useless. No, <laughs> my God. That's tough, Kurt. No, Jesus. no, um, uh, I think the, uh, the, the medical care act or the medical and mental act is um, almost done and should be. Did you get a copy of it? I, we we were informed it was done, and both of us reviewed it. Yeah, me, myself oh. and Kerr both reviewed and gave our thumbs up to it. We're literally just waiting on Wade to uh, tell us that uh, Pillbox is ready for us to pull the trigger, and then we will append it to our public laws. Oh, yeah, I've been trying to get with Wade to pass along my notes for certain things that need to be, you know, just edited, like a name change, things like that. Um, I, I sent him some of my notes, so I, I hope that he's just doing that. It, it honestly really isn't that much, but yeah, it, it looks really, really good other than that. Okay, perfect. All right, well, I will allow yourself and the mayor to chat. Uh, Marino, whenever you come up with um, what you and I discussed in chambers, just uh, if you can't find me, then uh, you can either send a letter to DOJ or you can fax me, fax my line directly. Either way. To DOJ or city? Uh, DOJ. There, okay, there is a DOJ. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, we've got a mailbox over there. We mostly use it for like bar results and things like that. Um, All right, I will, but I will, yeah. I'll make sure it's has a big capital letters in the subject line so you guys see it. Okay, perfect. Yep, I'll uh, 
I'll probably know within an hour if uh, that's going to be a thing, so. Okay, perfect. I will more than likely still be milling around here doing something, so. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Thank you, sir. Amazing. Good to see you, Director. Thank you. And suddenly, all of the city's headaches slowly dissolved as we brought order to the chaos. <laughs> all of the city's headaches slowly dissolved as we brought order to the chaos. We didn't have a fire extinguisher, so we just peed on the flames instead. Right now I am the only uh, clerk of the court. Mm -hmm. But what's going to happen at some point is I'm going to progress on to magistrate at some point and once we have more clerks around then uh, obviously you'll have to speak to Renquist about this but the same could happen for you in the future okay yeah. basically what I am <laughs> doing right now is basically getting an uh, understanding of how everything works in the C&D judicial processes so that in the future I understand how it works better so that I can prepare myself for that role, basically. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, are, you, like, uh, if, are, are you trying to secure a magistrate position right now, Alice? No, I'm trying to secure no. a clerk position right now. Mm. She wants to be a clerk. Well, if you become a clerk or a magistrate, then uh, mm -hmm. who am I going to appoint in the event that this entire political charade explodes in Greco's face? <laughs> um... <laughs> You and Bishop are the, the, the next two on in line. Uh, Bishop? Oh, Marjorie. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, 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 yeah, the, the bishop that understands okay. the law. Sorry. <laughs> I just need to reel from that minor heart attack you just gave me for a second. So just... Ooh, um... Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I am... I'm, Attorney General I Ace be... Bishop interested in the position would be a lie uh i will i will not do that um i it the with the position that i'm in uh i felt that it was in my best interest career-wise to uh, since we're hiring for clerks i feel like that's a position that i would be able to fill quite well um i still have a lot to learn obviously and i think that would give me the opportunity to fill in the gaps of my legal knowledge. Mm -hmm. I feel like for me personally, Ace becoming clerk. a clerk was probably the best decision I ever made, to be honest. I get to watch everything and see how everything is done whilst being able to give my opinion, ask questions, and actually look over everything. So for me, like, Obviously, this might not be the like the the job of all clerks, but obviously, since I was the first clerk, I basically, if warrants came in, I got to read over all the warrants and be like, okay, so this seems good, this seems good, I don't like that, and then pass it on to the judge and be like, okay, so I read this warrant, I don't like this, I don't like that, what do you think? And without sounding bad, I feel like I get all of the experience without having the negative side effects if that makes sense like I don't have to worry that oh I put out a warrant because it was bad I get to look over the warrant and go I like that I like that I like that I don't like that we should speak to this person and then a judge will be like yeah I agree let's let's go speak to them and I really like that because it gives you the ability to learn without having to be constantly afraid every two seconds that I shouldn't have done that of course yeah I I've Sorry, I'm second guessing everything that I say because I I, I don't want to speak <laughs> candidly of my position right now without don't other individuals candidly. in the room because I, I you I'm can just... trust Renquist. Yeah, speak I as... trust him, so you can trust him. Yeah, speak, speak as I... speak as candidly oh. as you would like because I, I will be completely honest. Um, the attorney general has currently been given an immense amount of liberty, and that liberty has frequently caused me to have to take Excedrin when I go to bed at night uh, due to... We can uh, wait. It's pollen, uh, it's pollen kit. We can wait, okay? Give me a sec. <laughs> uh, due to the... Uh, okay. 
with marshals situation, conflicts with the police department. Uh, now it seems as though there was a uh, partially correct, but partially, uh, I'm just going to use the word malicious arrest, which may have been made today. Um, yeah, I've heard about it. I have <laughs> kept 10 feet away from all of that, if I'm being 100% honest with you. So yeah. I'm probably the person in the office with the least knowledge of that aspect of what the office is doing. But it, it's important for me to understand how things are working on the ground level over there, because the attorney general in his office does serve at the pleasure of the Department of Justice right. uh, and is subject to reappointment once every 30 days. Uh, so depending yeah. on how the next week or two unfolds for attorney general Greco, um, well, we'll, uh, we'll see if his political gambit was worthwhile. All I'll say is <laughs> you speak like plainly and honestly, you tell us exactly how you feel. Don't mince your words. Don't uh, lead into like pleasantries or politeness. You just tell us how exactly you feel. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I appreciate that. Um, I would never. And if you, I think if it's you obvious. Need to bust first, do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will, just because we're also speaking at the office, and there's defense attorneys close. outside, so, <laughs> and people keep coming through, so, hopefully, I'm everybody's close enough. Um, I would. I think this is obvious, but I will just state it. I would never speak for other prosecutors or my office. Uh, I'm just going off my personal experience, and I, frankly, am very burnt out. Uh, I'm tired. Yes. And, um. I think it is a there is a position that from what I understand me and Marjorie share and there are some common feelings within my colleagues from when I've spoken to them but there are mm. some places where we also disagree and that's fine um, but overall I have just felt extremely overwhelmed extremely tired and there have been significant points where I feel a lack of guidance I guess mm -hmm. um, I was a defense attorney and I was a defense attorney because I know I know how to do that like the back of my hand you know I'm a great yeah. defense attorney and then I wanted to challenge myself so I became a prosecutor because I don't understand mm -hmm. everything and from day one of me being a prosecutor I have it, it's just been insane thing after insane thing after insane thing with no middle ground i get i'm trying to find the right wording um and that's not to speak on the more i guess hr matters that have been happening within the office that have since been handled um maybe not completely in ways that i would agree with that i've already um vocalized to both my superiors my bosses so um I don't know. I, for me, I, I feel that I'm at a point where I either a need some form of forward career change, or I need to sit down and assess because the way that I am currently going and the way that I feel within the job that I am doing is not something that I feel is sustainable for another month. Mm -hmm. Well, all I can say, is I obviously can't speak for Rankwith, but from my experience from working specifically in the judiciary, I feel valued. I feel like I'm an important part of the team. I mean, I'm I'll look at my constantly docket real told quick. that they won't promote me because I'm too good at my job, basically. And I feel like stuff like that is important. Like, you need to feel like you're, you're doing a good job, you know? And if you feel like you aren't doing that a good job in the AG's office or you don't feel like you're being appreciated there then personally I would just say think about it and if you want to be a clerk clerk then ask Rehnquist because it's his decision <laughs> yeah. uh, I would personally have no issues with bringing you mm -hmm. into a clerkship position uh, I think that you are over qualified for that to be completely transparent with you um However, I do not want you to rush into a clerkship position, similarly to how you found yourself in uh, the position of a prosecutor. Right. Um, I want you... I was also you... going... Oh, apologies. No, I was going to say, I was also going to add that I have current cases, and I, I wouldn't want to transition before I finish the cases that I currently have on my docket. I would just, if I had any plans to make a career change, 
I would ask for, you know, them to stop assigning me cases until I handled what I have. Just because I wouldn't want to give that additional work to somebody else. My personal my, my personal opinion, based on the observations that I have had recently, based on the limited conversations that the Attorney General has afforded me, is that he mm -hmm. is like a child who had a birthday in October and then Christmas rolled around in December and he stopped playing with the toys that he got in October. Um, he has simply... Uh, neglected the fact that uh, yourself, Marjorie Bishop, uh, Matthew Martin, Roger Hawthorne, and D'Angelo are the functional working components of the office that you work for. And if I, if I did miss anybody, it's due to my lack of personal interaction or just the fact that there's so many attorneys. But, right. um, and since he got this shiny new Marshall toy for Christmas, he has spent uh, spent yep. and invested all of his time into that, uh, including holding press conferences for them, which he did tonight. Uh, and that's, you know, despite... I did not hear too much of a mention uh, at that press conference. We did show up late, so maybe I missed it. Uh, but I didn't hear a mention of the uh, larger cases that your office is prosecuting. It was all about how uh, the Marshalls had arrested the mayor. Um... If I need to, what I want you to do while you're working on the, this current caseload that you have, uh, come up with a Christmas list for the Department of Justice. Um, figure out what your ideal position would be, uh, rather, th rather than trying to slot yourself into a hole that you may not fit into. Uh, that Christmas list could be as large as an independent prosecutor's office housed within the police department or a separation of the district attorney's office entirely from the attorney general. Uh, I would have no issues doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the event that attorney general Greco is not willing to make that Christmas list come true, then uh, we here in the DOJ will find a way to make it work. Because I, I do not think you're the only prosecutor who is suffering from this. Yeah, I, I'm, I know for a fact I'm not, but I would not um, speak <laughs> on that. That would be up to them to come forward and talk to you about. Yeah. But um, I, I do appreciate that. I will I will do that. Uh, okay. Well, thank God. It. Like I said, we'd be happy to have yeah, you as a clerk, absolutely. but I don't I don't want you to waste your time becoming a clerk just because you're not happy working uh, under the AG. So. Okay. All right. Uh, again, thank you. I, Thank you for talking with me. I, I probably would have ended up coming to you, but as we said, you know, Olivia is mm -hmm. kind of the gateway. So I thought at least an initial meeting was here, but I'm glad you were able to. Oh, I like this. I like floating around and jumping into random conversations. It's my favorite part about uh, City Hall. Really yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it is, it is uh, a well-deserved one. Well, I was going to take some much-needed uh, time off to review some stuff for the rest of tonight and not take on any additional work right now. Um, so I will I will think about what you've just told me while I uh, am going through my caseload. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. I appreciate that again. All right. It's, uh, it's a good meeting with you, Alice. Yeah, of course, anytime. See Literally you. anytime. I'm around here way too much sometimes. <laughs> Same. I've just, I just yesterday started instituting office hours for myself. If I was Quite around, literally yesterday. If I was around as much as you, the Constitution would probably be 50 pages by now, because I end up adding a page every time <laughs> I, I come to the bench, so. Fair enough. Hey, hey Alice. Hey, Alice. Uh, hey, Counselor O'Leary, are you confirming the uh, settlement that was uh, put into my docket on number 004? I sure will. Okay. I've just been... Uh... Uh, doesn't stop. Uh, doesn't stop, Chief. Ver ver uh, verbal, com just... verbal confirmation is good. I was just asking out loud okay. so yes, that I can... Yes, absolutely. Okay, And uh, both the, um, the AG and I came to an agreement on the Vibe Spoochie uh, case as well. I don't know if you're across that one. Uh, I had not seen that you did, but I knew you all intended on... I thought you intended on meeting after the weekend, but... Uh, I did, too. Uh, we we knocked it out in about two minutes, so... Okay. Um, all right, I See, need we're working to, uh, better again. I, I need to review a couple of things uh, that were just recently filed in paperwork because I've been in conversations for the last three hours. Um, yeah. But I'll be, I'll be good to join this conversation in a few moments. Okay. All right, Chad, I need it's to be RB. Little, I would say, unfortunately, it feels like this conversation is directly pointed at you, but uh, we'll talk to you, Olivia. I need to be um, RB. Can I ask you just, like, one question before we start this? Again, this oh. is not me... 
or me. This is uh, you. Sure. So uh, I'm just going to make this out from the start that this is not uh, me accusing you of anything or using any accusatory language. But yeah. I have been here in Boomers. And I just wanted to ask you about them before yeah. anything else. You can be going around telling people that care killed Satya. No, I've not. I think that's an embellishment of what I've said. Okay, what exactly did you say? I said that Kerr told her about the clothes that you you've heard that. Yeah. I, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just literally that is that she went out then jumped off. I think it's just an embellishment of mm -hmm. what I've said. Okay. I'll take you at your word then. Mm -hmm. I would never so. say he killed someone. That's insane. He didn't. Mm -hmm. He didn't do that. I, yeah. I people have been saying I killed her by not letting her like uh, she handed me her resignation letter multiple times um, mm -hmm. and I did not accept it because she was drunk each time mm -hmm. and uh, so I've been blamed for that too so um, yeah okay. I don't take that at face value either okay okay so what was it you want to talk about okay um we are dealing with a uh, conflicted attorney issue. Mm -hmm. uh, we are writing up a bar complaint ahead of that mm -hmm. bar complaint. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's Maximilian von Bilderberg. Um, ahead of that bar complaint, uh, we advised him to remain off of the case he was working on. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, I, I'd Marina. say str I I think I should have said do not be in do not be involved with this. It, it was but. you did you did say that. Um, it was very clear. He pushed back. We said, I, I told him, Paul is, Paul is not your enemy here. I am not, I've been conflicted from the beginning. He's looking out from your, for your best interests. Do not fight this. Um, and he said, okay, I, I'll stop. I'm off the case. I believe immediately after that, he said that he came in here and talked to the chief justice about said case. Um, and got advice on said case, was told that the bar complaint is going to be thrown off. A bunch of stuff came back into our office about 10 minutes ago and just gave, tried to give us tons of advice on how to proceed. Mm -hmm. um, again, mm -hmm. I'm not involved. <laughs> I'm not, mm -hmm. I was just writing a bar complaint. And yeah. uh, so obviously we dismissed mm -hmm. him out of the room once again, mm -hmm. or adding that whole incident yeah. to the bar complaint. Um, yeah. So, so uh, let me be clear when I say this. No advice was given in this office. Oh, we know. Uh, just, yeah, we yeah. know. Yeah, uh, we challenged him on that. Yeah, I, I, I said, I, I, I asked him clearly. The chief justice gave you advice about this ongoing case, and he went no. So he just lied to us. Okay. But that seems like a recurring theme for Maximilian von Bilderberg. Yeah. Okay. And you're putting in a bar complaint, yeah? I'm in the middle of running it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot that he's been. Do you doing. want to let the chief justice know what you just said? I am back. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just essentially after uh, we were made aware uh, that uh, Paul came up to me and let me know that uh, Max uh, Million was conflicted. Uh, I was involved. In, like I was, I witnessed essentially Paul say, you you need to be removed from this very authoritatively. Uh, uh, Paul's been doing great on that front. I then uh, let Max know that Paul is looking out for his best interest to listen to him. As Max was fighting it throughout. He agreed to do so uh, as we were working on his uh, pretty broad uh, bar complaint. Um, he came here. I believe he talked to you. Uh, he said that you were going to dismiss, dismiss the bar complaint because it had like no grounds. Uh, you got He got advice from you. Um, and he came up and gave us all of said advice um, and how to proceed on the case. He didn't. He did. He did not. Him. He did not get advice from us. He, he vaguely mentioned nope. uh, something yeah. pertaining to the, uh, uh, it, like something that had happened between him and Bishop. Mm -hmm. I think after the fact, um, and I we quickly dismissed it and essentially said, you know, impeachment evidence can be entered against officers. Uh, however, we are. We're not going to talk any further than procedurally yeah. on this matter. Yeah, uh, that's not what he presented to us. He, he, he basically said that you'd he, given advice to him about what to do and how to do it, and yeah, yeah. we 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 discussed procedural advice in so far as uh, the nature of the filing and how it was going to impact Mr. Marino's mayorship because that was rapidly unfolding, but 
for our eyes. Uh -huh. um, and since Max can still serve as, quote, general counsel for the mayor, um, you know, cushioning the impact on the mayorship would be a portion of that that he would not necessarily be conflicted on. So we, we didn't see any issue with him overhearing that portion of things. Uh, gotcha. We did. Yeah. We challenged him on that. Um, he then said no. Uh, he, Paul was like, uh, you, "You're telling me that the chief justice advised you on how to proceed on this," and he said, "He said <laughs> no." Um, so uh, we we did catch him in that lie. Um, yeah. you, and... you 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 both know how how my advice yeah. on cases tends to be. Yeah. It's it's more of I will generally answer the abstract legal aspects of things, but I'm not going to speak to the particulars. Uh, absolutely, sir. <laughs> um, so um, just to let you know, we are handling that. We will be we will be submitting uh, a litany of concerning items uh to you guys um, racho thank you for the gifty out winter uh, he's, he's thank you for the gifty uh, out great mind john o sure with a 27 right months uh, vosbert uh, with a 14 so, uh, we'll be getting chat you guys are shortly. amazing okay. thank you okay yeah the other interesting aspect of things was that he he did mention the bar complaint to us and i did tell him to not worry about it but that's because he phrased it as though it was going to be coming from the prosecution side of things mm -hmm. Uh, specifically, he said that the prosecution was going to be filing a complaint against him for simply saying, uh, like, don't talk or something along those lines uh, to Mr. Marino. Um, ah. Yeah, no, the, he's heavily conflicted in a case he was co counsel He's counsel. Yeah, he the, attempted to counsel on. So, yeah, the, the information that we provided to him was that he would be conflicted as to this specific matter, but he could still serve as general counsel for Mr. Marino. So yeah. he should conflict himself from anything pertaining to this, but could continue to advise him as to his mayorship and you know, things along those lines or any future uh, or pr prior uh, legal matters. Um, it, correct me if I'm wrong. Sorry, uh, Justice. Um, didn't he not say that he was not conflicted? Does, did, did those words come out of his mouth? I swear they did. <laughs> I we, think he said, I'm not conflicted, but I'm not going to be on this case. I think he said that verbatim. That... I mean, that could very well just be a, I don't know, a, a, a language barrier thing, a German thing. I don't Maybe, know. Because yeah. him saying he's not going to be on this case, but he's not conflicted is in and of itself contradictory. Um, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, no. He framed it as though this was going to be coming from the uh, some sort of malice yeah. from the prosecution end of things. And I said, absent them having proof that you were actually providing legal advice as to a matter that you were a material witness on, then you're fine. And it's, I, yeah, and it's and it yeah, sounds like it sounds like the two of you have exactly that. Yeah, I, Paul, I do recall <laughs> him saying that. The way I took it, honestly, is a pride thing. Is that he's going to step away, uh, but he's not conflicted. Being like, fine, you can claim that, but you know, I, I'll, I'll step away. I don't want to, but I will. That's that's honestly how I took it. Um, Flames of fire in the tier one, twenty one months. Yeah, it's it's fine. There's there's a lot of other concerning matters here. Um, yeah. And no. one of them is, I, I did send you facts regarding uh, Paul, his recent efforts. Um, I don't even know if that's possible. Um, so you can take a look at it when you are yes, I'll, the deluge of papers right now. I'll let, I'll let yeah, that I'll go. Get, but, I'll, get, I'll get you a response to that yeah, soon-ish. Um, essentially, the pay rate's been broken by some things that have been going on. So um, uh, I will highlight that in the bar complaint as well. Um, the um actually counselor evans while we've got you here um we had one of the lower clerks go around and start passing out new pamphlets and inserts for the constitution uh, which are directly going to impact your client those have already been discussed with him directly uh since you know he's okay. the mayor and i'm not criminally prosecuting him so i can talk to him um yep. essentially this has raised a concern uh without speaking as to the validity of the particular indictment on this case um in the event that we did have a mayor who committed a, a felony level offense and there was you know overwhelming proof that it transpired uh the question mm -hmm. becomes what do we do in the interim while that individual is undergoing their appeal processes um and the response that we have received in the form of executive order from the governor is that we will suspend that individual's um, uh, political candidacy uh, until such a time as the process resolves. Right. Um, 
in oh. in the interim of that time period while the appeal is pending uh mr marino will appoint a vice mayor and that vice mayor will serve as the interim mayor there will be essen gotcha. essentially a very small line of succession we're not going to go all the way down the list until we have you know eventually have the you know <laughs> you know the list Damn congress it. has that where it's you know like the 40 second in line is the you know uh minister of education or whatever um mm -hmm. We're not going to go that far with it. If the vice, uh, if the vice mayor gets kicked out as well, then we're just going to hold a new election. Um, but Mr. Marino is clear to appoint a vice mayor who may serve in the interim on his behalf. Gotcha. I will. Uh, yeah, I assume he already knows, but I'll let him know uh, to. Yeah, you can uh, you can review the particularities of the constitution and review those with him, or address any questions that you have with them to me. Um, since this was. Uh, uh, an amendment to the Constitution, but it is being uh, post-dated because of uh, executive order. Essentially, the mayor's boss said it's fine to do this to him now. So, gotcha. All right. <laughs> okay. You know, I I want to meet that governor one day. He's terrifying. <laughs> you ever no? You ever watch The Wizard of Oz? Yeah. Don't like, that. Don't it's look. Like, it's like don't that. look behind the curtain. Yes, nope. like that. Uh, I, I want to highlight uh, before we, we, we give you back your time here um, that uh, it has now become a uh, Paul Evans Candy Laguna uh, file. Those two, are, it's it's like uh, two male <laughs> sheep or two male rams butting heads throughout. It's going to be a very interesting. I will uh, I will state plainly. I hate Candy Laguna. <laughs> if, oh hey Chris, you're doing a great job. Hey, Chris. Is everyone safe and secure in this office? Yep, we're, we're safe and sure. secure. Oh, yeah. Chris. Doing great, Chris. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> All right, 10-4. Wow, he's great. He's thorough. Yep, he's he's always I checking. Like that guy. Very thorough. Yeah. yeah, he somehow is always here. He just always knows where people are. He's great. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, was there anything significant that I missed in so far as the Max situation was concerned, or was that pretty much the the highlight? Um, I, it, I, it'll all be in the back complaint. There's basically. a lot. There's a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's it's been a hell of a tw like twelve to twenty four hours. Uh, but we'll we'll get that to you very shortly here. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, all right. And just so you are also aware, uh, Councillor Evans, uh, you will most likely mm -hmm. have a panel reviewing whatever appeal ends up going up. Because I'm, I'm quite certain there will be one uh, soon, DM. <laughs> All right, I can, uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, we're we're oh going boy. we're going to endeavor for an expedited judicial review of things, just to make sure that uh, the political and democratic processes of our state are not hinged on scheduling nonsense. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna aim to get that over tomorrow. Um, latest um, end of tomorrow that is. Okay. I mean, you're still operating on your 30-day statute. Uh, just on our end, we will be aiming to expedite things once uh, once it hits the ground. So, I, well, yeah, uh, I'll try my hardest. All right. All right. Okay. Beautiful. Um, I appreciate you guys. Thank you, guys. you so much. Uh, mm -hmm. Anytime. Counselor O'Leary, do you need a formal written order pertaining to your settlement, or are you uh, good with what has been posted on the docket? I'm good with what has been posted on the docket. Uh, both individuals said that uh, the AG is in agreement as well. So just go to him to remit payments. Uh, so I will do so uh, with Brandy tomorrow. So I think we're good to go. Okay. The only addition the court had was that I did put a time frame on things. I did say that it needed to be done within uh, seven days. Uh, just yes, because I, I did see that. Yeah. yeah. Not a not a big fan of, um, you know, this is how we're settling it, but we're not going to say when. So... I hear you. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> All right, perfect. Perfect. Thank you both. Just a whole bunch of smokers, huh? <laughs> yeah. A whole bunch of smoking with, people. With this kind of job, you need to do that kind of thing. Oh, I know. That's I wasn't right. before. Um, Chief. Going to be uh, appointing Joy Daniels as vice or deputy mayor, whatever the position is going to be called. Okay, perfect. She was the. She was, was the uh, one of the yes. mayoral candidates. Yep, okay. therapist.
All right. Has she already been advised that she's going to be serving as the interim mayor for the next however long? The uh, I, I've takes? sent a letter, but uh, you know, explaining everything to her, but haven't heard back. Okay, perfect. I will make sure that the remainder of city council is apprised of the fact she will be serving as interim mayor, and yeah, we'll just wait for the rest of this knot to untie itself. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, well, that's my that's my entire. I feel like uh, I feel like I'm. I never left a gym class. I'm just climbing from one knot of the rope to the next. Um. <laughs> well, you you know, you're great at what you do, sir, and I appreciate your work. <laughs> All right. I think uh, we're gonna talk to Paul here. All right. There know, is a, there is a, I can't talk to Paul. Paul has talked with you by air. Yeah. Self. Uh, uh, there is a party today at Bahamas Mamas. I'm just saying, everybody who is tired of work uh, is... Uh... Oh! Oh, hello, oh, Mr. Oh, there's my man. Hello. <laughs> I, I thought you'd be in a cell. This is great news. Oh, this no, is great news. Perfect. You talk, you talk, to, 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 you right. talk with Paul. You, you are not conflicted. Perfect. All right. Sorry, Max. All right. We'll, uh, yes. we'll, we'll leave you with it uh, with your counselors. Good luck, uh, All right. Mayor. Hello. Okay. All right, we've got our interim mayor. That is good. good. Only took Do you need me... me to send any letters or anything about that? Um, I'm trying to think. Let me see if I have a list anywhere of the other counselors. Yeah. Um, actually, let's ask at the front desk if uh, the attorney general is about. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, hello. Okay. Do we know if the attorney general is still in office? No, he left out with Muffy quite a bit ago. Left out with Muffy. Okay, interesting. Um, so they're just kind of wandering about town. Who just gave me a photo of the chief? <laughs> <laughs> was, was not I. Uh, the officer that came in a little bit earlier said that he was at Davis, so I'm not sure if he's still there. Oh, there they go. Speak of the devil. Ah, perfect. Okay. Um, Thank you all very much. Slept a photo. Oh, we got him. How you doing, sir? Right. Doing well. Let's head up to your office, Attorney General. Let's I've do it. That's... Good news and uh, mediocre news. I've got all kinds okay. of news for you. All right. None Yay. of it's none like... of it's bad news. I don't. Well, you'll probably find a way to interpret it as bad news. You're we a lawyer. Like... What does that we mean? Like Why are you? <laughs> could, do you construe me as a negatively minded person, sir? That, how dare you? I mean, is he wrong? Okay, whatever, Miss Alvarez. You don't know. You don't know me like he does. Okay, you can't say that. <laughs> Listen, I've heard. Plenty enough about you. <laughs> okay, whatever. Just listen to don't listen to don't listen to whoever said it. I, I'm not sure. I probably pissed a lot of people off, so I can't really be you know clear exactly. as to who's yeah. <laughs> hearsay, fucking judgmental people. It's all right. You know, Where's visionaries. The, uh... Visionaries have you know they have enemies. You know, where, people where... don't like when people have you know clear distinct vision for what where, they want. Where, where's the hero of our press conference at? Uh, <laughs> he had to go. He actually did a very good job, honestly. Mm. He had to go. Yeah, he had a good. He did a great job of just. I, I ended the press conference. Technically, that was not the press conference. That was his own thing. I said yeah, the press conference and concluded. Yeah. I walked out of the door. That is signifying that it was over. I had nothing to do with the rest. <laughs> okay, you remember that time that I told you if you bring dogs into the house and they start chewing on the couch and shitting on the carpet that that's that's still your shit, Greco. That's that was the council's house. That wasn't even my <laughs> house. My house is up here. Okay, well you took your dogs over to the council's house, so. <laughs> okay, all right well, i didn't i didn't i don't okay anyway yeah <laughs> i want to hear the good news now um okay so i following uh, a brief uh, aneurysm um drafted a couple of things up i sent a fax to our uh, lovely governor and I received, uh, I, I corresponded with the other judges, and we could not come to a resolution as to how we could resolve this issue within our judicial powers, because anything that we wrote and included within the Constitution, ex, ex post facto would apply to. We would inherently be punishing somebody. We would be legislating around what just happened. Um... The solution that we came up with was executive order, but typically executive orders come from the mayor. Uh, so who's above the mayor? The governor. Uh, I reached out to the governor, and uh, the idea was thumbs up. So I love a good man. I love a good governor level thumbs up. It's just an easy, <laughs> what an easy, what an easy breezy Roberto governor he is. Uh, so what has transpired? Uh, 
As a matter of fact, your copies of the Constitution up here should have already been updated. Olivia sent the uh, the lower clerks out and had them oh. uh, sneak in and slip things into the uh, the folders. Um, do you ever just feel like you're macing someone in the face? <laughs> um, yeah, I do sometimes. I do. I actually do feel that way a lot. <laughs> so it's um it's a feature of that specific clipboard. I thought at first it was just a dream, but in fact, no. My eyes are burning. <laughs> let, me just, let me just grab a different let me just grab a different clipboard okay uh so there has been a section amended to the public constitution uh relating to public servitude uh the first section of it is eligibility for government employees or a government employment uh I would like to specify this is not directly related to the mayor or the police or the doctors or anybody in particular. It's all government employees. Uh, no person except for a citizen of the state of San Andreas shall be eligible to hold any public office within the state. No person shall be eligible to hold any public office who has any felony level offense upon their permanent record. Uh, a person's public office shall be stayed upon indictment of any felony level offense and their service in office will be suspended until such a time as they complete an appeal of the indicted felonies. So that is to say we are not going to kick somebody out of the office, we are not going to reverse the results of an election, and we will not permanently fire them until such a time as either one, their chance to appeal has elapsed, or two, they have appealed and failed to do so successfully. Uh, the next section deals with mayoral succession, and I may shift this one around to be in a different portion of the Constitution so it reads easier, um, but the very short version of what this one says is that if the mayor becomes, if the mayor dies or becomes disqualified from their position, the vice mayor will serve in their place. If the vice mayor becomes disqualified, the council will put together an election within two weeks. <laughs> that seems like a very swift and very, very, very satisfactory Band-Aid. Well, uh, to add to the satisfaction to put some aloe vera under the Band-Aid, uh, we already have a vice mayor appointed uh, following a conversation that I had with Mr. Marino uh, about this very executive order that's been entered. <laughs> okay, so who is it? Uh, it is going to be Interim Mayor Joy Daniels. Okay. Is she an associate of the lost room? No. Anyone? No? <laughs> no. All right. That's a fucking win. Isn't Not a criminal. Bang. Her current position, I think, is still therapist at Pillbox, no? Oh, my yeah, God. I believe she works at the hospital. She's a, a competent professional, professional mayor? Oh, my <laughs> God. I We fixed the town. We fixed the town. We fixed it. We did it one. We just did one thing, and we fixed the whole fucking town. We did that. That's us. We did that. Well, we got to get the conviction. <laughs> We're going to convict that motherfucker because he's got more charges coming. Um, I do want to discuss very briefly the legal overlay of the charge of felony obstruction of justice. Um, oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, now, I don't expect the marshals to necessarily be fully apprised of the intricacies of the First or the Fifth Amendments outside of just, you know, you read somebody Miranda writes. Uh, as a matter of fact, Muffy. Um... What are the yeah, Miranda that's rights? That's not fair. She's nineteen. She's somewhere between nineteen and forty years old. Could, what are my Miranda rights? You want yeah, me to recite the Miranda could, rights? Could you, could you recite the Miranda rights? Yeah, yeah. You have the rights to remain silent. Anything you say. We can stop can with the will... first one. Okay. <laughs> well, that first one, you have the right to remain silent. Yeah. If you ask yeah. somebody a question and they decide to be silent, that is not obstruction of justice. Well, he wasn't silent. He said, <laughs> "I don't want to tell you." Okay, let me rephrase. Outside of them directly lying to you and leading your investigation astray in some way, saying I don't want to tell you is the legal equivalency of silence. <sighs> Sorry, I've been reading that fucking <laughs> Gerson, Paul, and Thomas thing way too much. I've been doing some research. That's my bad. Yep. So, um, while I do take issue with that one, and honestly, I didn't even broach the subject. I just generally asked the other justice who did sign off on the arrest warrant uh, what their thought of the statement of probable cause was. Uh, and prior to me even raising the subject, they said, I probably should have told them to strike that one off of the uh, off of the warrant. <laughs> yeah, that's not... I mean, I didn't sign it. I didn't even look at that warrant. That's Marvin Douglas. I didn't even look at it. 
I, yeah. I looked at the probable cause statement and, uh, you know, the obstruction I thought was articulated in there. It was, was withholding the information. And I mean, also on top of that, so I'm not sure if it, do you want to know this detail? Are you going to be sitting on this one? No way it is, right? We will probably be paneling it. So I'm, I'm just going to discuss it on the high level and leave the okay. nitty gritty right. details out of things. Doesn't matter. Um, we got another golden bullet anyway. Um, yeah, no, more than likely within the next 24 to 36 hours, the appeal is likely to be filed on it. Um, after discussing it with Wade, we are probably going to panel this one, given the political implications. We don't want one bullet or one judge trying to eat the bullet on this one. Okay. Um, so we will. Is that for all upcoming? Like we have more, char there's more charges coming. Uh, it will, at the very least, be for this first one, which will most likely face a semi-expedited -expedi trial setting, as you and I already discussed. Um, and depending on how the first one goes will depend on whether a panel is necessary for the rest, I suppose, because if there's a permanent disqualification of the mayor and our democratic processes are no longer relying on the outcome of a case, then I suppose the need for a panel kind of dissolves at that point, doesn't it? I would assume so. Yep. So depending on how the first one goes will depend on whether or not there's a panel convened or any expedited um, scheduling for the f remainder of whatever there is to come. Um, well, his charges would still be of a criminal nature and would be need to be heard anyway, right? So I'm just wondering if it would all be like an omni kind of like, you know, like a, like a rolling indictment of some kind. You know, <laughs> it's a legal device. No. New. <laughs> hmm. Well... Uh, is it typical practice of law enforcement once they scoop somebody up to just start adding to an old incident report and make it all well, part I'm of one Well, I'm just saying that for convenience, you know, I'm just it's a legal device. <laughs> it's new. We could, it's experimental. You never, you can't say, you know, who's going to say no? If you, uh, if you had done the courtesy of uh, placing this as a direct uh, trial case on the docket, I could allow you to amend your initial filing. However, since Mr. Marino has already been sent to jail and served time pertaining to these charges, um, no, I can't let you add to it anymore. It's, it's kind of right. sealed. That's fine. <laughs> I love multiple dockets with the same name on them anyway. Uh, okay, so, yeah. So interim mayor Joy Daniels, uh, she will serve until such a time as either Marino is permanently disqualified, in which case she will become not just the interim mayor, but the mayor herself. Um, Does she get to pick a cabinet? There is not a technical outline as to what it means to have a cabinet currently outside of vice mayor. Vice mayor is the only role that we have constitutionally devised at this time, and that is... Uh, in the event that the mayor apparently gets indicted, because that's a thing that happens within a week of them being appointed. Okay. <laughs> well, he was technically on vacation for that first week. He's only been in the office for like three days. Yeah. Well, we're, that, we're is that worse? I don't know. I guess it's worse. We're we're not going to. I don't intend on doing things the same way that the Congress has done on the mainland. I, I don't want to go 42 levels down as to what happens in the event of a mass casualty situation and suddenly we have the head right. of the Department of Education being the president. Um, if we make it through a mayor and we make it through a vice mayor, we'll just scrub the whole thing and do another election. I think that's better. What do you think would happen if, like, you know, let's say, like, this is a completely, you know, hypothetical. I'm not sure. It's not a waste of time if you think about it. But, like, you know, if, like, if everyone, what happens if, like, they go all the way through down, like, the, all the 42 people or whatever, and there's just, like, some, you know, like a, you know, like a mailroom guy who's suddenly, like, in charge of everything? What do you think that <laughs> would be like? Um, it would probably be like working in government in Los Santos. <laughs> well, you're, you're technically, that's kind of you then. You're the mailroom guy, <laughs> except for here. Well, except at the top of here is what I mean. It's a compliment. Uh, so, da, 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 da. yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, we managed to actually put a Band-Aid on this problem over the course of about three hours. Didn't take too long. Oh, we got him out. That's, you know what? That's all I was really worried about. Because this guy is up to some stuff. And I, would, I can't even say it now. I can't even share with you my stuff now. Let's say it. <laughs> so, anyway, you'll see more coming soon. Okay. Uh, Marshals or AG, is there anything you need to discuss with myself or Olivia? Because I've got one other subject to broach, but I want it to be a one-on-one -on -one conversation between myself and Greco. Okay. Um, I think one question I have is, like, I think 
I've heard this a lot lately with like people being conflicted out of things. So if you're present for like the situation that happens, say you're a lawyer. Are you attempting to very vaguely ask me a question about yeah. uh, the Max mayor's Simillion. council, Max? Yeah. Is, was he, is, is he conflicted out because he was part of that original scene? Uh, so yes and no. Uh, any, okay. and, uh, I'm sure the attorney general could elaborate on this uh, just as much as I can, but any lawyer who is likely to serve as a quote material witness to what transpired uh, should conflict themselves off of representation in relation to those matters. However, the word material starts getting a little sticky whenever you have the defendant themselves, you have other witnesses, you have police testimony. It, are they really material? Okay. Do you really need them? Um, however, we have advised that that individual may remain as general counsel for the mayor, but should conflict themselves from giving any further advice related to this particular matter. Right. Okay, understood. Thank well, he kind of finagled his way in and, and uh, well, actually, that's not true. I guess to Paul, Paul stated that he was doing some underhanded stuff to get a, his hands on the statement of probable cause. Uh, Mr. Bilderberg or whatever has been class certified for like five days, and now he's the general counsel of the mayor of the city. So I want yeah. that guy's career trajectory. <laughs> he's, he's, not even a, he's not even a private attorney, right? He's not even a public defender? I mean, to be fair, I applied for reciprocity with my bar license, and then I walked in and was handed the, kings of the keys of the kingdom, so... Well, you, you're welcome. <laughs> but were you accusing police officers of planting evidence, though? Because that guy, he needs to start, you know, not being so paranoid. He's so silly. Uh, some of our defense counsel are more zealous. I'm going to use the word zealous because it's nice. Uh, they're more zealous than others. Like crusaders. Like mm -hmm. crusaders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were typically... They did a... Well... They tried a bunch of times, those crusades. They, they did. They were there. They tried. Anyway. All right. Trying is what matters. All right, everyone, beat it. Uh, except for Miss Alvarez. Good. She can stay, I guess, probably. All right. You, Maybe. Um, uh, yeah, she's relatively already privy to what i all right. You can take the notes. About. I don't mind. I know everything. These things should be recorded. So, it, you know. Did I really just... hate. He, he said, I don't remember. Whatever. Yada, yada. I have Muffy take notes on everything I do. Um, I'm a, I might be the court of the the court clerk, but I'm definitely not a secretary. <laughs> okay, well yeah, I can take notes. Yeah, she doesn't really take notes. <laughs> you can take notes. Can someone take notes? She, I, this, she, I want it just so I remember. Uh, I think you're gonna remember this one. Um, okay. Greco, are you paying enough attention to your prosecutors? <sighs> like from a fatherly perspective, because I wonder about that sometimes. Uh, I mean, you know, that or as their boss. <laughs> yes. Um, Maj is, has asserted to me that she would like to be wholly in charge of the assignment as well as the management of the prosecutors. And she made it very clear to me that that's what she would like to do. However, um, I'm not sure where you're going with this. So, yes, I do keep on contact with my prosecutors. I'm aware of what they're doing. Okay. Is, is that uh, Miss Bishop's current role? Is she wholly in charge of that office they don't really rely on you too much no that's not the case sir what i'm <laughs> saying is that miss marjorie has made it clear that she would like clearly defined responsibilities and one of those things was managing the day-to-day -day workflow of our prosecutors okay so you're you keep saying you keep specifically saying she's made it clear that's what she wants but you haven't said what's actually happening Okay, well, I check over every statement, piece of paper, and everything else uh, when it comes to things that are in progress or have been submitted. Um, I review um, and make sure that our cases have the proper staffing. I'm apprised of the schedule, and I go to the hearings. Okay. That's what I do. What did your, what did your household look like when you were growing up? Because you brought up the fatherly thing. Brothers, sisters, stepmom, um, stepdad. Yeah, and... sister, sisters. Sisters all over the place. Sisters all over the place. Uh, older, younger? All, yeah, both actually. Younger, older. Okay. All right. Older brother. Okay. So you were so you were the middle child. No sense. I mean, I guess you know my 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 father you see had remarried, <laughs> you know. So my mother actually I was her firstborn, and my step siblings were also in the family. So oh, we didn't okay. have, we called each other step siblings, but you know we were. They were my older brother and sister from 
a previous marriage, but that wasn't really discussed with us. Okay. Uh, since you were, um, since you were your mom's oldest, did you did you ever feel overlooked by your stepdad? Well, it was my father and my mother, so it was just you know, um, <laughs> you know. Actually, now that you mention it, yeah, there was a couple of times I felt that you know they could have maybe paid more attention to me. You know, it's more so. It started when I was very young. You know, it was. <laughs> I think I was five, maybe six. You know, and we had been on summer vacation for some time. And, um, you know, I was, I was concerned that I, you know, I had, I had wanted, um, you know, I'd wanted to go to the beach on a particular weekend. And my sisters, of course, were upset because they wanted to go to a we're fair. Forcing you know, him to make like up lower for his character. And, you know, I'd mentioned this to my father and I said, dad, you know, maybe you, maybe you and me, we, uh, we split up and we, and we, uh, we go somewhere, you know, maybe, uh, one of them things. He's like, you know, I'd rather actually hang out with you. Um, you know, we, let's all go to the fair. So, you know, I felt like. You know, he had, you know, betrayed me in a sense there. And, um, you know, now I, I seem like um, I, I have to shower three times a day because of this. So. Okay. Well, your prosecutors feel like you always want to go to the fair, Greco. Well, I didn't want to go to the fair in that particular instance. I actually wanted, okay, I, maybe you want to, it doesn't matter. Okay. okay. Um, well, let's, well, let's, in this particular analogy, you're the, you're the, you're the dad, Greco. And okay. They, all and, right. they, and they feel like you want to go to the fair instead of going to do what they want to do. <laughs> okay, that's good feedback. <laughs> can you be more specific? Uh, I can be more specific insofar as nearly every conversation that you and I have had the occasion to have over the course of the last week and a half to two weeks has pertained specifically to the new Christmas toy you have, which is the Marshall Service. Oh, you keep calling them dogs that shit on the carpet and yet they're a toy? It's not like I have any other choice <laughs> than to pay attention to okay, them since maybe, they are basically maybe. the holy, you know, they are like a fucking non... People don't like them at all. Nobody. <laughs> And yet now here we are days <laughs> later. So yes, I, I agree with you, sir. I have not been fully engaged in my prosecutorial um, duties. However, um, I'm in court. I'm in trial. I'm going to the meetings and I am daily in wall to wall meetings with my prosecutors. So I find it strange that perhaps, you know, I'm interested. Who don't I talk to? I talk to everybody every day. I don't think that it's a matter of not talking to. I think it's a matter of uh, value of their workflow and their and their you know uh, general day to day. I suppose. Um, frankly, Greco, I, I don't know why you have not yet appointed yourself an associate attorney general who can you know, serve in your stead and actually oversee those matters. You're 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 overworking yourself. You're you're managing the marshals. You're managing. You're you're their PR manager as well as their direct supervisor, as well as the individual who writes their SOPs. And when you're taking a shit in between, you read all of the court cases that come through, and then you go into a meeting with the attorneys. <laughs> um, well, sir, here's my philosophy. I agree with you. Um, <laughs> I love delegation. I like just watching things work. It's actually exciting to watch things work. Um, and I think that in order to keep our department functional, considering a broad um, workload, ranging from this, you know, the things we're talking about today, down to, you know, the, just the nitty gritty of writing a motion or statement of probable cause or whatever. I completely agree with you. I'm well overworked. Um, Marjorie Bishop is probably the closest thing I can get to somebody who can essentially take over that role for me. However, Miss Bishop has expressed on at least a couple of different instances that she does not share the vision that I have, um, for this office. Now, far be it for me to say that I do everything correctly, or that maybe I, uh, am <laughs> destined to be here forever. But at the end of the day, um, I'm trying to build something that will last for the future, not just for me and not just for the people here now. So um, it is hard for me to give more responsibility to somebody who has not really got on board with the things that I'm trying to accomplish here. So I've been kind of looking up and down the roster and, and, and realistically, a lot of our people are not ready for that level of commitment, not ready for that level of um responsibility and not only that 
uh, there's a level of nuance to what we're doing in these in these early days when we're still formative that requires a careful hand. And I, it's not that I don't trust anybody else to do it, but nobody has made me feel as if back your back, at least so right far, up. other than Mr. Carr, <laughs> which I completely fucking bungled, if I'm being honest, uh, that there would be a reasonable alternative um, to promote. Miss Williams has got a lot of, you know, upside, but she doesn't want to do. You know, she feels uncomfortable in certain situations and primarily wants to work with the police. Mr. D'Angelo is a good op is a good person, but he is still cutting his teeth and has his eyes on law enforcement a lot of the time. A lot of people are interested in this hybrid role of investigation and, and marshals and stuff like that. So right now I have my 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 people in flux. Marvin wants to be a marshal. He's out. So um you know, we're doing a lot of exciting things that require a lot of attention. And the I am just one man, but I spend every a, waking hour in this I a, office. I have a so. question, Greco. Sure, sure. Have you have you considered that rather than trying to smash the peanut butter and jelly together on this sandwich, that you just make two sandwiches instead and div actually divide these divisions? Because I, I, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be transparent with you. What you're doing currently is essentially attempting to integrate these two components that do not work together or will not work together uh attempting to oh, wait, hold on hold on hold on what are, the two, what are the two components what are the two components uh by the sounds of it your law enforcement slash marshals side of things and then your prosecution work with the police side of things and you're saying that they're not they're not working well together i feel like it's oil and water based on the conversations that i've had very briefly with who individuals whose names I am actually going to keep to myself because they would value their privacy. Fair enough. Well, I can tell you this, sir, respectfully. We have been working as a well-oiled in tandem machine. Two individuals within that group are on the outs because they don't believe in it. One of them is my district attorney. The other one is my other prosecutor who has told me that she does not want to work here um, as long as Mr. Riggs was working here. I suspended Mr. Riggs for his conduct related to her, and he quit. And then she quit. And then she came back to work the next day and said, and I guess it wasn't that she'd quit, but it was miscommunicated to me. So I have been in engaging conversations with every single individual in my staff, every single one, and I've asked them these questions. What do you like about working here? What can I do for you? Can I do anything else? Can I make your life better? What are you doing that you like? There's a reason why Ma Marvin has gone to, uh, gone to Marshalls. There's a reason why Alice is working out of PD. There's a reason why Marge is taking over the cases and taking it because every single one of those people has said, this is what I want. So to say that they are not working together is true on a few levels. The first of which is that Alice and Riggs do not get along because Riggs is a bleeding asshole and I would fire him for on... On that grounds alone, if, if, if it wasn't for the fact that he is, at least for the most part, sometimes a functional fucking human being, but he will not behave that way any longer, or he will not be here. I promise you that. <laughs> and otherwise, Mr. D'Angelo, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hawthorne, Mr. Martin, Mr. Floppy, who's just joined us, they have been working together every single day building these cases. Every day. Okay. So... Look, categorically, I'm not, uh, I denied it. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not questioning your leadership ability. Uh, you have struck up a prosecutor's office out of seemingly thin air. Uh, half of the people that you have hired, I think, I handed bar cards to as recently as two to three weeks ago, even. And some of them are doing more work on the docket than any private attorney would. Uh, similarly, uh, despite the constant headache that uh, your marshal service has been. Uh, they are actually shaping up to be a decent investigative police force. Uh, we have not. Sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry. Continue. So, um, and obviously, you know, tasks like that require us to go back to the drawing board from time to time. Uh, the suggestion that I'm making to you is simply that other attorney general's offices, the way that they work, is they break things into divisions as is necessary. Um, that not only helps them split up the workload. Uh, but it uh, it does allow for cross-collaboration as necessary. Uh, so your attorney general of the state will have a criminal appeals division and then a 
I don't know, a commercial sector and then a, uh, uh, you know, a, a public corruption compartment built into that as well. We have uh, lots of plans, sir. We have a lot of plans here. Okay. Right now, we we just needed to get our criminal mayor out of office, and we did that. It has been a, a major concern for us. We have not nearly had enough time to showcase what we're capable of here. And now people might be upset. People quit. People leave. You know, they come, they go. They threaten. They give me ultimatums. They do this. But we go forward every single day with the mind that we are going to better this fucking state. Pardon my language. And we are going to leave some level of legacy and something sustainable for the people to come after us. I don't, and I, I mean, sir, I'll, you're my boss. I will do what you say. But I have a vision for this, and I'm not joking when I say that I will go to the fucking ends of the earth, again, excuse my language, to make that happen. And, you know, sometimes I'm going to need you, I, I need your guidance. I need a, I need a, a critical voice in my head, and I, I'm glad to have it be you. <laughs> um, but, I, I mean, in the, in, this, in the sense that if you want to spend the day working alongside us to see what we do down here, I think you would be wholly impressed with what we've accomplished here in the very short time that we've been given the opportunity to do so. Well... Um, I mean, my personal advice would be to continue down the path that you're doing. Uh, empower your employees to do what they need to do. Uh, and some of that may consist of, you know, uh, the generation of, um, you know, special prosecutors units and house counsel or, a, you know, an actual uh, representation or differentiation of what it means to be a district attorney versus, uh, an in-house prosecutor for the attorney general's office. Um, Indeed. But you know that whatever tools you need at your disposal to make this office work, I will happily provide for you. I just don't want you to begin losing assets that, uh, based on my perspective, are the ones that make the docket actually move along. I, I hear you. And, you know, Marge has had every single opportunity to come here, and and I've given her every I single... I like how it's Marge. she's asked for, I've said yes. Every single thing. Um, she has this opportunity in her hands, but this Alice business is, is, is way too much of a pet project. I completely, I have supported her since day one. I have only ever asked what she wants, but, um, she, I can't, I cannot make her happy with her job. Not only that, she has, she doesn't, I don't know. It's not a critique. She wants to do very specific things, but I, I don't know how much more I can give her other than exactly what they want and nothing else. Because that's what it feels like sometimes. And I can't operate like that. So sometimes that's what... Listen, like, I, I, I'll I, tell you, Mr. Kerr is... <laughs> I, I'm looking at him like, Jesus Christ, what have I done here? Like, that was a terrible mistake on my behalf. <laughs> and that whole situation Cosmos, is precipitated by this months. exact type of problem that Alice is having now with Riggs. There's some interpersonal grievance that escalated itself very quickly and was communicated in a serious way that has already been rapturous here. So I'm not trying to throw blame around, but I care about my people fiercely. Everybody. The, the reason I suspended Riggs and took all the heat for that is because I would do the same for Muffy. I would do the same for Al, you know, anybody else. Hey, they all get the same treatment. And unfortunately, you know, I am what I am and uh, I have to just go ahead with my gut. And some people want to quit or have it that way. And that's the only two options. Okay. Well, like I said, you know that I will empower you to do what you need to do. Uh, if changes need to be made or if you need suggestions, uh, uh, then I am at your disposal. I do have to say it is nice putting you on a little bit of a backpedal after I uh, came around City Hall only to find out I had to immediately amend the Constitution. So just consider this payback. <laughs> That's not a backpedal, sir. I am passionate. You know, I uh, maybe I uh, am hot-headed and stubborn, but I... Um... <laughs> You know, I've worked in a lot of places where it just felt like the people did not matter. Names on a spreadsheet, you know. You can fucking be fired. You can be let go for any reason at any time. And honestly, sir, when I worked in that environment, I said I would never, ever, ever let that happen to anything I was ever in charge of. And that was the same. I, I wake up every day with that in my mind. So it's not happening here. There's no okay. fucking spreadsheets. There's no just names on it. I listen to everybody, but this is essentially a state-run... <laughs> operation and i fucking i wish i could keep everybody's feelings at number one but i can't sometimes no. but conduct is number one that's it okay 
All right. Well, I just wanted to you know bring that to your attention and uh, provide you my suggestion. If you came to my office tomorrow and told me that you wanted to open the district uh, attorney's office of Los Santos that would be operating strictly out of the police department and would have its own staffing guidelines that were operated by other people because that's what you need to do to empower your office. I would support that. If you told me your marshal service needed its own lawyers, I would support that. If you told me that they all needed to work in one room, we would ask the governor to knock the walls off of all of these goddamn offices and just put one big table in here for you. So... Let us show. Let us show you what we can do here. <laughs> There's some people on board with it, some people aren't. But we, I'm. This is going. The winds are blowing in the right direction. So um, I, I really want everybody that's involved right now to be involved, which is why I'm so feverish about trying to sell this vision to to everybody. Um, so that's it. Okay. Anyway. Right. Yeah. I hope well, that. I hope it was satisfactory. But I appreciate all your work, Chief. You know. It's, uh, unfortunately, I kind of feel like, uh, you know, you're, the stuff you're doing here is overlooked by <laughs> your, your careful hand and how, and how, how easily you do these things. So I've, I have a distinct feeling that the state would be, <laughs> uh, destabilized by, uh, without your, <laughs> without your guidance. So thank you. Uh, I don't know. I think we're in a relatively good place now. I mean, there might be a couple of forest fires here and there, but, uh, the platform at least exists now. You know, there's a constitution. Cases are going to, you know, actually going to trial. Uh, there's magistrate judges. We've got clerks. Uh, I think the DOJ is, uh, yeah, it's, it's operating significantly better than I could have imagined. So. <laughs> All right. Well, um, it's working. Whatever it is, we're going the right way. Yeah. As long as we keep the, uh, keep the coal in the engine, I suppose. Indeed. Thank you for your time. Absolutely, Greco. I don't have keys to this. Well, I'm not. I can, I can, I'm surprised by that, actually. Yeah. You I'm want, not, some, yeah, you want some keys? I think I can get you some keys right now. No, I already have Marshall keys. I'm just not. I'm signed on as uh, Department of Justice at the moment. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And then, oh, well, all right. We still don't have keys. <laughs> I've been able to fake enough. it Thank pretty you. well, but. Oh, my God. Chris, the security guy, when did you become British? <laughs> <laughs> I've always become British. <laughs> so, the entire DOJ has been invited to a party at Bahama yeah. Mama's. The building is actually all empty. We're the only ones here. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, if you would like to go party with some strippers, that is where literally everyone else who was in the building five minutes ago went. Oh, okay. Uh, I am likely to retire somewhat soon because uh, amending the Constitution, boy, that's not how I expected to start my day, but... <laughs> hey, you're a very powerful, important person. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did threaten to judicially chop somebody's hands off earlier and nobody said anything. <laughs> I, well, I, I questioned you. You were like, are you, are you actually questioning me right now? I was like, ah, no, never mind. <laughs> Yeah, it turns out uh, it turns out that when nobody else wants to legislate anything, you can just legislate whatever you want to, realistically. Yeah, that's what I'm finding out. <laughs> oh, uh, speaking of which, uh, the director, Ruby, she should be looking over the medical act. She said you had a couple of notes for additions. That yeah, she... she sent me some. She sent me some things that she wanted to change. The problem is, is I need to get with her in person and ask her about some of these because I heard from Kerr that she was saying, oh, and you know, it's just a minor name change. But no, some of these provisions are actually quite substantive and sort of severely affect people's ability to operate private practices and what they can do in them. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, I suppose. Uh, just Yeah, I just need to talk to her and figure out the intent behind what's going on, come to a reasonable middle ground, uh, make the proper amendments, and then it will be good to go. Perfect. Okay. I well, sent it out to four people. Three of them have already given all of their comments. She's the only one who is, uh, I haven't taken care of, basically. Has so anybody notified the may uh, the the stand-in mayor that she is now the stand-in mayor? Uh, she was email or not? Uh, she was mailed in the post by uh, Marino, I believe. Okay. So, okay. provided that she actually checks her post office, she should know she's the mayor. Okay. <laughs> That's great. 
Oh, well, that's good. I like Joy. I, she's I the one too. I voted for. Yeah, me too. I didn't vote for anybody. Why didn't you vote for anyone? I don't know. Just, I don't know. Being, it, being on the city council and already selecting so many things and legislating everything, I, I, voting just felt like I, I'm already doing everything else. Let other people but vote. But the city council doesn't do anything. You didn't select anyone. <laughs> I selected the chief of police. No, you didn't. <gasps> yes, I did. I voted for... Yes, I did. <laughs> mm. There were interviews. I read notes. <laughs> mm. I don't remember you being in that round table when I was doing my interview. No, but uh, Director Montgomery provided notes to the remainder of the council who wasn't present. Uh, all eight members voted. Oh. <laughs> okay. There yeah. was a different chief of police or a uh, different chief justice on my first uh, first meeting, I think. I think so, but nobody had casted votes until after the second round, um, which was interestingly enough when I was appointed as the chief justice. So, as a matter of fact, you were my runner-up vote. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> but that's a compliment. What do you mean? There was like four people. Yeah, you hear that, Enzo? You should be honored to be the Chief Justice's <laughs> second place. Yeah, right. I'll be, I'll be completely transparent. The only reason that, uh, that the primary reason, I should say, that uh, that Harper got an edge up on you was uh, in the notations that indicated that she was drunk at the time. No, it indicated that she said that she had written the standard operating procedures, and having someone else on city council that actually bothers writing things down would have, was going to be a huge bonus to me. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could have wrote those, but they were already written. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't anything against you. It was just the fact that she had done it. That, that's all. <laughs> I also suggested, uh, and I, I believe this is instituted already, that there should be a term limit for the chief of police in case they suck ass. Uh, currently, uh, in the event that they suck ass, the council is capable of ousting them. That's that's the current right, procedure. Right, right, right. But I thought there was a term limit. I, I mean, Jilly was telling me that it was two months. Um, I it was voted on recently, I guess. Oh, interesting. I they have not provided any of those bylaws or ordinances to us. This is what I told you, Enzo. You people like to talk, but you can't assume. <laughs> well, that's talking, why I'm bringing it up right now. It's this is very calculated. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, in in the event that that does exist, I, I suppose that we need to get together with, um, I guess, uh, Mayor uh, Daniels and find out what the status of all of that is, because. Uh, the Constitution provides term limits, I think, technically speaking, for my position. Um, yep. But that and also that also oh, needs to mayor. be amended. It's just you and the mayor. Well, and my position needs to be amended because whenever we raised the idea of voting on a chief justice to the council, they said they didn't want to do that. So. Yep. <laughs> also, the director was supposed to be an elected position. That's no longer a thing anymore. And she was supposed to have a time limit of 60 days. That's also not a thing anymore either. Because according to Miss Montgomery, the governor was the one who put me here. Therefore, the governor is the one who decides that I leave. <laughs> Did you check to make sure that that was actually like factual? Or is she just saying that? Well, there's nothing written down that says otherwise. Because the only things that are written down are the things that me and Wade wrote down. Mm. Yep. <laughs> I believe everyone in a leadership position should be looked at every 60 days if you're doing yep. a good job keep them there. i don't give a fuck mm -hmm. but you know if you know it's kind of a split kind of decision on it if you're 50 50 up for most people like i don't think that's really good no i think uh, i think cycling leadership through the branches of government would be good um there's inherently problems, I suppose, with something as technical as pillbox medical, where somebody would have to be. Uh, I mean, we don't want uh, we don't want a mad scientist to wind up uh, winning the popular election of the city council there. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's a reason that whenever I wrote the constitution, I included uh, term limits uh, 
or at the very least, a length of term uh, for the Chief Justice, because I'm a pretty big proponent of that as well. Uh, okay. Well, that's good. I'll get together with, well, uh, with Mayor Daniels. Are you trying to get out of this spot? Because you're not leaving. <laughs> oh, I'll leave. <laughs> no, you can't. No, you can't. The one benefit to Mad to interim Mayor Daniels is I believe she actually does want to write stuff down. So then we'll at least have three people in leadership positions who write things down. So you're saying I can just make I I can propose anything I want for the Constitution? Uh, Essentially, yes. yes. As long as this one here decides to write it in, you can just do that. Pretty much. That's what 90%, Ow. that's the reason that I only actually show up and do office hours at City Hall two to three days a week. Because every time I do office hours, I tend to add a page to the Constitution. Like to, give me, today's... Give me, what, <laughs> give me what you want me to, to submit and I will literally write this up and pass this to them. I don't have to wait for anybody. The idea originally was that things like what you're proposing, things that are, let's say, impactful towards state government, um, or even things that would be more along the lines of, like, ordinances, like, yeah, the way the city conducts itself, or advertising, or events, or businesses. Those were originally supposed to be things that passed through city council, were voted on, and then were just added as public laws or whatever. Um, but city council said they didn't want to do that either. <laughs> yeah, according to the city council by their own words when I was in there in the place of the chief justice is that they believe that their purpose is people make proposals to the city council for things to be like added or changed in the city or whatever and then they basically vote on whatever they think should be brought to the governor and then the governor is the one who actually makes the decision on all of this. They they don't actually make decisions. They just vote to on like what the governor should see <laughs> oh i see which makes them totally irrelevant because the chief justice here doesn't seem to have any problems just talking with the governor directly <laughs> <laughs> okay got you yeah it's also crazy because i feel like my determinations are way more impactful than that i could have just decided that marino would continue being the mayor tonight i could have decided we just needed to host a new election <laughs> You could have. You're the shadow leader. <laughs> there's nothing. There's nothing shadow about it at this point. To be completely honest. Okay. <laughs> there's... <laughs> right. there's a reason why I've been joking for the past month and a half that we live in a judicial dictatorship, because we do. <laughs> it's the Chief Justice, myself, Power, and Kerr that basically run everything. Wow. Damn. How do you, how do you guys, how do you guys stand up with this burden over your shoulders? Um, well, I drink copiously and I watch lots of television when I'm at home. Oh, I guess that works. <laughs> I pretend to be a security guard and fuck with people. Yeah, Wade does that in between being stabbed by people. Is this so people will walk up to you and ask you to do shit? <laughs> no, actually no, because people still walk the people who know that it is me still walk up to me. They find they they follow me on patrol and then wait for me to be like out of earshot from everyone else and then they ask me what they need to ask me. Oh, well, that's too bad. Oh well, okay. <clears throat> All right. All right, well, I'm probably going to retire to Chambers for a little while uh, if nobody has anything additional now that I've saved the executive branch. <laughs> hey, that's amazing. I appreciate you doing that. Ah, well, thanks. Thank you. That's the power that we wield. We've saved the entire executive we branch of government day. with two paragraphs. See, that was my big thing during the council interview for a chief. Like, quite literally like, four sentences. It was... All about checks and balances. I'm like, right now, I think the biggest issue, and if I would help with, is getting this government on its feet and checks and balances uh, implemented. Because right now, it is very lopsided. The, the the problem currently is a checks and balances is a big part of it, but foresight is another part of it. 
It's very difficult to prepare for every inevitability. It's almost a Murphy's Law situation where what can go yeah. wrong will go wrong, and whatever goes wrong will be the one thing we didn't write down. True. <laughs> But I suppose all we have to do is wait for those things to go wrong and then write them down when they happen. It seems to be what, yeah, I guess, you know. If, if it's not written down, <laughs> you can do it. That's written, that's a law. <laughs> seems to be what everyone thinks. Right. All right, right. right. I, uh... Yeah. Uh, Attorney General, do you uh, require anything else from the judiciary before uh, Chris, the security guard here, goes to Bahama Mamas and I retire to Chambers? I don't know why I'm probably Chris not going to Bahama Mama. Is... Strip is on for me. Oh, okay. We're not doing the Chris thing anymore? Okay. No, there's I nobody would... else in the building except okay, us. Well, well, I was going to say, I'm sorry for, you know, the piece of shit stuff. You know, I was just doing, I was trying to cover, you know. It was what? Just no, a... no, that's good. I like it. It's, <laughs> Run it's Chris fun there, we need, but we got no. Yeah, I just, I, I, people, every time I, I would be talking to him and people would walk by me and I would scream at him that he was a scumbag who shouldn't be talking to the attorney general. Yeah, it's funny. Good times. Although... Anyway, the only problem with it, though, is, um, so they have been expecting me to do regular pat-downs the front and, you know, like, search people, but mm -hmm. because I'm not actually a security guard, I can't, I can't actually do that, so. Yeah, you can. Just gotta get them to have their hands up first. Oh. Oh. Do you think they're all, all cops right. down there? Hell no. Yeah, I didn't know if they had any kind of special permissions or something by yep. nature of their role. All right. They have the same permission as anybody else on the south side that wants uh, India 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 pockets there. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, by hey, the way, those uh, uh, those Chief Justice, can you put your hands up here real quick? Sure, why not? I just put my cigarette out for you to rifle through my pockets. That was a fresh cigarette. <laughs> I would like to know what he has in his pockets. I bet his pockets are exciting. I'm not that exciting. It's mostly food and a gun. And the gun's yeah. new. Yeah. <laughs> you do not have Christmas the way, don't you? Uh. I. Come on, Enzo. Show, show Chris here how to frisk. Uh. I think pull your flashlight out and just. There's a little. Uh, push the X button on it. Oh, you need a flat. Why do you need a flashlight in I your think hands? Because you you're a security guard, Chris. That's what you need. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> now I can actually search people that come into the building now. Nice. You know what? I can get you on the payroll if you want to make some money instead of, you know, I'm not sure what judges make. Mm, we make pretty good money, to be honest. Really? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, well that's, uh, now that we've destabilized the government, I guess we can all just call it a day. Yeah, well, now that I restabilize the government. All right, good. <laughs> Glad you're here. All right. Good, so, Muffy, good work, Sure. Okay. Muffy, I'll leave down to chambers just to ask you a question, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Cigarette has like five. The cigarettes last a ridiculously short period of time. Nope. Huh? Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> If there were an active shooter situation or a fire or something like that, you got to be able to get out of the building quickly. Oh, I meant to tell the attorney general that those uh, marshal cars drive nice. They really do. They're quite nice. <laughs> also, again, you mentioned the gun and they said nothing. Mm -hmm. I think we're, like, efficiently away from everyone, so yeah. Okay, and what's, uh, what's on your mind? Basically, I just obviously wanted to run something by you, so this is just obviously me asking questions. Mm -hmm. Should we speak to Marjorie Bishop about this as well? Because obviously we got his side of the story, and for what it's worth, he can, he can talk his talk, right? But the issue is people yeah. wouldn't be feeling the way that they're feeling if 
he was doing everything perfectly with no issues, if you understand what like people aren't like coming to us or we aren't getting like issues of like the uh, prosecutors being like, Oh, we he, we feel like he's not actually there and I feel like he was talking the big like, talk, but like I think that he need, was yeah. in a somewhat defensive posture because he is very likely doing all that he is capable of doing, uh, but all that he is capable of doing when split between so many different things yeah. is probably not quite enough, which is why he needs to uh, mm -hmm. actually promote somebody yeah. underneath him to uh, mm -hmm. you know, carry because, on one of the two offices. Yeah, because like, obviously this is just my opinion though, but I feel like I what Margie Bishop should be taking over the prosecutorial side of things. Uh, and the Grecos should be basically heading up the Marshall thing, at least until he actually gets on his feet, because clearly he's having issues running two departments. If you have because obviously he's, he's having to donate so much of his time to the running of like the Marshals to that, that is his prosecutors are feeling left like out. That? And then but the fact that some of the prosecutors are right. refusing to work in the same building that says a lot. Whether their yeah. concerns are founded or not, that's important. Yeah, I, I would I would like to have a conversation with um, yeah. Councillor Bishop pertaining <laughs> to her side of events. Um, yeah. And in the event that this continues, I might just order from yeah. my position a split in those departments and essentially empower the <laughs> district attorney's office myself. They, they may still be beholden yeah. to the attorney general in some way, but... <laughs> If yeah. necessary, we can um, kind of stick them in their own mm -hmm. bubble. Uh, Definitely. Right. Because I, 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 I do think that the Attorney General has got two very uh, very well-working departments. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the problem yeah. is that he's trying to smash them together. Yes, and I think that the departments themselves are two very different departments. And trying to smash them together it, it isn't really going to work well. I mean, like... The marshals and the prosecutors obviously can work together just as well, like the I mean, police so force and one, the one prosecutors work together. But I feel like trying to put them together under in the same department is where some of the issues might be lying. Because obviously he's having to spend so much time with the marshals that he's not having enough time to spend with the prosecutors. I well, feel like he's uh, he's he's one person yeah. and he's got to put out the fires that are in front of him. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, what he. Again, I, I think he just needs to empower the people who are under him. I think it's perfectly yes. reasonable yeah. for them to continue being one organization. Um, but it certainly sounds like some sub-organization and um, you know, empowering somebody else so that he doesn't have to micromanage yeah. everything may be, uh, maybe yeah. the direction that things go long-term, hopefully. You know, that's actually quite interesting that you were, because when I was uh, going to apply to the Turtle uh, butterfly, thank you for the tier office. one nine a month. That was continuously the word that was taught to me by every person I told that I was going to be joining the prosecution. Micromanaging, basically. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'll see what Wade's dealing with, and then I'm probably going to pass out on the chair here. Hey. I need to. The reason I ask. <laughs> right. Hey, Chief Justice, quick question. Hmm. Are you aware of any procedures for, let's say, there is an imminent attack, and you know that there is a specific person who is planning this attack, but he has not actually carried out the attack yet. Do you know of any procedures to go and basically just detain the person? Not necessarily arresting him for any specific crime, but detaining him because you suspect that he is going to put a plan of attack in place. Oh boy, I don't know. Have they taken any overt steps towards the execution of that plan? Well, they have a lot of stuff that's been sent through the mail to an individual who is working to undermine the capacity of their uh, <laughs> supposed attack tomorrow at 1230, if that answers your question. Hmm. Uh, wh be... What is it, Wade? Public laws three and four that cover, like, a conspiracy and attempt? And... Public law four. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just, I, like I said, I, I want to make sure that I cross t's dot i's before i go about doing stuff so that's just the way i operate yeah, yeah i just told mom and I just arrest him the marshals have access to all the same mdt stuff as the regular police officers do now i mm -hmm. think so like 
Yep. You can send over an arrest warrant for one of us to sign, but you also okay. could just go and arrest him and just put the probable cause in the arrest report and just leave it at that. Fair enough. And then if they appeal, it'll go to court, and then we'll check to see if whether there was probable cause for the arrest. Fair enough. I would not. Uh, I would not do an arrest if I didn't de deem it uh, probable cause in the first place. So that's kind of why I ask. Just for right. my, my my side of things. So. Oh, all right. Guys. Yep. That's all. I, that's all I wanted to ask. So. Thank all right. you. No worries. Gotcha. Actually, Chief, I need to talk to you about something else as oh, well. Okay, let's chat. Have fun. I need to sleep. <laughs> gotcha. Well, it's not anything, like, super crazy, but it's just an observation that Kerr and I made. So, you know how in most cities they have lots of bench trials, and so people get lots of experience actually in trial arguing and whatnot? I think, unfortunately... Him and I were talking that because we try to do the legal system in this city a bit more close to home, as it were, unfortunately, there's lots of people where they're not really learning how to be attorneys because they're not really being given the argument or rather the, op the opportunity to get into court regularly and argue. And it's sort of becoming very apparent when you have people, for instance, like Marjorie Bishop, that have a substantial amount of litigation experience <laughs> to the point where if you told me that that woman was a hearing rep for some law firm somewhere, I would probably believe you. <laughs> but then everyone else is just sort of left in the dust because they're not actually really getting the opportunity to come into court and argue. So one thing that uh, Kerr had, which I think is probably not a bad idea, is... One, maybe relaxing the restrictions on bench trials. Not necessarily what can be brought as a bench trial, but maybe the idea that both parties have to agree to it, maybe coming up with a more lax standard for that. Another thing we discussed was um, potentially having like a mock trial thing as sort of like a shared bonding experience, you know, between the DOJ. What he suggested is, oh, you know, we have, you know, us justices go against each other in a mock trial, and then we have at it, and so people can see kind of what we do and how we formulate our arguments and how we approach certain things. And I was of the idea that rather than having it just be us, what if we had something to where, let's say, let's say it's you against Kerr, and myself and Power and Murphy play the witnesses, and one of us maybe plays the defendant. And then let's say, you know, we've got Olivia. She wants to be a magistrate eventually. What if we had Olivia preside over the uh, sort of mock trial hearing? And then See, we I could think, have... I think mock trials We could have the be, other attorneys do those as well. Yeah, I was going to say, I think mock trials would be more useful rather than having us play either side of the case it would be more useful to have the attorneys against each other right and uh, then we because, play the witnesses or something yeah because uh, speaking practically we don't really need to put on a theatrical mock trial for them when we have three to five court cases scheduled every week that they are capable of being in attendance of right that they can pick up some of those smaller nuances on um and, you know, obviously sometimes some of the examples will be bad, but they'll learn based on what gets stated from the bench as to what was a good and what was a bad argument. Um, and you'll always have counselors like Greco and Bishop and so on and so forth who are present in those largely as well uh, that they can learn from. Uh, so I, I think a mock trial would be more productive if it was more of a formative, practical learning experience where they could get their feet wet. As far as bench trials, I've got no issue with opening it up more. The question just becomes, how do we open it up more? Because insofar as both sides agreeing to it, um, I mean, which side in particular is routinely denying these? It's usually either the police or the prosecutors, because as Kerr mentioned earlier, the prosecutors don't want to take things to bench trials because then precedent isn't set, even though I also, like, everyone's aware if you just appeal the ruling of the bench trial, then a judge can just decide whether it's going to be precedential or not. Like, we can just sort of do that. Um, I guess, as to the how, what I had thought is if we, instead of it being both sides agree, maybe both sides have to agree 
if the charges are more substantial, but let's say it's just, um, I don't know, like a 30 month, like battery charge or something. Like maybe, maybe if the defendant wants a bench trial and there's a judge available, maybe in those sorts of limited circumstances, he actually just gets to have it. Chat, relax. We'll talk about, we'll talk about what's been going on. I don't know exactly where you would put the line there, but that was one of the ideas I was tossing around is depending on what charges there are, or maybe the total time and fine that is being contested using that as sort of a benchmark for whether both parties have to agree or whether there can be just a unilateral request for a bench trial. I think the problem with a unilateral request for a bench trial is that there may be circumstances where the prosecution genu maybe maybe it's more of we should shift the burden on the prosecutors from rather than them outright being allowed to deny, they have to state an actual reason for denial. Um, that could also work because I don't want to force the police or the prosecutors into having a bench trial where let's say the kidnapping victim is not able, able to testify. And for some reason that is crucial information, uh, or a medical report is particularly pertinent and it's going to take time for them to actually get and produce that. Right. Like I, I don't want to force them into those situations, but at the same time, they shouldn't be denying them just because they would rather the case go to court to set precedent because they, they have other methods of attaining that goal. Um, and they also shouldn't be denying it just because it's, quote, not worth their time or what have you because those are, uh, I mean, that, that's just a, that's a silly reason by comparison because it's just going to take up their time later down the road when an appeal comes through the door. Right, yeah. I'm just trying to think of ways to potentially just get name every to case court she's more done. often so that everyone can, you know, actually do court things. Because I think a lot of people are also just going stir crazy because so much time is spent on the docket and then you spend, you know, an hour or two hours in, in court, you know, once a week, if that, and then that's it. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest as well, but uh, some of some of the amount of things that are done on the docket are surely self-inflicted injuries that are also inflicted on you and I, uh, yep. as well as other judges, because quite a bit of the bickering and back and forth that transpires on the docket is meaningless. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, no. it's uh, not something that we necessarily need to decide on right now. It's just, I think maybe going forward, we should have a conversation with some of the other you know, judges and magistrates and see if we can maybe come up with a bit of a better situation than we've got right now. Because I know a lot of civilians have also been talking about how they don't like the sort of power that officers and prosecutors have to just sort of... Because on the one hand, it, it sort of put, places it on them to where they can just unilaterally deny the bench trial. I'm going to be and completely I honest. I cannot play this character for either. longer than four hours because it's like, oh, just think about the complex way that this entire system is put together for five straight hours. Uh, yeah. No, I don't. Um, I'll tell you what. Why don't we bounce it to uh, Murphy and Kerr? Bench trials are largely their domain. Um, right. Let's see if they can come up with uh, any jams that may exist in the system that can be removed. I, I think that we're on to something insofar as the creation of a system where some sort of precedent can be set from a bench trial once it's been reviewed by uh, the justices and uh, potentially forcing the prosecution to actually give a legitimate reason why a bench trial should be denied. Um but the more particular aspects of like how would the prosecution express that or in what method would they express that as to why it was denied, those are uh, those are smaller details that we can have Kerr and Murphy work on since uh, bench trials are their bread and butter. Right, that's not a bad idea. All right. Yeah. All right, perfect. Look at you delegating the work. Yeah, well, I've got to delegate some of it. <laughs> I can't go around appointing mayors and changing bench trials in the same night. That would be that'd be too much. Yeah, one at a time, right? <laughs> yeah, one at a time. <laughs> All right, take care, sir. I yeah. imagine you need to lay your weary head to rest after a harrowing day of rat or amending the constitution yet again. 
<laughs> well, I'm sure I'll I'm sure I'll be doing it in exactly a couple of days. So <laughs> probably. Have a good night, Wade. You as well, sir. The problem isn't the amending of the Constitution or coming up with these systems. The problem is, like, running through my mind of the 400 different ways that this could impact other shit. The problem is, like, keeping immersion and fun in mind. <laughs> Your favorites when somebody says when no one says something that directly contradicts what the CJ says. They're different characters. They're different characters. So Alice raised a really interesting point, and you guys have to keep in mind that uh, Lewis only has the point of view that was brought to his attention through conversation with the Attorney General and through conversation with Alice. He's lacking the perspective of the rest of the office. However, the reason that Lewis sympathizes with Alice's point of view on things, um, the reason Lewis sympathizes with her point of view on things is every conversation for the last two and a half weeks that he's had with Greco has been about the marshals. <laughs> Lewis has gotten faxes about the marshals. He's had to rewrite the marshals' SOPs. He's been in three different meetings about the marshals. So he knows how much of a time sink this is. So whenever Alice says she's not getting the direction that's required, um, he sympathizes with that because he, he understands how much time the AG is spending on the marshal service, right? Why is a CJ overriding the AG based on two people's opinions? I'm going to pause the music. Penguin, I would like you to state in specific detail what I did that actually overrode the AG's opinion. Go ahead, type it for the class. Tell me what Lewis did. Tell me what Lewis did that actually overrode the AG. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm fairly confident he just brought concerns to his attention and made suggestions. Decision to separate the two part departments based on hearsay? Okay, first and foremost, you don't know what the fuck hearsay is. Hearsay is an objection that is made in court when an out-of-court statement is introduced to assert the truth of the matter that that statement is pertinent to. Hearsay has nothing to do with business or professional environments. Never use that word again until you look it up in a dictionary. Two, he suggested separating the departments. He didn't force him to. He didn't override him. He empowered him. He said, if this is what you want to do, do it, and it's my suggestion. So let's, let's calm down. Let's calm down. Um... <laughs> Isn't hearsay mostly just secondhand testimony? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, it's a statement where... The, the simplest example of hearsay is, would be Lewis Rehnquist saying, Malcolm Nolan told me this. Just RP, it's all good. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta, sometimes you just gotta, like, lean into the... <laughs> it's real to me. Conversation pointing out that there might be things needing more attention than he's currently giving them. Exactly. Exactly. It's It was a review conversation. It's literally all that it was. It was the Chief Justice coming in saying, is there a problem here that we need to review? The car's gone, yeah. Is only game. Why you have to be mad? 
I love that Zarya has that voice line in fucking Overwatch. Uh, let's do... Well, let's get out of the way here first. Let's do our roll. Let's do our injury roll. Whatever happened to Nolan's new car? It's in the inbound lot. It's in the inbound lot. All right, plus one. Eight. All right, well, we're still limping today. Is one of the roll results it gets worse? Not for something like this. Not for getting shot from the rooftop from a commercial robbery. Probably not. I swear to God, if nobody opens this fucking door, I'm going to shoot it down. Is the fucking police department closed today? What is this bullshit? There he is. Is the police department closed today? How you doing, sir? No, I don't think so. I think it's been pretty, uh... I mean, Hello, there's been some officer. crazy stuff. We got How's a new going? gatekeeper here, Chloe. Yeah. She's had a hard acceptance into the uh, gatekeeper society because uh, I'm a reformed criminal. Uh, yeah, um, whenever the reformation it, process. I'm <laughs> hoping someday I could get my record expunged and maybe possibly even be a dispatcher. Well, I wish you the very best of luck in that. You ain't got no like violent felonies or nothing, has you? Yep. Oh, yeah. She has like three pages worth. <laughs> well, Jesus. Okay. But I am reformed. And I've been seeing the therapist, you know, the same I one for the PD. And I have Darryl coping too, mechanisms. I, I felt a little worried, but she's been positive. She's really, uh, I feel like it's been a positive effect in her uh, life. And I was thinking that if I can really show that I'm reformed, maybe I could even be a dispatcher someday. Yeah. Do you think that'll ever be possible, officer? And we're yeah. keeping blunt, blunt force objects away from her, you know. Uh, be honest with me. <laughs> He, she spoke with the uh, therapist guy. What's his name with the mustache? Uh, Andy. Spoke with Andy. Yeah, spoke with Andy for a little while. She has like a step thing she's doing, I guess. Uh, well, uh, I reckon to be a dispatcher, you'd have to uh, actually get your record expunged, not just uh, turn it over a new leaf. But if you could yeah, convince I want to get it expunged someday. Uh, yeah, if you could convince the lawyers and uh, judges and whatnot to do that, I don't see why you couldn't be a dispatcher. Cool. <laughs> yeah, see there, you're going the right direction. You just gotta keep it up. Cool. Well, yeah. yep, I'm gonna keep it up. All right. I I'm am. Gonna, I'm gonna go get my car out the impound because uh, somebody locked the fucking front door here. But all right, sir, you have a good one. All right, you. As I well. hope you're feeling better. It looks like you're limping. Yeah, I got shot the other day. It's healing up though. God, it's good to good to meet you, Chloe. Fucking locking the goddamn door. Is going to be made of justice soon, and we'll need another one. He, well, Murphy's kind of the Kerr replacement, right? And the question is, we'll, we'll need somebody to slide into um, slide into Murphy's position. Go to the hospital and clock on. Bionic, does everyone just save the crazy world-ending, constitution-changing shit for when I hop on on uh, Lewis? Does everyone just, like, bottle that up, and then the moment that I sign on to Lewis, it just fucking slaps? I literally got on like 20 minutes early today because we were going to... Wait, what in the hell? Well, 
you'll be missed by your loved ones, fellow. It happens all the time, you're just not around. Eh, maybe that's the case. Literally got on 20 minutes early just for the, the fucking inauguration of the mayor. And find out that the mayor's arrested. <laughs> like... How's it going? I no, think... just trying to figure out what's happening right now. Oh, is there... What's... What's, uh, what's what? I'm oh, just from the, uh, the most recent, um, activities. We see a lot of, uh, people down, but we only have one oh, shit. unit, so we're trying to figure out stuff. I yeah, I'm trying that. to see where they're located so I can, um... Well, uh, if they hadn't locked the fucking front door of the police department, then I would have been able to come on duty and tell you, but, uh... Oh, God. Geez. I'll just grab... I'm gonna grab a radio off the desk over here and go yeah, to the yeah, police yeah. car, yeah. and then I'll, uh, I'll let y'all know. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna go get a bus just to... Testament of the server, how serious everyone is, uh, about the rule of law. It's super, it's super cool, honestly. Obviously nothing's perfect, but... All the other streams are Let's Make Occam's work today. <laughs> I'm just mad that everyone's too scared to attack the Chief Justice. We wander around City Hall for like five hours. We pull out a gun, we drive a marshal car. Come at me, City Hall attackers. Give Bishop time. Did I just sign on to a fucking PD wipe? And if not, why does it feel like I did? Jesus, what in the hell are y'all doing? The front door. Someone has to pay their fines and then we had yeah. to report something. Stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. I had to go to the fucking hospital to clock on duty. I'll, uh, I'll get the front door unlocked in just a moment for y'all. Okay. Uh, okay, let's see. Why is that gun not showing on my back? Oh, there we go. Now it is. Anybody ever criticize this uh, Chief Justice to his face? Not explicitly, no. <clears throat> there you go. All no, right, Thank there you. we go. You're welcome. Uh, these uh, these folks has got a report to make as well, but I gotta check on the situation. Here's seven. Is that an M16? Oh, you got an ongoing situation? Yeah, apparently. I just need to report some stuff stolen from my vehicle. Fix vehicle, I won't impound it. Seize it, please God, Seize don't it. impound it. Seize it. Pay for it, pay for it. I'm gonna go get treated. Hey, uh, this is 278. I'm on duty. The doctors were saying something about uh, lots of incapacitated people. Do y'all need help? <laughs> yeah, I believe uh, we'll go for another. Uh, this is 236 plus 2 right now in the pillbox. Stepping on my vehicle over. Oh my god. 
Alright, here's what we're going to do. Put this on the floor. We're going to get rid of... Wait, we do have wine. Fuck. I need to free up like four fucking pounds in here. All right, there we go. Go grab that other gun. Joe, I hope that your whole power outage thing is somewhat resolving. Or at least improving. I think I'm missing anything else other than those two items, but they were in my glove box and they were gone. Wait, uh, how do I spell your surname? Uh, D E V E R E U X. Have a date that it should be back on. Hopefully, Wait, it's perfect. Sooner. I'll do an incident report for you. Thank you. Yeah, there's a little shift going, Bonnie. Well, I've just clocked in, same as you, um, and they immediately said seven eats, and there was like six officers down from a commercial robbery with time on Bingham's. Same guy. I'm carrying my big fucking gun tonight. Aye, I would. <laughs> so they stole Perry Bernstein's vehicle about two hours prior. Um, I need about ten mics. It would add. Um, they've they used it for the commercial. It was a Stratum, but they've got it sprayed um casket believes the only place you can get a vehicle sprayed is benny's yeah. but benny's are, are denying doing it so someone at benny's sprayed this vehicle for tyrone beckham's well, do, and uh, is is not coming clean do any members of uh tyrone's little gang do they work up there at the benny's so that's what i need to look into Yeah, because my estimation would be that uh, none of the individuals who work there would probably risk their employment for it, but uh, I could certainly see somebody moonlighting up there and uh, just fucking spray painting vehicles. Hey, for sure. It was in the last two hours, so... By the way, they used the Stratton. They bailed on foot, got into a shootout under the bridge on um, Power Street, um, down by, like, all the buildings. Uh... Down by, oh, down there where the, um... I like what all the factory right. buildings and stuff are? Yeah, yeah, like right near fucking Benny's and shit. Hi, hi, that's the one. No, right. So I pulled up on scene and there was just like five officers down. Well, uh, I was going to try to be there a little sooner, but the front fucking doors were locked, so... <laughs> yeah, I had to grab my car and drive up to the hospital to grab a radio. All right. Uh, what did the uh, we got any idea what these uh, fellows did? Did they end up um, commercial robbery? Well, I mean, did they climb up on the rooftops there? Were they just dipping in and out of the alleyway, shooting at people? Or I don't know. The people that were that can answer that are at the hospital. From, right from the now. looks of the scene, and based on where the car was positioned, they, it was a foot bail oh that guys. turned into shootout. Gotcha. Hey. 
Yeah, that was a good oh, one. Oh, hey. Who, uh, who had uh, their Marshall card stolen? Do you, uh, do you have a moment to talk? Or Nobody did. What? Oh, 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 <laughs> the hell they did in Frank uh, Gilbani had a nice little nice joy God, ride with it. it. Frank took that? Oh, I'm going to yell at him. Little shitter. You're funny. I'm back on radio. Oh, I mean, <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> allegedly it Frank. was Frank. Let me grab you. Oh, okay. might be the reason that you just heard anyway, but basically, um, currently there's been a threat on the mayor's life tomorrow, is speech by a group of Russians? Yeah, I'm pretty well aware of that, I was speaking. Oh, okay, you're, uh, you're, you're clued up? Yeah, well, I'm somewhat clued up. I translated a note for Enzo yesterday that was basically just a bunch of Lenin propaganda, um, and it concluded with first it'll be the mayor, then it's gonna be the AG, and then, uh, anybody in power will fall. I so they've apparently what we've heard is they've confirmed they've got six EKs, and that's that's what they're looking to do. They're looking to just breach with Automax tomorrow. Have we got any indication of the timing on that? Uh, no. Uh, I'm assuming whenever the the mayor meeting's doing, they they're looking to hit the speech. Okay. Uh, Interrupt you. I'm gonna give you some space. No, you're you're all right, Greco. You're, no, you're you're not, you're probably you're probably fucking informed about this I'll shit anyway. Um, if it's the criminal man being arrested, then yes. Wait. Uh, we it was more about the the Russian situation. Wait, when the, when, when the, the fuck did the mayor? Life? When did the mayor get fucking arrested? I didn't. I've, I've only seen uh, the goddamn mayor like half of one minute. Uh, I don't know, like four hours ago. <laughs> we had a press conference about it. I think there's a tape I can get you. But uh, anyway, yeah, uh, yeah he, he's up on some conferences. felony charges. No, this is about the note that the Russian fellas left that said they was going to kill you. Oh, that? Which one? Yeah, the one that is I translated. Is it a really extensive one? Yeah, the one I translated for uh, one of your, uh, for Marshal uh, Valentino. Oh, yeah, they keep fucking, they, they've been, you know, I'm going to say it. They've been blue balling me on this for weeks. You know, they've been saying they're going to do this and they're going to do it on this day. Oh, really? they're do it on this day. Oh, yeah, all the fucking time. You know, I just walk around with the bottle out now, just in case. <laughs> so, you know, it's, um, I wish they would just get it over with, for God's sakes. They're having more and more increasingly, you know, significant and complex threats. And not a single one of these cowards has well, even made a Well, if you've just arrested yet. the mayor, then you've probably blue balled them. Because that was probably where they were looking to do something. Well, maybe. But I mean. Yeah, more than, more than likely. I'm they, really they sure. Said, they said the mayor was going to be first. So you're supposed to be second. So if you... If you mess with the mayor, then their whole system's going to be discombobulated now. <laughs> okay. Well, um, yeah, so we had, um, we've received other intel. I'm sure you're apprised of Mr. Jack Riley. You know, you know him. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Riley, I, I, I don't know why he's not behind bars, but I know him. Yeah, right. So on that, um, he was given, let me see if I have a copy of this somewhere in my pockets. I gotta get a better clipboard. <laughs> Muffy, phone. Muffy, phone. Okay, either way, um, I don't have this here, uh, and available. I think Muffy might have a copy of somebody else, um, Either way, um, Mr. Riley has been, for some reason, um, included via mail by one Igor Petrovich, someone who was arrested for the first time earlier today, uh, has been involved or at least directly invited to a very sophisticated plot of an armed assault on essentially City Hall uh, scheduled for tomorrow. Now, this plan includes, you know... Um, Can somebody answer was... my fucking phone? I swear to God. Um, you know, who's where, the internal layout of City Hall, um, you know, all these different things. Now, Mr. Hunter has given this up as some sort of I'm warning. Assassinate to say the that, entire fucking gang. Um, you know, has given up this entire, you know, situation. Going Mr. Going Mr. You know, these Russians, Mr. Petrovich is the, is the co-leader. Or the leader, I should say, the ringleader. And he's given out, like, you know, buy these guns, wear this outfit, you know, do this and go here, like, the most... Up. You know, the detailed via mail, the United States Postal Service has <laughs> plot to overthrow uh, well, 
the government. Um, and it was sent to Jack Riley, who is some sort of super spy, as we all know him to be, um, because, you know, only he has been able to get this information. And Mr. Jack Riley has been going and been, and has been hanging out at City Hall nonstop every goddamn day and has been, ta has been taken on multiple inside tours by Mr. Daniel Marino, the recently arrested Mr. Marino. So, um... It's got everything, anything that you could think of that would be like, you know, it, it isn't, it's just like bring gasoline, be sure to burn all the bodies. Like it's not really pulling any punches. So much so that it is so over the top that it's hard to believe. Yeah. yeah. It's like they might as well say, here's my home address and uh, here's all my friends' co conspiratorial addresses and we're all definitely going to shoot everybody inside City Hall. See you guys tomorrow, well, Winky Face. I mean, I'll be, I'll be completely honest with you. Some of these Russian. Um splinters that have been running around are not the fucking smartest uh it's also not the weirdest thing that i've heard about being sent in the mail you heard about all them bombings that's been going on over the last couple of years <laughs> why is uh, this yeah. jack fucker getting mail uh because he is only the only person that can save america probably you know that's what sounds he thinks like a, of himself. Sounds had like to, a traitor to me. I had to look it up. Yeah, he's a real he's a real patriot at the center of every Russian conspiracy. He just happens to have all the information all the time. I know again, only he can save us. Also, they're receiving detailed layouts of City Hall, and he's the only one that knows them. In that chain. Um so I can try and get you a copy of these letters. Sorry, Bonnie, what was your question? Yeah, you're fine. Okay, I'm just sorry. Using. Yeah, no, I just, uh, I was thinking about, uh, some of these notes, yeah. Uh, anyway, Mr. Nolan, um, I have some, um, SOPs, uh, updated for you. <laughs> uh, we need to review, because they need to be distributed. Uh, I have been Shit. attempting the conference with, uh, Chief Hopper on these for some time. Um, have not been able to do so, and I don't believe I'll be able to do so for another couple of days. Simply stated, um, you know, the Chief Justice has given his approval on this. God um, damn it. I have as well. The fucking Marshall um, SOPs. Really is the final set of eyes. Simply, I cannot get a hold of her. Well, not a hold of, but I cannot get a you know FaceTime with her and have not been able to do so for some time. All right, um, we wrote them as so Ryan Quist. Let's review approval, them as Nolan. I need to distribute these um, in the hopes that she is in agreement with these um, when she eventually reads them. All right. Well, let's uh, yeah, let's take a look over them. We can head into my office real quick. Sure. Yeah, as long as you're apprised about this whole, like, plot that's going on and whatnot, uh, it sounds like you got more fucking information than, than we do. Uh, well, I'll put it this way. If there is a legitimate threat, which I think we'll have to do, you know, and once in some ways I don't want to show any sort of um, reaction to this, but I also feel irresponsible not to... Lead, uh, you know, loan it some credibility because it is sophisticated and there are some pretty detailed information in there. So, um, I'm going to go on. I'm not going to really unilaterally tell you what to do, but I would say you're a reasonable man, Mr. Nolan. How would you respond to a treasonous, terroristic plot to overthrow a major institution of this state? Well, having the knowledge beforehand, I would capture the individuals who are responsible probably by drugging them at their favorite restaurant of choice with LSD. Uh, I would then place them in a sensory deprivation tank for approximately a 14-day period. Uh, and then I would admi administer amphetamines to keep them awake for seven days after that, at which point I would interrogate them for further information as to individuals who may be their associates. But since... Uh, as Reagan says, we ain't allowed to do that no more. I'd probably just step up the patrols around the city hall for a little bit. <laughs> okay, let me go see if I can get a hold of these letters. I think Muffy has them downstairs. I'll be right back. <laughs> if you guys want to chat, I can do that for you. Okay, sure. Thank you. No, okay. So, um, <laughs> um, what will happen... Yeah. And is that if tomorrow, um, you know, based on what you guys read in these letters, if you feel that there is a credible enough threat, I'm going to tell my guys, and I'm going to tell your guys that if this is even close to being realistically possible, that we are going to have some heavily armed officers around City Hall and patrolling in the area of City Hall to swiftly 
swiftly dismantle any level of incursion onto the grounds. Yeah, so, uh, what we need to be completely honest with you, and this might be more workable for um, uh, you and the refurbished equipment that you've been purchasing and whatnot, uh, but what would severely right. help out stakeout operations like this would be mobile transmitters for radios. Now, I'm not saying right. I'm not saying we need to uh, you know equip every radio with some kind of big ass fucking antenna on it. Um, but shit, even in Nam, uh, we had some of the uh, communications relays boys carry them backpacks that we could uh, radio back into home base with. Right. So if um, I don't know, for instance, uh, we were to put a sharpshooter on top of Mount Zona, who could watch the lawn of the city hall and the three primary entrances. Yeah, that individual could deploy such a device so that they could maintain radio communication with the marshals and such. Right. Uh, something something so, like that would be fucking good for situations like this, because just patrolling in marked fucking cars ain't going to do a whole lot. Well, I can tell you that um, in my extensive conversations with the governors, he's got some pretty distinct ideas about what he believes law enforcement should and should not be capable of. And I can... Not really guarantee, but if I were to make a special request to the governor, if something like this were to um, potentially occur, um, to activate a small contingent of the National Guard, as well as all the implements that they might have at their disposal, rifles, the such. So, um, you know, we will not, under any circumstances, tolerate an armed incursion by a foreignly, foreignly organized group of people um, <laughs> here and now not going to happen i mean maybe i'm blowing smoke but i'm not sure if i'm trying to scare you or somebody else that uh you know maybe the walls have ears but uh, the idea is i uh, <laughs> i don't know about <laughs> you i'm not feeling too keen on a saturday afternoon attack on city hall yeah no last time we had credible threats like this um well i'll just say a lot of people got caught in the crossfire indeed <laughs> uh all right well on to the more um pertinent stuff now um, I know you are just a lowly police captain and all that, but have you happened to read the most recent version of the Marshall's SOPs? Well, the last time you and I talked about it, you said you had updated versions, but you wasn't ready to show them to nobody yet. Oh, okay. Well, let me get you a copy. <laughs> I'm gonna, I want to make Moses give me a copy of them. <laughs> okay, now don't stand too close to this clipboard. Um, so here you go. It's for you. Let's take a look at that there. Now, there's a couple changes. You know, we've received some feedback. I came up with most of it, if I'm being honest. Um, but there is I came up a, with most of you know, it. You know, there are some changes made. Well, here, let me... I'll take a peek over your shoulder here. All right, no problem there. No route restrictions can't overrule or supersede. I think Harper will like that. Uh higher standard and that's probably good uh, if some of it's complicated if you need any explanation just let me know uh well let's see attorney general's office uh, debtors y'all still doing that even though i thought we wasn't enforcing that whole uh like uh, arrest people for fines or whatever at the moment thing um, yeah, well, that's not, that's not the case. No, oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah that, uh... we, are, we are definitely doing that. So, the, I'm not sure if you know, but they, they've adjusted the charges back and forth. So, it was 40 months for a time. It's now back to 100. I don't oh, know okay. who's that, letting that... these things get through there, but uh, yeah, either gotcha. way. That did, that did get updated then. Okay, last time I spoke yeah. with Enzo about it, he was saying we shouldn't enforce it because it was 40. I didn't know that it had actually been uh, fucking updated. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, asset forfeiture. Oh, witness security. That's cute. Didn't one of y'all's witnesses die yesterday? Oh, who's? Uh, Markov? Yeah, she, I watched her oh, get don't, cracked. What do you mean, them. you guys? As if you don't know as much about <laughs> Markov as I do. <laughs> I think you lost one too there, Cap. Yeah, well... Uh, to be fair, based on the way it happened, it sounded like a fucking inevitability. Yeah, because one of your guys yeeted her out the goddamn roof. Well, no, she yeeted herself off the fucking roof. It happened twice. 
Oh, really? She went back for seconds? Yeah, apparently. So according to what I was told by O'Neill and Casket, uh, she went running up a fucking roof, jumped off, landed in a heap of trash or some shit, uh, was not satisfied, oh. ran back up to the rooftop, tried to jump into the heap of trash again, missed, and landed on her fucking neck. <laughs> so you guys threw him off twice. Like the first one didn't take. You had carry up like a duffel bag afterwards. <laughs> one of these times, you're going to get caught on tape doing some of this shit. Yeah, well... Uh... Uh, that, that's actually a different fucking discussion as to what transpired with another officer. But I've already spoken with your prosecutors about that. Oh, one. Mr. Shepard? Okay. Um, that's a more serious note. <laughs> Is that what we're talking about? Uh, yeah. He's, okay. he's, he's been administratively suspended, depending on whatever's going to happen with y'all. I, I would like him to come and speak with me. Um, I'm not sure he's available, obviously, tonight, but uh, next time he's available tomorrow or Sunday or whatever... Maybe not Sunday. I'm not sure what. I might take a day off this weekend for the first time. Um, but if the uh, if you know, I, I would like to speak with him. You know, I've heard I've heard the case. You know, I'm not going to really comment on my total opinion on it. Uh, obviously, there was some question marks around some things, but um, I I know Mr. Shepard to be a good police officer. I don't believe he's had has he ever had any administrative issues at all. Uh, not that I'm directly aware of. I mean, he's had a like a couple of small fuck ups every now and again, but nothing that's actually risen to the degree of. Um, uh, sorry, radio is going off a little bit there. Uh, nothing that's ever ri risen to the degree of him receiving a strike point or a written warning or nothing. Okay. Please don't right, tell. Well, please, please don't tell me that you're planning on recruiting him. Uh, no, no, I, okay. one murder is enough or two. Well, I don't no, know how many I have anymore. Yeah, I, um, I wasn't sure, you know, given the circumstances. <laughs> whatever, Mr. Bishop got the, you know, got the mayor. You know, in part, you know, really, I got to say, some of the best police work I've ever seen. Uh, let's see. So. Uh, unmarked capacity posting in the area, documented and shit. No, who gives a fuck about that? Uh... I mean, the big thing I think Harper was trying to make sure of is that there wasn't going to be uh, interference for the most part, and it seems like that's pretty fucking clear up front. Yeah, I worked hard on this. So, I mean, I hope that the... Um, <laughs> I hope that this is something that is... I'm going to go out on a limb, you know? I'm going to just say that this is probably ready for at least consumption by the general governmental agencies. I'm not going to like, you know, put it out on, you know, on the, on the bulletin boards per se, but I would like this distributed internally. So everybody understands what the marshals can on, can and cannot do. No, right. um, I'm yeah, sure I this can, will be interesting uh, reading for most of the department. So I'd just like to get it into their hands. So, you know, the question of what marshals can and cannot do is instant or at least accessible. Maybe someone will read this one. Lord knows no one reads the fucking constitution. <laughs> You know, there's actually one officer here who just keeps talking about the conversation. Yeah, I know. Zane, Zane. He loves it. He loves it. He loves yeah, the Constitution. He, love, he loves talking about that Constitution. Yeah, it's like the only thing he knows. He's See, got a helmet on. He's keeping it in there. For me, I think the First Amendment was a goddamn mistake. I don't think we should have given nobody the right to freely speak or criticize the government because that's how we got the media. And because we got the media, Watergate happened. If there wasn't any media. Like, you're, you're, you're a Nixon guy? Well, no, because he had his own fuck-ups throughout all that. But if Watergate hadn't happened, I wouldn't have had to burn all them papers. <laughs> Fair. Well, I mean, <laughs> what papers? Well, yeah, that's what people kept asking until eventually I was uh, honorably discharged. Oh, there you go. <laughs> what papers? Robin, who works at City Hall down in Polito. Uh, all right. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, this uh, this mostly looks uh, perfectly fine to me. Uh, the chief may have her own input on it, but as far as I'm aware, directly, uh, the big concerns were uh, whatever fucking big dicking was going on in the meetings that transpired them first couple of days, and uh, just making sure that. Uh, oh yeah, Riggs quit. That's why it's been quiet around here. Oh, shit. What the fuck did what did Riggs quit for? For being suspended and for doing something stupid. Yeah. Shit. That may shock you. Uh, no, that sounds an awful lot about how he got uh, fired from here as well. Well, <laughs> one of these days, he's going to learn. You know, he's like a puppy. Or maybe he's an older dog. I don't know really what he is. But he's got that dog in him, I can tell you that. 
Uh, let's see, patrol orders. And listen again. It's 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 a lot to take in. Um, but just if you could get into the hands of the, of, the, of everybody, that would be really yeah. I'll get it. That uh, would be helpful. I'll get it placed on the desks for the meeting. That way, everybody can grab a copy of it, and uh, we'll uh, we'll put a little folder of them downstairs. Beautiful. Thank you very much. I won't take up too much of your time. All I want right. you to take a look at them letters though that uh, Bonnie has. So she yeah. Can let's. Uh, yeah. I, I think I, I helped translate one of them. That's all in Russian. We have Yeah, this one was written in very plain as day English for a. Uh, echo two sixty nine. Somebody give them the code two eight. Yeah, how's it going, Edmonds? Hey, no, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing all right. No, it's it's a lot of our people just got injured stuff, or, or stabbed okay. or shot up in Polito. Oh no shit. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Uh, is that stabbing Colin? Is that at the uh, power plant or is that in Polito? The last person I saw, you'll never guess the last person I saw Robin talking to at City Hall. Uh, I'm gonna guess Jack, it's Jack the, fucking Riley. Oh, uh, right. Of fucking course it was. Uh, I, I didn't think it was a stabbing. I thought it was a gunshot or something. Oh, shit. No, Enzo just had stabbed or something, so. Yeah, well, she's on her way to pillbox so uh EMS right. called it into us no right well apparently it uh it may be related to whatever's going on because this riley fellow is uh, uh he's in, acting, in everything yeah he's acting suspect in relation to a lot of things and he has seen with her beforehand so who uh, isn't jack fucking involved with you know well, that's what fucking Riley does. He runs around making fucking friends with everybody and then uh, uh, cross-communicating information. <sighs> Could you take him up to the roof next? <laughs> we didn't take anybody up to the fucking roof, Greco. Yeah, that's where I am. Okay. She took herself up to the roof. Sure, we didn't kill anybody <laughs> in the LSPD. <laughs> Sounds good. I see what you did there. Ah. <sighs> Greco, if we yeah, threw if we threw her off the roof, we would have just said she was reaching or something. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, that's one other thing. Do you guys have any um, coffee filters here? Uh, I don't even know if we got a coffee machine. We got a coffee machine in the break room. Uh, I think there is. I can go uh, get you some. I'll go check. The hell, the hell do you need a coffee filter for? Um, oh, oh shit, that actually reminds me. Uh, Muffy wants to become a marshal, believe it or not. Like a, like a police marshal. She is a marshal, you know what I mean. So, um, she's been, she's been doing very good work, you know. She is actually 29, as it turns out. So she, she's between 19 and 40 years old. We know this to be true. She's 20 now. Okay, then what is her excuse for all the fucking, uh, she, uh, she kept talking about how she was a fucking teenager. Yeah, she's <laughs> arguably and also legally not a teenager. So um, she has kind of expressed now that she's recognized that she's a uh, um, an adult, actually nearly, you know, really uh, middle-aged in some senses. You know, it is, she, 30 is kind of old for an unmarried lady, but... You, uh, you, sure, she, you sure she didn't just give you a fake ID or some shit so she could go fucking uh, no, drinking? We, no, we actually pulled background checks on everybody that... You know, since this whole, you know, Russian thing's been happening, we've been taking a little harder look at everyone that works on our staff, right? So, yeah, it there turns goes, out. Sir. Whole box. Hey, appreciate Hey, thank you, man. Appreciate that. That's yeah, really we nice got plenty of them. Yep. You're going to so, be fine. You're going to be fine. So, anyway, oh, um, we pulled a driver's ad as well as uh, some high school transcripts from, you know, her home her home state. And uh, the only Muffy Marshall hit that we had graduated in, like, 1975 or something like that. <laughs> so, um... We couldn't what quite figure that now? out, and then um, I asked her about it, and then she started saying how, you know, she's got a pop who's in London, and, you know, he's got a box that's inside of a bank that has a key to it, apparently, and that person who has the key works at the bank, and so if they open the box, inside of that is documentation that, what do you need that she would have 
that actually says things about her. You know, there's that. But also, she, you know, yeah, she, nine she nine. just seems to have had a mental break of some kind. She's seeking. She, anyway, she wants to become uh, a cop, so I think she's gonna be fine. How, how much? Uh, well, she wants to be a cop, or she wants to be a fucking marshal. Uh, well, she she wants to be a cop in this case, which would Power be a marshal. So the first thing she's gonna do is have a psychological evaluation. You know, of course. Yeah, I mean that's a polygraph. Did she spend you know? any time in the Southern California area between the years of 1971 and 1976? Uh, she did not mention, but she does seem to enjoy psychedelics. So I'm not sure if that lines up. Yeah, that that lines up. <laughs> so um, <laughs> anyway, she would like to. Uh, she would like to uh, come here to train, in a sense. More so just, uh, you know, she has a full understanding of what you guys do here. She's had a lot of experience, you know, generating and giving reports. She really has everything that she needs to be uh, other than a badge, you know? Yeah, do you do you also have some fucking beachfront property over in Arizona you want to sell me while you're selling the spiel? That's not a spiel. You know Muffy. <laughs> No, I, come on, don't I, disparage I, Muffy like that. I, I do know Muffy. I actually like Muffy quite a bit. There you I, go. I also know the you situation the... that Muffy left when she left this fucking department. Yep. And Me I, too. And I've also heard uh, quite a bit of fucking disgruntling in relation to uh, some of the shit she was saying about Harper as soon as she fucking left. I can barely see that being an issue. You know, that's like, that's days ago. That's ba that's ancient history. That was like, you know, that was several days, even maybe several, several days ago. Uh, like that a, could have been. A, uh, it was, it was like a goddamn week ago, Greco. There you go. That's, a, that is a, that's more than several. I, I, that's seven. So you're telling seven me she, role. she left the department and suddenly remember she's a fucking 29 year old and now she wants to get trained by the department she's, that she consistently shit talked as soon as she left. She has matured a lot. <laughs> in a lot of ways legally you know as well as you know she's had to come to terms with the, she's a grown adult now she can't be behaving that way so you know she recognizes that you know what i'm not gonna say no uh i am gonna say that i need to speak with harper in relation to that that's what I've been saying, you know, and I was going to have this conversation with her and actually she was going to have the conversation with her because that's the type of lady she is now of, of her age. So, yeah, well, you know, she recognizes that it's going to be difficult, but this is the same process for everybody. You, you're keeping Ferraro. Not nothing about that. No, thanks, AG, for Ferraro. <laughs> Uh, what do you mean, thanks for... Fr Isn't that part of there the whole process is that they can just stick with us if they won't do? Exactly. So <laughs> maybe Muffy will have a change of heart and she'll be your next, um... Uh, you know, the next, uh... She could work here. You know, she could stay. Look, I know that based on your personal experience, people tend to forget their grievances relatively quick. You know, they go from... I don't know, trying to start a fucking union to overthrow the attorney general to suddenly working for you. But, um... They see the way. They see the light. <laughs> uh, they're excited. What we're doing yeah. over there. A lot of people. I would strongly advise that a direct meeting occur between uh, Muffy and Harper. And maybe one that is not incentivized by personal fucking gain. Just a genuine, actual, uh, put this shit to rest kind of meeting. That's not going to happen. Well, if that's not going to happen, then I don't reckon her getting trained is going to fucking happen You know, either. but you know, Mr. Nolan, I will say, <laughs> and I am a re you know, ask about me. I'm a reasonable man. You know, I don't know if you think of me that I'm unreasonable, but it has been very, very difficult to have regular, focused conversations about practical things with Chief Hopper. I will say that most of my time spent with her is discussing various anxieties grievances concerns or otherwise no, and right. i well i'm the one I just who, want to i'm the one who mediated enzo's exit interview i will also mediate a conversation between muffy and the chief i appreciate that i'm just saying that i would love to have that conversation <laughs> but it just ends up devolving into something else most of the time but i will say that i'm available i'm always available to talk this is not a i won't do it i'm not saying you should do it i will do it I'm just I'm at, what I was going to do at the end of that is ask for some advice because I'm just, I feel like I'm either not going forward in a positive way to repair things because you know Chief Appa I will say is is it feels physically tense to be around it sometimes. Uh, well, that is because there is a constant shitstorm that is circling around, and based on what I observed during the conversation with Enzo, 
Uh, people have a tendency to know exactly which strings to pull upon in order to trigger the rest of that shit show to continue its cycle. And, uh, uh, for instance, during the conversation that Enzo and Harper were having, which was which turned out to be a pretty good conversation, I'm going to say, uh, everything coincidentally began going to shit when the two of them began discussing Ms. Marshall. <laughs> and that is largely because they were discussing an issue with someone who was not in the fucking room. So as long as there's somebody there to actually keep the train on the rails uh, who is contributing and wants to see it be a thoughtful discussion and is not fucking taking goddamn sides, I would imagine that the two of them could be pretty fucking productive together. Well, that's you out. So who do you suggest? The fuck do you mean that rules me out? <laughs> well, I mean, just, you know, you might be biased, you know, you, you know, you're defensive. <laughs> I am not goddamn biased. As a matter of fact, I like Muffy quite a bit because she uh, built the whole goddamn dispatch department up around here. And she's continued to be respectful with me since she left. The person she's not been respectful with, though, is the one she needs to have the conversation with. Okay. Apparently there well, was something I... about a goddamn complaint that was floating around and something about money and doinking, and I don't even fucking know. Yeah, that was frivolous and a waste of time. I can promise you that. You know, it was funny because she ended up having to be the one to provide the receipt because she started all that bullshit and she, <laughs> you know, she had a lot of explaining to do on that one. That one was a very fun conversation for her. I can tell you that when that came up. Well, if she's capable of discussing it with you and she's capable of discussing it with me, then she needs to uh, let her goddamn lady balls drop and actually have the conversation with Harper as well. Cats, you know, sometimes you have to decide, like, can you, can you get them, you know, you got to throw them in a sack <laughs> and either they figure it out or you throw them both in the river. That's what my old man taught me. Your old so, man taught anyway, you how to drown fucking animals. Yeah, what's your childhood like? I had a relatively pleasant childhood, to be completely honest with you. We had a great time. Come on. It's old-fashioned fun. I'll go find Muffy. All right. Copy that. Copy that. But you're okay, though. Yes, that's the important. Like, everybody's hurt. Look, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm just still suffering the same gunshot I got shot by the other Cap, day. I need I'm you. All right. For a sec. No, right. Copy that. You are yeah, never going to believe what the Attorney General just proposed to me. You're never going to believe what I'm just going to fucking tell you? Do you know Chloe? The girl in the wheelchair? Uh, yeah, she was out front. She was, like, guarding the gate or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, if hypothetically she came to me and she said, here's my van, here's all the illegal contents of my van, um, I want you to have it. <laughs> I'm a little torn on charging her. Honey, it's my, my it's fucking considerable. It's a lot. Uh, well, it's there's a van out here. <gasps> Jesus okay, fucking uh, yeah. Wait, that, where did they go? I don't. I don't. Uh, do you have any idea where Muffy and Enzo went? But uh, I um, it, a lady from the AG's office was just found in Sandy injured. She's been taken to pillbox, so they went to pillbox. Oh right, Jack Riley did that. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, we just saw them together at City Hall. That was the last person I saw with before we left, so. All right. Uh, you want me to take a look in here, Bonnie? Um, it's hookers. Be, Don't do it. I've learned this lesson before. This is how they no, get you. No, seriously. They're going to put in a trunk, and they're going to have you open it. They're going to take a picture, and you F. Yeah, There's like 400 bags of meth in these two cop cars. I handed oh, it over. That's way... Why do you have... Wait, what? Why do you have that? I'm changing my life around. I'm done. I'm done with that life. Okay. <laughs> All right. That sounds good. Mm-hmm. If they're in... It's in both cop trunks. All right. What? Jesus. All right. making these decisions and she's making these moves on her own accord it's not you know you should be more supportive of your friend oh we're very supportive i mean then you get behind it and don't say oh you know what did you do to her you know yeah, God come damn over it, here about him my advice would be to use this as an incentive for her so seize it, seize it, put an incident report in and record it, but don't charge her with nothing. And if she decides she's going to uh, 
go back on her ways or fall back into her criminal habits, that leaves us the option of putting a warrant out for it. That's exactly what I was thinking. At the same time, I think she also wants ah. to speak to the AG and she's got a lot of information about how this is made, what it comes from. <laughs> so I believe she wants to give that information to the marshal's office. Yeah. Shit. All right. Well, let's hook her up with the fucking marshal's office then. Unless she'd rather mm -hmm. sit down with one of our officers. Uh, is Gnickle still out there? Is he left? Uh, I think he Bandit. took off. I think he's trying to find uh, Muffy and... Yeah, Bonnie always looks good. What are you kidding me with that? Did Gnickle take off? Uh, yes. I no, I don't... That's yeah, I think he did. <laughs> Yeah, there ain't that right. much time until it starts fucking raining, so, no way. Hey, so here's what we're gonna do. Okay? okay. I'm gonna catalog this. I'm gonna take it off you. You are okay. not gonna be charged. If you get back into your old widely ways and you start committing crimes again. Won't happen. If you do, then I'm gonna have to charge you with everything you've just given me. Yeah, that's incentive not that's to commit crime. Right? <laughs> so, yeah. Isn't that like a hut at that point? Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty fucking pretty, close it's pretty to it, fucking yeah. close, right? <laughs> so that's the deal. I also have information about the new mayor. So I will speak to the AG's office about just getting you in a room with them, and you can share whatever you want to share. Work out whatever you want to work out, but that's my deal. Let's uh, scooch Is out the way stuff? so we don't get hit by no car. Okay. Can you guys keep it a secret that I did this so I don't get chopped into tiny pieces? I will absolutely keep it a secret, but like I said, if you get picked up again for shit like this, then I'm throwing it all at you. Okay. We got a deal? Deal. Okay. Why wouldn't you talk about right. in, the, uh, in the event there ain't nobody from the marshals available, do you want to wait to talk to them or would you rather speak with one of our officers? Mm. I could wait. They're, they're, they're dealing with a thing. They're probably not going to be free till after the storm. No, I mean, like mm, that's that. fine. Come on, guys. Won't it? No, All right. My full time job is this wheelchair. Very, very briefly, and maybe it's along with them briefly. Uh, sure. All right. I'm going to need your help with the evidence locker here. I know I can't. Uh, All right. We'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll endeavor to get them, uh, get them together for you. Yep. I'm just hoping, you know, maybe even a year down the line that I can get this stuff off my record. You know, I'm willing to put in the legwork. This well, was the first step. Too, if you really want. <laughs> well, I appreciate you and your sense of humor using the phrase leg work. <laughs> hey, no, my legs do work. Can you just impound that van for me? Yeah, we can take care of that for you. I had to find out Thanks. like this. I did it, Oz. I'm clean. Nice. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Cap, we've got, th we've got three cars worth of drugs to get in the evidence in so the first storm. Yeah. She's got a real job. Look at her. She's a professional. Certified. Jesus fucking Christ. I can't even tell you how many bacon trays. It was rude. You, uh, you already document and photograph what was I, in the I've documented it all. All right, perfect. <clears throat> ha! No, all right, let's just make sure we're going in here one at a time so we don't mess nothing up. Yeah, all right. I'll put mine on this shelf where I'm back here. Hey, Lane, put it on yeah. the nozzle. Yeah, we'll use that yeah. one right there. There's like a 0% chance we get all of this in there. There's like a 0% chance we get all of this in there. Get 
that beer as well. Yeah, like the street value of meth should be like a buck twenty. Can I grab it then? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, everything that's in Evelyn, the water bottle is uh, evidence from today's arrest. All three of them. Perfect. That's clear. I'm going to see if they need help with it. We've been busting ass today, Lane. Hell's on the ground here? Why is there a broken bottle here? How you doing, Captain? Yeah, doing all right. How about yourself? Yeah, never better, never better, Captain. After you. All right, I put the crow back, crowbar back into your trunk. You need help grabbing anything? <clears throat> uh, just check the uh, trunks of these three police cars here, because there might be. Uh... I think this one's locked. Which one? I... Uh, who am I giving this to? There you go. Uh, you want me to grab the hammer, the bags, and the drill? Uh, yeah, if you can. Got it. Hello? It's like crazy right now. And then, and then ask her to show you the the one that I gave her. Jesus Christ. All right. The uh, only thing left in the van was a crowbar, so I just left that in there. I'm going to go with the drill and stuff. Uh, I reckon we ain't got room for it. Well, we do have room for it in the evidence locker. You just I'll just talk. set it right here. Yeah. I didn't, still don't have access. Here are my bags. There you go. Here's it. I'm gonna leave the hammer on the fucking floor. We don't need to save that for nothing, I don't think. Three extra minutes on the clock? Surprising. Bonnie must have emptied her entire inventory. How you doing, Gray? Uh, been better. Been better. How you doing? Uh, healing and dealing with all the bullshit of the day. <laughs> you know what? That is a perfect description of my day. Yeah. Uh, I got a bunch of new martial SOPs that the Attorney General wanted me to hand out to people, so I'm going to put them okay. on the desk okay. for everybody. Sure. Yeah, I'd love to read through that. I'm going to take it quick. People got shot again? Yeah, you picked a perfect time to leave. Oh, God. Rock off on Let me guess, people wearing purple. Yeah, yeah, this one wasn't too bad. Almost the grays, but okay. it got a well, little bit of flesh. Almost the gray, you get it? Because gray is gray. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Who's the who's Are any of them court? Uh, I think Barb. Gray. Gray. Did we hey, uh, can I leave the meeting no, so I can uh, fucking talk very loudly into people's ears? Uh, I want to sure. seem assertive and assert my dominance. Okay. <laughs> I've got some, some points I need to make, but yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't, Love mind, it. I don't mind if you leave the meeting. Uh, the only I just thing want to assert uh, my dominance. 
I'm a good citizen. Only thing I need to tell people is that they've mm -hmm. got uh, we got them new martial SOPs, them? but I'll put copies of them on the desk and you just point out they exist. Yeah, um, <laughs> the attorney general gave me a copy. Or Muffy did so. Oh, when when the fuck did they give y'all a copy? Uh, they gave me one today, early, you know, like two hours ago. But uh, I read read them, uh, read the entire thing. Pretty uh, pretty some pretty good SOPs. Way better than the first ones. I, I like it a lot. Yeah, Greco said he very he personally spent a lot of time riding them. So I I love the first ones and I like the second ones. Oh, They're goodness. more thorough, so I, I you know I like thorough things. So yeah. it's good. Let me give this back to you. <laughs> yeah, he did a good. Yeah, he, uh, he did a good job. I right. yeah, did a good them. But um, yeah, he just wants to make sure all the officers what? are aware, so we know what they can and cannot be doing. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing? Yeah, I don't believe you for one second. Oh, you don't believe me? <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> okay. What you doing? What's that? Guys, Why wasn't the storm supposed to happen? Turned over no. everything? Now it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does seem a little light. Jeez. Yeah, it's always at this time. It's a hole. Mm. Wow. Yeah, this is, this is a couple minutes late, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. No, I, I think My you're right about is... that, sir. I think you're right. I think normally, though, normally it starts raining exactly two minutes ago. Yeah. You know, back in the past, I feel like we would already be back by now. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Get down, Gray! <laughs> Getting down is not going to matter if it's artillery striking. These walls is made of glass. You're so pessimistic, it Captain. Me, You're a goddamn damn It's never <laughs> old for you, is it? <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Let's get this going again. It's interesting to me that 5M has a rating system. I'm never, I'm never going to understand why. Ragdoll Tsunami is a good bit. I, I think it's really funny when we've got like several people doing it. Yelp reviewing servers. Yeah. It's it's almost like reading Steam reviews when it's like it's like when you read a Steam review for like Elite Dangerous and it's like terrible game, economy's not great, blah blah blah. Two thousand three hundred and forty two hours on record. <laughs> no end game whatsoever. <laughs> All right, chat. We are gonna be right back. Give me just a moment.
Nolan, what are you doing all the way over there, buddy? What are you doing all the way over there, buddy? I figured out the secret to not getting clocked off, by the way, chat. You wait until that little, like, HUD command thing in the top right corner to not be there anymore. I like your outfit. Uh, th thank you. Did he whisper that? I don't, I don't know. It was very disconcerting. <laughs> that was <That's> weird. <laughs> half a mind to lock that guy up for 24 hours just to prevent a body from showing up. <laughs> yeah, it might not be the worst fucking idea. <laughs> be a goddamn skinless face with a helmet on it. Is Bionic still in here? Bionic, are you still here? Skinless face with something on it, you say. So Barb was provided a copy of the Marshall SOPs before everybody else. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Coming up on 21 hours. And... Uh, where's Barb? I'm going to look around real quick before we get started. Yeah, I don't know. She said she wanted to leave the meeting so she could feel all powerful and stuff. We well, going to let her do it.
All right, well, I couldn't find her anywhere. We'll give her another minute. Uh, I saw her running Actually. around out there. Get right back. Oh, there she is. Hey, Byron. Why does it seem like the PD is not currently on fire? Don't worry. Somebody, somebody invariably will raise some topic right. that sets the PD on fire. Everybody. Come on up here. You said you wanted to you wanted to run it, Barb. Yeah, yeah, I'm going, I'm going. Okay. <laughs> no, sorry, did you want some entrance music? I, I failed if you did. So um Okay, uh, what, what have we started? Nothing. Uh, nope. nope, we ain't said nothing yeah. yet. Hey guys, how's it going out there? <laughs> it's good, it's good. Hey everybody. Tough, good. Tough crowd, tough crowd, tough crowd. <laughs> tough crowd. So, uh, anyone get any big bus, big arrest? Go ahead, one of you. Uh, Maddie, why don't you go first? Sure, we just had a, a big meth bust over um, yonder. The uh, Kirby came back to the actual guy that was found there. Uh, he's burned. He is currently in the gel cell right now, I believe. And um, yeah, that was because of uh, an amazing team, uh, specifically Biggs. Yep, and they're down there processing that 95. So uh, if after this meeting, if you were involved in that, make sure you go... Uh, Find out the report number and add whatever. Great energy. Revenue. Good energy, guys. Cool. Daryl, so um, Yeah, go ahead. Daryl. Yep. There was a uh, commercial robbery that turned to an officer involved shooting earlier. Uh, report number 2345. I just ask that if you were involved with that, throw in something. Uh, put your name in there because I can't remember everybody. <laughs> what what was that report number? 2345. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Uh, just out of curiosity, is that three uh, commercial robberies in three days that have turned into officer-involved shootings? I believe that's correct, and I think two, or at least two of those three, are with uh, what we are presuming to be the same individuals or same group. All right. What's our current unit uh, limit on uh, commercial robberies? It's four. Where the uh, Fourth unit uh, takes the hostage before joining the pursuit. No, Rad. Uh, let's go ahead and bump that to uh, five units for the time being, uh, just to get a little bit of an increased presence on there when we can. Uh, that's going to be specifically for when you've got four suspects who are present, so we're going to do the number of suspects plus one as far as cars are concerned. <laughs> All right. Commercial robberies, if there's four suspects... Make sure we get five units there. Actually, I had something I wanted to mention about that. I was there. Many of us were. I just wanted to say uh, y'all showed a lot of professionalism and restraint handling that entire scene. It started out very chaotic with them over overturning their vehicle. Uh, pretty early on, it was a foot bail and a car chase, and yet we maintained uh, pretty clean comms on both. Um, we doing puppy dog. I know it sucks we didn't get a suspect, but we did get a car and we minimized casualties. And so overall, I just want to commend everybody for the work they did today. We're going to continue to improve and handle these situations uh, better each time. Um, well, one note I did want to make: uh, when you're negotiating in a scene, especially at a commercial robbery, uh, it is okay. Demand more time. River, if we are not staged here. up, they do not get you have to, to come leave. Back here. Chat wants um, to give you I, they will try to push you. They'll try mm -hmm. to. I'll try to leave before She's not we're set it. up and ready, She's and we're going to operate it. as quickly as we can, but demand more time, okay? Or else? Oh, God. So, uh, River, you know, they have a gun. Was, was anyone here. there at the press conference we need? Good the girl. AG held <laughs> early on? Nope. Yeah, you did. Uh, well, uh, elect Dan Marino, the, the, the was supposed to be me, uh, was uh, arrested. Um, and uh, they're going to post the, the warrant publicly and uh, it should be public. I don't know where they're going to post it, but he was arrested. 
it's kind of a big announcement. Uh, got arrested in City Hall for uh, some stuff. And uh, yeah, pretty much all uh, that I know of. Um, I don't think of anything else. Yeah, the Marshall SOPs. I put copies of them out on the desks. Oh, yeah. Uh, Marshall SOPs. Uh, is the copy going to be on your desk? Take a look at them, read at them, uh, so you understand the duties of marshals, so we don't have to hear people not understanding what marshals are doing, because they have specific duties, and they're going to act on them, so please read them. Uh, are they like. actual SLPs, or yes. is it something yes. to giggle at? No, mm -hmm. no, no, they're, 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 they're SLPs. Yeah, they're actually relatively detailed. It's like nine or so pages of SLPs. So. All right, 10 four. It's, uh, it's a really good read. Um, it gives you a very, a very... Some idiot wrote them. Clear <laughs> Moses, thank you for the tier what, one, what three are. and one, uh, brother. Pretty good read. Really good SOPs that uh, Greco worked really hard on. Yeah, he keeps saying that. He keeps saying he worked extremely hard on them. So just, you know, my advice is if you've got any kind of uh, underlying concerns as to what the marshals can or cannot do, just make sure you read them thoroughly. Uh, that way we're all understanding exactly what the uh, the playing field is when we're out there on patrol. At least what it should be. Um, um, Bonnie, do you have any announcements? <laughs> no. Okay. I don't, I don't think I have anything else. I got, I got one more. Uh, we had a class today on RSPC and some case law with uh, Joe Ferrero, some of our cadets and other officers. And I want to say thanks for showing up to that. Um, we followed that up with, uh, I think Joe went to City Hall and talked to uh, the Chief Justice. And uh, Small it, world. It, if you witness a handoff, that's a probable cause. So um, I recommend witnessing a couple so you're certain. And uh, best case scenario is you actually get a picture of that handoff. So it's uh, oh, seem mad. very, very solid in court. <laughs> but uh, if you witness handoffs at a suspicious activity call, that's a probable cause. You can search them. That's and I do want to reiterate that when we frisk, we're searching only for weapons. Uh, you didn't see anything else. Actually, do you have an announcement? Bert Lobos, um, congratulations on promotion to solo cadet. Yeah, whoa! Everyone Howdy. clap now! Yeah. Hell yeah. Congratulations, Bert. Nice work, Ben. Congrats. Thank you, sir. Heck yeah. Good work. <laughs> Great job. Y'all uh, cadets are kind of blasting through these uh, these solo promotions, and uh, I have the utmost faith in those who are handing them out to you, so y'all are doing good work. Well, I think uh, I think that's all, right, guys? I think so. Anyone want to close us off with a prayer? Uh, I ain't got any particular Bible verses prepared today. If anybody else wants to take over the prayer, Daryl, oh, you feel on. up for it? You want to do a prayer? I'll do a fucking prayer. Come on, Daryl, get up here. Come do your whatever you do. Okay, all right. You guys all wanna bow your heads with me as we uh we speak uh... up, Darrell. Oh, hey, if you guys would all bow your heads with me as we speak to our Lord Savior Jesus Christ for a moment, okay? All right. How you doing, Jesus? This is Daryl Dow. Haven't spoken to you huh. since the last time. Thank you uh, for looking over all of us, boys and Ooh, girls. I think we, while I was uh, AFK, uh, Liam came in with the tier one as well. Liam, thank you. I want you to. Uh, You're amazing. Bless us, uh, these chairs and these tables in this room with us, and all the food and all the fucking beer that we're gonna drink later on today after shift. Uh, watch over us as we watch over the city. You know what I mean? And uh, and uh, the whole spirit. Uh, amen. 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 All right, no, with that. Now you close this out. Yeah, yeah. Be safe shift, out there, everybody. Man. Don't get shot. All right, it's happened enough today. Uh, um, sure can. Uh, excuse me, Captain Nolan. 
Yeah, what's going on? Uh, I don't know if uh, you're the right person to speak to or if there's someone else, but I need Pardon help me? getting a... Uh, how do I phrase this? Uh, I need help getting uh, the fax number in case I ever need to fax a, you know, a prosecutor or the public defender for a suspect. Uh, yeah, hold on. Uh, could you just generally let me know what your fax number is real quick? Yeah, yeah, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll think about a period. Uh, where the fuck? Oh, I think I've got him. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought I had him. Hold on. Uh, all right, you should be good to go. I yeah. see the, uh, hmm. I see, like, I have, uh, you know, some type of permissions, but I don't, hmm. I can't, I can't fathom. I, I know the, the fax number, you know? Um, I thought maybe I'd get an invite of some sorts. Or is there some sort of, uh, I don't know, uh, government that gets, uh, uh it should be, uh, uh, it should be in the same place. Yeah. It should be right here on this beeper that I just showed to you right here. Ah, okay. Hold up. Let me, let me see. You should be able to see this. I think. Question mark. Huh. Ah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right. I, yeah, I'll, yeah, I see yeah. it on the paper. All right, you got it all yeah. figured out. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. Thank you for the, thank you for the fax number, sir. Yeah, appreciate no, you. No worries at all. Have a good one, sir. Yeah, how's it going? What's going on, Captain? Hey, Jen. How you doing today? What's going on? Uh, requesting to talk to him. Da Dallas, Dallas Jansen. Okay. Yeah, I guess you impressed someone. All right. Do we actually get to go on patrol? Do you know what Dr. Miami is? Yeah, do you, ever, you need to go to Dr. Miami. Who, uh, who are they God looking damn. for out that way? Are you talking about uh, somebody in Plato? Uh, no, no. The fellow who's out in the hallway. I was wondering who they were looking Don't for. Don't copy that. River, stop. Stop what cease and desist. I'll take a motor unit out. Hmm. Alright, dispatch 278. I'm gonna be uh, 10 8 and out on patrol until y'all need me for a meeting or something. And for have fun. <laughs> I actually don't mind the meetings, I'm going to be honest. I actually do not mind the meetings. Um...
Uh, this is 236. Are there any available um, FTOs? Someone please take 236 out mm -hmm. so that I don't feel the need to get into a car. Please. I'm only going to be on duty for like an hour and a half, so. River, stop. I, don't look at me like that. She's just sitting there licking her paws. At the doggo, she's laying very comfortably about seven feet away from me. This is 236, uh, show me 10 8 over. Hey, Big, there's somebody in the lobby looking for you named Dallas Johnson. Named Alice Johnson. Nine, that's just Dallas Johnson's looking for you in the lobby. I'll let him know you're processing. Uh, ten four, I'll be right up there. Oh, Dallas Johnson. Okay. What kind of dog river is she? Is uh, half German Shepherd, uh, one quarter Catahoulin, and one quarter Anatolian Shepherd. She is a mutt dog, which is very cute. Very cute. She's 100% adorable. A big dog? Yeah, she's like 65 pounds. There's pictures of our baby girl on the uh, in the Show Me Your Pets channel that me and uh, me and Mrs. Gutsy have posted. You can go check out pictures of her and our kitty cat. But our cat, Aria, does not visit me too often. She does not visit me too often. Because my office is upstairs, and she doesn't like it. Tuesday's going to be interesting. First year with a new dog, and he's a uh, husky. Huskies are notoriously very talkative. I am quite certain that there will be quite quite a bit of talkativeness happening in relation to fireworks. Oh, that local tried to kill us. Black long haired German Shepherd from in. 263 going 10 8. Pretty dog, but a brat. Yeah, that's the way ours is. She's very subtly trying to sit there and lick her paw right now, even though I asked her to stop. Mm. So we want to, I've just come to the conclusion we're never going to fucking see Tex again, so. I need to figure out which gun sword it is that sells the sniper rifle. The bear, the long barreled rifle. Because I don't think this was it. This is a shotgun, I think. Um. 
Okay. Yeah. So it's not Polito. Let's check this one and then we'll go into Sandy. Check that one. Up. Ah! Well, not. Now the bike's broken. Ah. What is wrong with these locals? Why are these locals behaving this way today? Don't like. G63, uh, 1076 Davis BD. Ask Snow what's wrong with the locals. The thing about most locals and. 232 from 220. Is that most of their pathing you can actually learn. After spending as much time in, front of in Grand the Theft Auto radio. as I have, I actually know most of their unusual pathing. Do you mind grabbing her? The fuckery happens when you add uh, lights I am to at it. pillbox. Uh, I can turn around if you need me to. Frost existed. I'm pretty sure we yoinked fucking Frost's keys a super long time ago. Did I just stall on those? <clears throat> uh, dispatch 278, what is the location of that most recent drug activity? Sandy. Uh, 236 and route that latest drug call. Uh, 278, same traffic. Yeah, I'm coming down Route 68, so uh, I'll be a little ways out. Second drug sale in the same area. Fuck. We have to check this gun store real quick, chat. Please hold. Skirp. Or not drug store, fucking gun store. Does this one not fucking sell anything? Went out of business? It kind of looks like it did. Turn the lights on. Take the Route 68 approach. Then we'll zip down Joshua Chats. <clears throat> uh, we got no units who's uh, on scene for them drug sales. I've just arrived on scene. 236. Fuck, dude. The art of the stakeout is lost. Oh, 
That was a PD issued rifle. No, Norway got it from somewhere. Uh, it's 236, uh, code of four on the drug. <clears throat> show, show me on patrol on sand, uh, Sandy, over. All right, this one I can buy things from. Winchester. The problem is that we just need to actually see text to get our fucking gun back, dude. Say nobody driving around over there or nothing. No, I didn't. I didn't see anything. It was code for over there. I was gonna just probably just patrol in Sandy for now, I guess, and just kind of keep my eyes peeled. Yeah, that ain't the worst idea. Yeah, I'm gonna see if there's because it seems like they're kind of preferring that back area over there. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of people over there, sir. Yeah. Nolan, are you on frequency? Like a lot of people, like uh, what, like the lost or something? Um, no, I mean like there's a lot of um. Uh, Ten people. I'm on frequency. Like there's a lot of people just sitting around on the chairs and all the lawns and patios yeah. and all that. There's a all over the place over there. Uh, we uh, excuse me, sorry. We uh, have the location of Tyrone Bingham's, and we need to put together uh, some people to go serve a warrant. I'll go get my rifle. Wait, wait, what's going on? And four, they were spotted at the pink they're, cage with uh, uh, rifles on their back. They're going to try to go serve ago. a warrant on Tyrone Biggums, who's got a fucking rifle on his back, apparently. Ten four, I'm going to come with you right now. <clears throat> uh, ten four, uh, if you want to start forming some people to up, up down at Davis, I'm going to have to go there to, uh, you said they had fucking rifles on their backs. That's correct. <clears throat> Uh, need an FTO when available? 276, you can ride with me. If you're at Davis currently, meet me at the armory. <clears throat> Any seniors available to report back to Davis? We're serving the warrant for Tyrone Biggums. I need you to come and uh, pick up the big guns. It's about to sound like Vietnam again. <laughs> this is why I wanted my fucking rifle. Do we have a description of a uh, make and model of vehicle that he may have been spotted in? Stand by, gotta check pictures. Uh, 233 back on radio. Looks like a four door black in color, one of those little cars you can rent from the airport. Styles, if you can <coughs> swing by Davis, uh, we got the location of Tyrone Biggins. We're gonna be rolling in to serve a warrant. Fuck yes, uh, I am going to be very ready for that. Uh, the 236 and route to David, can I pair up with somebody if we go over there? <clears throat> you can pair up with myself and, uh, Daryl. Yeah, four, I'm in route. Uh, 205 to command, do I have permission to, uh, get my assault rifle? Permission granted. The four. Thank you. It's go time. Yeah, sounds like it is. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> go, Captain. Thank you. I'm coming. Whiskey! <laughs> Everybody got uh, medicine. I'm I'm already hurting, and I know this is gonna hurt more. And I know this is gonna hurt more. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have 
any medicine that would be appropriate for the circumstances. Okay. Three, it's uh, Davis PD. Does anybody have uh, AR ammo, attack rifle ammo? Just need uh, a couple of I can, rounds. I'll drop you a box. Thank you. Are oh, we getting ready to rock and roll? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Bob. Already. Yeah, fine. I ducked out of the way. Does anybody got any additional uh, 45s? Uh, yeah, I can spare you uh, like 20 rounds of this. Uh... <clears throat> uh, that's perfect, sir. Thank you. No problem. Hey, there you go. Thank you, man. There you go. Something going on. Are we uh, discussing this before we head out, or are we about to head out? I hate these fucking guns, Bunny. <laughs> They're so heavy. Should I grab anything additional? Or... Uh, uh, as long as you got ammunition on you, I think that's the main thing we're gonna need. Locked on, so I'm kind of in the dark. Yeah. Yeah. So those are like... You got any medicine? Um, apparently I can't, I can't, um, open this thing. Maybe so my, my pockets are too full. Yeah, your pockets... Hey, uh, anybody got room to open a... Box of AR ammo. I literally can't even fucking carry one at the moment. Yeah. I, do not I got an idea. Step back, Dragon. I got it. Hey, Bob, you got any food in your locker? Uh, Nothing. 2 2 3 what's your 20? Yep. I'm at Davis. Oh, so am I. Uh, the, uh -huh. that armory upstairs, like the ground floor armory. Thank you so much. Um, I do. Here you go, enjoy. Come on, get ready. What do you say? Uh, sure. Are you able to tell me where we're going? So that I didn't say that with a lot of confidence. Uh, are we gonna reconvene at Emma, uh, Davis? No, you are. Oh. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, do, do I need bullets? Oh, you damn right, we're gonna get them right now. Get ready. Excuse me, Cap. It's oh, loaded, yeah. but there's another one. Hey, be advised, uh, latest shots fired. He has that pink cage. I'm trying you're to safe, grab a safe, box man. of this fucking ammunition, but I can't seem to carry it. Oh, copy that, copy that. Do you want me to grab it and open it for you? Uh, if you can. Right, I don't even know why I can't carry it. I've got, I, I feel like I could carry about eight no, more pounds of shit. That's possible. Make smart decisions. Be on your guys at six. You understand me? I don't think he's going to be there anymore. I don't know. You never know. Yeah, there were shots fired there just recently, so. You riding with us, Drag? Uh, yep, yep, I'll ride with you guys. All right. I'll pull out a car. Actually, this is my car. Mass is on with you. Okay. God, it takes us so fucking long to equip the rifle because we just can't carry it, dude. You, uh, you, you can pop in with me if you want to. We're trying to serve a warrant on that tower. I need to give a guy a ride, um, back to City Hall. All right, three of us are staged right outside. Oh, all right. I mean, if you want to so, go give him a ride, that's fine. I just yeah, let me give him a ride. Do I need to grab a better gun? Fellow out here in a car. 
Uh, what uh, what kind of firearm you got on you now? The Colt should what? be all right for the time yeah. being. Uh, I'll, I'll drop him off and then I will There's head up there. No, perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, stay safe. Y'all, we're staged up outside Davis at the moment. We gotta get rolling. Rolling oh, inside you. All right, let's start heading up there. Get there. We need to make sure we secure the perimeter. So uh, get two squatters parked up on the on the entrance, blocking it off, and then we'll get other people marked up around the building. Right, up, there's back alley. We'll stage at the front. Ten four or two twenty staging up the front. Yeah, two seven eight. Two three in the back. On, yeah, I'm circling that back alleyway. Uh, I'm gonna stay on radio so as to be mobile and whatnot. I do not see anybody in this parking lot. Oh, oh. Who was it that provided this Unit information? Unit in the back alley. Do you uh, see anything? Yeah, not. He may be inside. Uh, uh, negative. Uh, there is nothing in the back alleyway. There is nothing in the skate park. Two eighteen, staying on radio out front. does appear as though there is a vehicle that's uh, present, uh, potentially matching the description of that photograph. Has he been tipped off already? There was a shot fired up here. Arriving uh, board, you like me, please? Uh, stay mobile with me around the area. We've got officers who are uh, currently clearing the interior of the pink cage. Uh, there is still a vehicle on scene, so there is a belief that he may be inside of one of these residencies. Two seven six. Make sure we got people on all perimeter sides. Hey, firm. We have got the front and the back covered. Uh, we could potentially use one more unit up top. Uh, we've only got, I, I believe, Barb up there. I thought I saw a dragon up there. Dragon's on the lower stairs? Yeah, I mean, uh, up top by the skate park. I could position hey. myself up there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know of any buildings nearby they could squat in? Uh, that's what I'm worried about. That's the reason I keep uh, moving yeah, around cause, here. Cause, uh, Chief and I found them squatting up in Vinewood previously. I feel like they would do the same thing again, uh, staying close to this being like maybe where they store shit. Sure, I'm going to go ahead and head up. 
you know, maybe they go to the squatter place or, yeah. or whatever. So yeah, there's a there's a motel uh, there's a motel north of here that's got like a little uh, uh, what would you call it like a big open area in the middle of it. Okay. Uh, it's the only place that I can think of. Yeah, well, they were they were in a they were in a, one of those houses up in Vinewood that uh, like I guess it's a model home or something. It oh, doesn't have yeah. locks, so I didn't know if there was another one of those places near here. Yeah, not that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, there's like a little place over by the twenty four seven on Clinton, but that's like a fucking storage room. Yeah. No. All right, attention all units. Uh, we don't have a way to enter the facility, so we're going to set up some people for a stakeout. Uh, we're, we're code four on in the inter uh, area of the pink cage, but uh, we, unfortunately we don't have a way to enter there. So get staged up. Probably don't need this many people here for this, so we can, if you're uh, on the outside of the pink cage, go ahead and call off. You can go to other calls, but the rest of us are going to stay here. Uh, two two zero. Can you uh? Can we twenty five? Uh. Yeah. Yeah, on the corner. Two fifty two. I will go ahead and detach. Four. Run down over why we're highly militarized over serving a warrant on a guy because he has shot cops four days in a row. <laughs> His warrant is for attempted murder of police. He was reported as having been spotted with a rifle on his back. Um, yeah. All right, if you're in a marked car at the pink cage, just uh, do some due diligence to make sure that it's hidden. All right. Uh, go find a spot to parkade. Yeah, 278. I'm going to be circling around the area, checking some of these uh, other apartments and whatnot nearby to see if maybe they have relocated. Seven eight. Would you mind uh, beating that? <clears throat> you, you code six around the area. Uh, yeah, I'm currently code six. If you need a twenty five, I can do that. Uh, ten four. I'm just gonna park up on this garage and uh, stake out. Make sure we have somebody nearby on radio. I'm staying on radio. Yep. Uh, which, uh, which garage are you going to park up on, or are you going to get on the one on Meteor? Uh, the one off, uh, Power Street, West Side. Oh, it's, uh, the one that's basically attached to the pink cage. Uh, just south of you, I believe. I, I, to be honest, I wouldn't necessarily call this a garage. It looks like the top of a parking garage, but it's not. It's where the skate park is. This is the perfect opportunity for me to check if they sell the rifle here. They do not. Over one guy in his home? No, it's, um, maybe it's because, uh, it's because he's part of a street gang that's been, like, notorious for gunning down cops recently. Honestly, Nolan only would have approved one or two ARs, but the fact that they were spotted with ARs kind of necessitates the response to a certain degree. Did anybody see, uh, see a, I think it was the black and color four-door uh, leave the area as we were approaching? I just want to, I'm curious if maybe they saw us pulling up. 
Negative, I, I got there a little early just to make sure because I saw the shots fired and it worried me. Two sixty three twenty three on store robbery. I don't think we're going to pick up on them here, TBH. I think they are gone. Jesus. I know that there's also that open apartment around here somewhere. Code for it, Star Robert. But I can never for the life of me remember exactly where that is. Try to get Bundy to join him. What did Snow try to get Bundy to join him for? Him? Oh, declare war on the locals. Yes. I mean, Bundy kind of declared war on the locals. You're 20 kind on of. that code 6 area as well. Yeah, I've been checking nooks and crannies around here, and I'm not, uh, I'm not seeing too much. I got a feeling they, uh, after that shot fired, call probably dipped out. Yeah, that is probably a very safe estimation. Uh, if you have a long rifle, keep it on your persons if these guys were spotted with AKs. For also double up. I'm currently solo. Is anybody uh, riding with three? Uh, you can uh, you can pop in with me if you'd like. I'd hate to get shot on my own and end up uh, just hand on them in sixteen. I was, uh, I was keeping eyes on that, uh, I was keeping eyes on this fellow back here who just left the tattoo parlor, but, uh... Oh. Yeah, I, uh, I scoped uh, around, Can we get a warrant written up uh, for the commercial robbery that Tyrone Begums was in? Can we get a warrant for the commercial robbery that Tyrone Begums was in before the storm? FCA. Uh, 
And Daryl, feel free to reference that uh, report you created in there, in the warrant. Maybe I think that's one of our fucking lawyers. Who is that really? Yeah, Josiah Douglas. That's him, right? I didn't recognize him with no fucking shirt on. <laughs> uh, that's reassuring. 233 from 299. Send it. Can you come down to PD? Uh, we need to have a conversation about the original stop of that red car. Earlier in shift. Uh, he was talking about them holding up in, uh... Which red car? Uh... Home the one that Tyrone here, uh, allegedly stole. I think yeah. up near like, the Vinewood area. He said a model home, and I think I know which one he's talking about, but just in case. Oh, they must be running some kind of thing here. Oh, get her. I, I'm terrible about actually checking the bulletin board. Um, yeah, there's a home somewhere up in the hills here that... Uh, I'd say maybe two, three nights ago, Harper was in a helicopter and she actually <laughs> lowered it down to the window and saw everybody sitting in it. Holy shit, look at all the shit that's going on here. I feel like we're gonna make a scene. Hey, 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 what they got going on inside? We're gonna go suck down the blood of, uh, you know, uh, of children. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna have, uh, innocent, we're gonna innocent have a people. Silence. Is that where all the goddamn children keep going? Is that why I don't see none? <laughs> yep, that's where they are. Look at that. Look at we're vampires, man. Uh, I can tell. Yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> fucking weird even doing that, mate. I'll be honest. It'll be okay. You just gotta let loose, okay? You gotta yeah. relax. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to cut loose, mate. <laughs> just cut loose. It ain't easy to cut loose when you're sitting there making slurping sounds like you're drinking a fucking exactly. juice. What the hell? Yeah. What do you guys have on it your is... backs? Oh, uh, this is my uh, this is my rifle. This is my gun. You have two M16s like out. Yeah. Can I see them? Can I have one? You cannot have one. You're right. crazy. <laughs> Can I hold it? Uh, you are nuts. Yeah, you are you are ballsy. Not. Yeah, we're looking. How is this car uh, carrying uh, you? Yeah, we're looking for some folks. That's all. God <laughs> damn. Well, it wasn't I us. Mean, no, yeah, I don't, re I don't reckon it was. Bye bye. Let's hope it never is. I don't much fancy uh, being incapacitated by them and having them suck out all my blood. Yeah, what in the hell is this? All these people all dressed up in uh, all these monochromes and whatnot. I don't know. It's like an emo name. You uh, you don't reckon recognize no vehicles here or nothing, do you? No, no. Yeah. I got a feeling going to a goddamn uh, vampire right. party probably ain't uh, really a better idea. Oh, nine nine twenty three. Two three three same traffic. Maybe one day, you know, they'll they'll broaden their horizons. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that little model home that's up in the hills, I think it's like a up in this area somewhere. No, where it's at exactly? I, I got no idea. Uh, I've got a vague recollection. I've driven by it a couple of times. Is it over here to our right and hold on? Two sixteen coming out of evil. Yeah, shit, maybe not. Uh, might be one of these up in here. Absolutely no idea. Oh, 
house is closed. Okay. Well, this one, uh, which one's foreclosed? On right, um, I guess it's yeah, it looks like it is. This one right here. I like your style. I heard that. Come on. Yeah, I'll be honest, I'd mostly be fucking guessing. Probably recognize it if I fucking saw it, but I've really just been looking for a car at any one of these. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at as well. Yeah, because if they're just kind of squatting somewhere out in the open, then uh, yeah, that in and of itself should be fucking easy enough, right? Yep. Okay. I'm just surprised that they're potentially squatting up here in the hills and uh, and not back down on the south side. Well, if they're running around the goddamn pink cage with the rifles, they might be... Uh, Keeping shit in their fucking hotel rooms there or something. Oh, I bet you're right. Yeah. Well, so we have them ID'd uh, at these places with class two weapons. We got pictures of them at the door. Literally, we at the room number. Do you think that's enough for a search warrant? Uh, well, we'd have to identify specifically which fucking property we're trying to search. Uh, I think that's the biggest hurdle at the moment. It is room 14, and I've got a, I've gent, I'm being serious, i got a Polaroid of them, like, walking into the room. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that's probably enough for a fucking search warrant, then, if they walked in with, uh, I guess the big problem is we got to bring them into custody, right? Because if the thing we're right. looking for is a rifle, uh, we almost have to bring him into custody and say, look, he didn't have the rifle on him no more. Ah, uh, understood. I don't see no cars parked outside the church. Uh, we could uh, potentially do a drive through of the south side, but I'm not really looking to take the fight down that way. Uh, let's let's check it out, but just uh, take it easy. Yeah. We'll not swing, particularly uh, keen on getting shot again. More likely to happen down there than up here. Yeah, well, looks like the only thing down there is still that same vehicle. Well, we could swing through the back alleyway, see if there's anybody moseying around in there. will forever you... fucking hate that I have to hit this button three goddamn times to turn this same. light on. Same. <laughs> the things I would do to have that fixed in a, in a uh, photo book. Like, uh, my god. It is so annoying. Were you in that back alley when we were uh, pushing in the front? Uh, yeah, I was. I was still staying kind of mobile, though. I circled around the uh, pink cage a couple times. I had uh, I had Daryl to duck in the driver's seat and back a car up. So that you could cover. Yeah, I was actually pulling around the front when I saw y'all doing that. Yeah, a lot of fucking muzzle cars pulling through here at the moment. No kidding. Looking forward to the day we can seize every single one of them being purchased with drug money. 
Well, hopefully sooner rather than later. I think we're still waiting on Flake to be a little more cooperative with us. Because it uh, certainly would be nice if we could uh, requisition somebody's bank records directly from Fleco rather than uh, tipping them off that we're doing everything. Okay. No yeah, well, I didn't see no familiar faces or no purple down there. Uh, we'll turn down yeah, this. Feeling, uh, feeling reckless. Yeah, we'll turn down this way and then we'll go north on Brogue. Okay. He's going to let everyone know a squad car patrolled through their block. Yep. Oh no, whatever they're going to fucking do, shoot at uh, us. They're, they're going to shake in their boots. <laughs> yeah, what are they going to do, shoot at us? Yeah. For the, what, fourth, fifth night in a row? Yeah, it ain't like they can really pump their level of aggression up any fucking more than they already have. So true. Anybody tell you earlier in that situation they flipped their car about 30 seconds into the chase? Uh, yeah, I heard that. Uh, I guess there was like a foot bail and, and that happening at the same time. Yep. They went and found another car and brought it back trying to flip over their stratum. Jesus fucking Christ. Now, they sure are a big fan of that fucking stratum, considering that they abandon it to just try to shoot at us every time they drive it. There's about three spots in this city that they can squeeze through a gap. Can't. Twitching will be on I, I think that's about 100% why they like it so much. Well, uh, I reckon having a motor unit pretty much helps with that. Yeah, true. The only danger of that is with this particular group, they've got no problem just uh, leaning through their back, leaning through their back window and shooting our motor units. Yeah. Yeah, this other spot over here is another dangerous location that I've noticed. Uh, I ain't never seen anybody run up here, but in the event that they chose to. Um, is green silos is building across yeah. the, uh, the building directly to our right here. Oh. Uh, you see that, the uh, traffic stop. What the fuck makes this traffic stop more active than the av average traffic Dispatch stop? from 263. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see that door up there? That uh, that hooks into an L shape and leads out to the direct right of us, and then there's another ladder that leads up to that water tower, uh, which uh, it makes uh, this another one of those uh, fortress-like roofs. Uh, there is another angle. No, all of the exits you get on the highway and starve them out. Yeah, that's actually not the worst strategy in the world because you can uh, get just about an even line of sight with them on top of that building. Yeah, there's another way up right here, but it's two fucking ladders, so it's goddamn suicide. <laughs> also, been making it a habit if I stage up somewhere to put down a put down a little barricade. I uh, provided security at City Hall today for the uh, AG's announcement. I was planning to do it tomorrow for the mayoral announcement, but uh, for swearing, but uh, oh, we were up on the roof there and had a little, a little makeshift bunker. It's kind of good. Oh yeah, that's a great vantage. Yeah. And got hard cover. And you can pinch it by getting on the roofs on the other side too. So. Perfect. 
I would uh, I would like to start setting up some tactical Music training to uh, Boulevard, teach people how to shot. properly uh, hold these Apple locations arm. down. Cause, like a uh, black sports car. Uh, yeah, it seems sports. like every time that we uh, encounter down. something along these lines, we uh, we wind up. Where's that unconscious citizen? On the ground. It's up by an officer. They're like already present. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, dispatch 278. What's the status of that unit that's near the uh, unconscious individual? I believe it's 218, if I'm not mistaken. It's a mobile 38 instead of a stationary one. Uh, can we get a unit over to 218? Two sixty-three from two twenty. Is that the one on the traffic stop? Yeah, I believe it might be. You could go check it out. I think that uh, I think your idea is uh, is very much needed. If you work on that at all, and there's any way I can assist in either the training itself or uh, planning for it, let me know because I'd be happy to help. Yeah, it might be something as simple as just like one hour a week being like, all right, we're going to this location and uh, yep. demonstrating what the location appears like and what the uh, tactical advantages and disadvantages therefrom are. You know, uh, I was working with Poppy yesterday, which reminds me I need to take a picture for her. Uh, we're mapping out. Um, she's making another pamphlet, which I just love so much. Um but the, the tunnels, a lot of people are really confused <clears throat> by it, but it's actually like quite simple if somebody just like tells you, you know, maps out where yeah. you can go. So the uh, the, um, the only confusing part about the tunnels are the uh, is the mission road side of things because everything kind of uh, bleeds together a bit over there. Yeah, there's uh, what Mikey lovingly calls the treeway, which is that that room where you can go all the way over to. Uh, the highway or continue to mirror park or go up to mission row yeah so i think honestly if you know where each of those little uh spots go it, it simplifies everything like that nobody watching the pink cage anymore yeah two seven eights has swung by it a couple of times but we are not actively watching it if we're going to serve this warrant i'd like to keep eyes on it so that they're not moving shit out while we're you know actually doing the work And for styles, go uh, post up. We, uh, we'll keep swinging by here to check on it. 10 4. 2637 in back of vehicle, going back 10 8. Yeah, who the fuck is this goddamn unit? Masters. Oh, this Matthew? Yeah, is it Matthew, is that you? That's Wolf. Oh. Uh, uh, if y'all want to come in the uh, back, this is 236 like, plus one, we're going to take over. Been got been knocked out or stout, I don't know. Yeah, I got gotcha. uh, If y'all want to come in the back to get okay. a better angle, I don't know what's going on. I'm just on back door duty. So, But I just had the uh, had the lawyer of the place come out and ask if the owner has been seeing. Uh, I don't know. So, okay. I don't know what's going on. No, right. Little apprehension uh, about doing this with the weapons we have on our back. But. Yeah. Um. Fuck. Well, shit. What's the worst that could fucking happen? Two thirty-six from two sixty-three. I suppose. Yeah, uh, two seven eight. We're gonna be stepping out of the tequila a lot to uh, perform a welfare check on the officer inside. Um, There's already there's already an officer in here. I think they're I think they had a unit inside already. You guys there's a squad car parked over there, but I don't know anything going on. Gotcha, all right.
It's so it's so weird with a streamer mode. Yeah, me neither. Uh, I mean, I mean, oh, there we go. All right, he's going out front with them. No, we're at. We got uh, we got eyes on the unit that's in there. They're uh, they're walking out the oh. front now. Thank you for letting us in, fella. Yeah, no worries. They were hanging on there. Uh, 23 to PD, we got a new vehicle here in the parking lot of the pink cage. another Nora, and she's ruining my life. Can you describe it? And the black four-door sedan. Is it parked in front of the pool? Yeah, 10-4. Okay. Not a new car. Apparently, I don't remember seeing it. I, yep, uh, yeah, yeah. Last, and we, we swung by a couple times, it's in there too. Yeah, well, he was just doing a welfare check on you to make sure you yeah, right. I'm just going to sit right here yeah, in the parking lot. We uh, had and some oh, concerns from yesterday that yeah. uh, something might go down here, so I was checking in. Well, you and also you looking know. for uh, uh, Tyrone. Yeah, no, I got you. We uh, we drove by earlier before you got here and uh, checked to make sure every all the cars and stuff were all right. Um, but, okay, all right. Well, it doesn't seem like they're giving you no trouble or nothing. I just so. don't want nope, nobody getting shot the, uh, at the establishment that happened to be in the lawyer uh, pool. I don't want paperwork. So. Okay. No, all right, beautiful. Well, if you, uh, I'd recommend pull your car up a little closer just in case you need to run and get a crappy radio. Uh, we'll do, sir. All right. Good work. How do you solve it? Yeah, I reckon I'm going to have to make that little fellow one of our first detectives more than likely. <laughs> Master I'd agree with uh, what I've seen. Yeah, he's a pretty good one. Yeah, there's other. Uh, to, uh, hmm. I, I was going to see if you've talked to uh, Frederick. He seems he was interested in CI work uh, before he got hired, but he's got a mind for it. Uh, you mean uh, Frederick Price? That's correct. The guy that. <laughs> Yes, the one that shot uh, Alice in the cell, that yeah, one. Yeah, might be a little hard to get him undercover. Uh, you, know, you can't really wipe off that whole you just walked into a fucking window look. <laughs> Wait, you were going to mention somebody before, I think. Uh, no, I was just going to say that generally speaking, it's um, difficult to select who else I would want on a detective unit or something like that just cause uh, I've had so many fucking issues with people just running their mouth about everything lately <laughs> I mean personally oh, what, I'm, uh, what I'm looking for when I look for a goddamn detective is I'm looking for somebody who uh, buttons their fucking shit down and actually does their goddamn reports and uh, it's kind of few and far between outside of our command staff. Yep. And then you add on top of that being able to actually keep information close to their chest and then this narrows down so fast. MCSDU. <laughs> I'll keep my eye out for people that might be a good candidate though follow it up with paperwork yeah if you if you see anybody i know washington was going to uh start getting something rolling uh and the chief was also going to get start getting something rolling but given uh, is gonna get something rolling. yeah uh, but given how much the chief has on her plate i'm gonna empower washington to do what he needs to do with it so i think that's a good idea if anything, he'll be his own roadblock. It seems like he was, um, if anything, interested in staying as far as he could away from it. But, uh, yeah, I think that'd make know, him he's... pretty good for a supervisory role. People come to him for advice and shit, but he ain't got to like, respond to murders or whatever by himself. 
I would have recommended Eo, but I think he's shown interest in joining the Marshals, and I don't know what other bullshit he got himself tied into. And uh, yeah. uh, when when did Geo express interest in the goddamn Marshals? Uh, when all of the uh, bullshit was going down, uh, I think a lot of people are just really tired of all the the power struggle. And uh, he just expressed he might be interested in getting out. Yeah. I don't think that's happened, though, so I don't know. Maybe he changed his mind. Yeah, well, the thing for me is that the power struggle currently is no longer internal. It is now external. And even that seems to have quieted down a little bit, so... Well, I'm running out of ideas of where we can check to see if these people are uh, laying low at. Almost makes me wonder if they're, I don't know, in the middle of fucking nowhere cooking fucking meth or something. It could be. Yeah, it was interesting as well, because when I was talking about the Marshall SOPs earlier, uh... Barb also mentioned that she had apparently received a copy directly from the Attorney General earlier. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> so is she... Is she one foot out the door, or does she just have a close relationship with them all? Uh, I'm not particularly sure, to be honest with you. 263, hmm. 23, back to Davis PD. Barb's good, it'd be nice to, you know, keep her around. Yeah, no, I think Barb, yeah, she's a pretty good one. Honestly, I'll, uh, yeah, I think pretty much everybody that we've got remaining's got at least some redeeming quality about them. I'd say that's pretty accurate. There's still a little, bit see, of, uh, a little bit of dumb fuckery to be ironed out of everybody, but that'll come with time. I think Harper's also putting together another academy, something. Uh, I didn't hear anything about that. She wanted to do one for our AU folks. Oh yeah, I remember that. I think she was also considering doing more hiring during, uh... I don't even know fucking how she knew Mary. I feel like every time she talks about Shift 1 and I talk about Shift 1, we're talking about two different fucking shifts. <laughs> uh, I would like to just have that stuff written down on paper somewhere to make sure we're all okay. We're all talking about Good lord. Paper. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't disagree. Um, but she's talking about, I mean, for the EU and the AU shifts, I guess I can put it. Yeah, she's talking about getting uh, more people hired for those. She was under the impression that we didn't hire nobody, but I told her we hired nine fucking people for those shifts. They just, uh, I ain't fucking seen none of them. Yeah, they, they got hired, and I think some of them migrated, and then... Yeah. Others are. Well, I mean, part of the problem, too, is lack of command in those ships, but there's a lack of command because there's a lack of fucking officers, so it's a goddamn circle. Right. How do you promote people if you've got nobody to promote? Nobody's getting, uh... Nobody's getting quality training or experience in that shift. Yeah. Well, and there's absolutely fucking nothing that I can do about that, so... <laughs> Unfortunately for them, too, I do think that uh, their opportunity to get field experience so is just less at night uh, or in their hours, because it's quiet around here. Send it. I think we should just yeah, load up a bunch of cadets with helicopters at, at 3 in the morning and, <laughs> and see if they can find the meth cooks that keep happening while yeah, I'm off duty. Thank you. Yeah, the, uh, I mean, for a while we had Enzo who was on that shift, but even towards the conclusion of his uh, tenure with the Los Santos Police Department, he was pretty much just working shift two as well, so. Two seventy-eight. 
you 20. We're 23 at this uh, store robbery in Trumash. Uh, I don't see anything too unusual down there. Uh, on the road. But we do have an ATM robbery right fucking here. We're at 76 ATM <clears throat> robbery at just down the street. Uh, 299 from 233, uh, report's been updated. You son of a bitch. Oh. Two twenty, stepping out of my vehicle. We got a guy inside with a mask on. Car outside, the two-door muscle car. Dispatch, plate. Dispatch, you there? Send it. Go for the dispatch. Uh, she stepped out to make contact with him. I'll, uh, let me try to get a plate reading for you. We got individuals saying, "What are you doing, SA motherfucker?" Inside, holding a goddamn pea shooter. Uh, we got uh, plate uh, Juliet Quebec Bravo 152. Oh, the big gun is unrelated. Uh, could we uh, could we get any additional units up here? Uh, heavy. Maybe uh, maybe one who's not carrying an assault rifle because that's all we've got in this car at the moment. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure one either. I, I was just rolling uh, with We that. are at the 24-7 off of Encino Road. Hey, bro. Yeah. 4263. Uh, what, what, what are you doing in there? Uh, the target vehicle is going to be a... you uh, robbing an ATM? Oh, you got another guy in there. Tampa. Okay, there's two people in there. Uh, it's got white Wait, accent You're not going to believe this, but that vehicle is going to come back to uh, sorry, Katya Monikov. Wait, how in the... what? Oh, okay. Well, she's fucking dead. She's dead, oh. I... Say that that's stolen. <laughs> did, did she have a will executed? You, you need to be get, get going. Not to my knowledge. That they want to leave. Y'all have a hostage. I'm not letting you out of this fucking building until we figure something out. Alright, uh, the individuals are attempting to leave the store at this time. Uh, okay. Gray is enga in still engaging in negotiations while we wait on 77s. I'm not giving you a fucking helicopter. Look, I tell you what. You put your gun on the guns away and come out with your hands up. We can end this without anybody getting shot. The accent How the changing. fuck did they get Katja I'll tell you Markov's what, let me put one on for you. Alright, listen up. Here's how it's gonna go. Alright. You're gonna put your guns away and you're gonna run to your car. That's right. All right. All right. You're going to do it when I get to one. Are you ready? What? The what? Going to the car? That's correct. Oh, why don't we just walk? Hey. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. All right. Uh, you, better, are, you better keep that goddamn accent up. Yeah, these yeah. individuals are exiting <laughs> the, the store. The accent is not uh, slipping at all anymore. They're uh, going to be entering their vehicle at this time and getting see, ready to take see, off. See, see, patron. All right, vehicle's taking off southbound in Sino Road. Take primary. Yeah, they All took right. a jump up on the Great Ocean Highway. You can uh, take the comms over. We are heading southbound Great Ocean Highway. Car is uh, tan in color, two-door muscle car with a black stripe down the center. 63, go ahead and attach. We can have <clears> one more unit here. It's a uh, white stripe. 63 went up ahead. White stripe, correction. Uh, both individuals are armed. One's wearing a, a gray hoodie. I believe the other was wearing a black hoodie. Continue in southbound Great Ocean. 
We're going to be taking the uh, base city incline. We're going to left and then meteor right, southbound base city out. <clears throat> left, eastbound, Del Perro. Correction, Marathon out. Jesus. Right, southbound, North Rockford. Another right, westbound. You're gonna left, going through the shopping area down towards Burger Shop. They'll be coming out to the left, eastbound, San Andreas. Left, northbound, Rockford. <clears throat> Thought they were fucking turning there. They're taking a right, they're going through the movie studio. Head needs found. Where is every other fucking unit of that? Uh, they are close behind. Continuing eastbound, looks like we're gonna be going through an alleyway here past Portola Drive, the clothing store. Continuing eastbound, past City Hall. We're uh, continuing up past, uh, or by the Fleeca, uh, going northbound through Hollick. We'll be taking a left westbound, Eastbourne Way. Correction, Spanish Ave. Right, northbound, up towards the, uh, up towards the cliff. Right, eastbound, Eclipse Boulevard. <clears throat> How you doing, great, Cap? Yeah, I'm fucking trying, dude. That local was trying to ruin us on that one. No kidding. <laughs> Alright, we're taking a left going northbound on uh, Las Lagunas Boulevard. Uh, 1050, they try to go through an alleyway here behind the uh, burger joint. It's gonna be coming out on, uh, what is this, Alta Street? Yeah. Going through more alleyways. Go ahead and parallel there. 263, you're doing great. Taking a left. Northbound. Going up into the hills here. <clears throat> yeah, Power Street. Over towards Bay Tree Canyon. Right. Surprised that their car didn't start smoking or anything from that. Continuing north up this road, uh, <clears throat> Both units are right behind us still. All right. uh, we might be pulling off road here off Atrian Canyon. We're going uh, up into the hills. Got a dirt path. Heading towards Mount uh, Mountain Drive. We're slipping off here. <clears throat> Coming down onto Marlow Drive, heading eastbound. Yeah, that fucked our goddamn axles. Yep. Probably gonna be spin slipping around a little bit. Continuing eastbound, Marlow Drive. We're gonna be coming out uh, close to Sonora Freeway. Seems like he's got a little trouble uh, with the brakes. <clears throat> yeah, it seems that way. That head-on collision probably uh, messed some shit up for him. Yeah. Uh, we're continuing uh, northbound on Mount Hound Road. You guys continue forward through there. Hey, for Do you have any mace on you? I do not. No, right. Uh, in that case, you uh, you take over the driver's seat. We got a bail. All right. Four. Continuing down Mountain Road. Okay. 
<laughs> I love these pursuits with these rotating lights. And how, like, the blue and the red just passes over them every nice, now and then. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's kind just of a... pull it uh, over. At least they're taking, us, uh, taking us over here so we get a pretty view while we chase them down. That's what I'm saying. This is wonderful. Perfect time of night. We're taking a left heading southbound on Bay Tree Canyon. Then we should uh, imagine if they stopped for the Vinewood sign. Get some pictures. <laughs> Continuing southbound, Bay Tree. Speeds are picking up here. You're pulling your way down. Oh, that was almost not very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, recovered it. Continuing southbound, Bay Tree, they're flying all over the place. They're going to be coming out uh, right next to the 24 7. Looks like they're taking a left eastbound onto uh, Clinton Ave. And taking a right southbound, Tower Street. Do, 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 do. Continuing southbound, Tower Street, crossing Howick. Like they're taking a right westbound, gonna be coming out San Andreas Ave. Continuing westbound, San Andreas. Taking a left, we're gonna be going through the red garage. Southbound. Coming out this pussy. Taking a right, westbound this pussy. <laughs> taking a right, going through right uh, the white garage. Northbound. Left, West San Andreas. Ah, now these are tactics I'm familiar with. Left, Southbound Cole A. Right, Westbound with Lucy. Left, Southbound. <clears throat> that's the. Uh, you even got the That's little soul. Right, Westbound. <laughs> I got it from him, sir. Uh, we're crossing over some grass heading westbound up onto uh, South Rockford Drive. We're going north, so uh, he just set up a cyclist or moped driver. <clears throat> northbound, South Rockford Drive. Left, oh. westbound, 1050. We're hanging a U turn. We're heading east. See if we can box them in here. We'll be merging onto Del Perro Freeway, eastbound. <laughs> he went, oh. <laughs> Continuing eastbound, Del Perro. <clears throat> Remember spacing, guys. Keep a little bit of space there. Appreciate the tenacity. We've got an armed car coming up on our sixth high rate of speed. <clears throat> and four. Go ahead and uh, give them an order to uh, leave or, or uh, actually, do we have any 10 8 uh, Hey, firm, they got off. They got off. And four. All right, we're exiting here out into the grass. Heading southbound towards uh, Popular. Having flashbacks earlier tonight, so I got <laughs> shot. Probably be on desk duty until my arm heals up. Continuing over the train tracks into the uh, the canals here, gonna be heading southbound towards towards Davis. <clears throat> Crossing over. Continuing southbound. Turn the lights up on the car. Yep. All right, we're coming out uh, by uh, Little Bighorn, going along the train tracks. We'll be, I think this comes out on Clinton. Uh, we'll be out on the south side here in a sec. Or Carson, I guess. 
<clears throat> Wait, where in the at northbound car they are. Yeah, they're getting hard to see at night. Yeah. 32 plus 1, 23. Continuing northbound, left, westbound on uh, Davis Ave. <clears throat> Right, northbound through this parking lot, through this parking lot, down into the canal. Uh, they might be coming out on all. Right, take right here, take right here. I think they went up on Alta instead of cutting down here. Somebody, uh, 36 on Alta and Innocent. I say 36. Code 6. Hey, Mark. I believe vehicle was last spotted heading northbound Alta Street. The tan two-door muscle car, white stripe down the center. Occupied two <clears> times. <throat> Individuals were uh, both masked, one wearing a black uh, hoodie, one wearing a gray. Little well, Duke's a hazard jump there. Uh, they were smart to turn the lights off. Yeah, that was very intelligent because I could not fucking see them anymore. Uh, check around at various, because uh, they had to be low on gas, because I'm low as oh, shit on sure. gas. 233 from 299. You were, uh, you were locked the fuck in. That's some good driving. Yeah, I ain't half bad in pursuit sometimes. Although I would specify sometimes. Uh, all right. So if I'm them and I'm relatively low on fuel, I kind of want to get out of the area. Two, three, 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 three. Yeah, I'd be the gas station when I hit. Wouldn't be any of these on the south side to be honest. No. They'd have enough fuel to get up to the north part of the city. Or I like what you're thinking. Yeah, Mirror Park. Yeah, well, Mirror Park and. Um, Popular because yeah. <clears throat> uh, nobody Two thinks that's popular. One. We're, we're code six to some gas stations. Uh, I believe they're probably low on fuel. Hey, firm, we're code six in a construction site just uh, north of Volta. Well, especially since that was apparently Katya Markov's vehicle while they were driving. Uh, it's what? Yeah, I don't even know how the fuck they got their goddamn hands on that. You got a second. Two six three going uh, point three to Davis PD. As the, the last I heard, she jumped off a roof and splatted on the ground. Yeah, I watched the coroner crack her open. She was most certainly deceased. Well, shit. Wait, what was... Oh, no. no different car. Sometimes after a long pursuit like that, every car starts looking like the one I was chasing. <laughs> I believe 233 is uh, staking out the pink cage. You might be off radio if you want to give him a wellness check. Yeah, we'll do a we'll do a pass by. Ten four. We'll actually we'll swing by and let him know, and then twenty five with you wherever. Oh shit! I can't. You gotta get out of the car. I fucking okay. locked it. <laughs> Most important thing is this: this uh, report gets done, because uh, then we get the warrant. Drafted up here. All right, I stepped uh, out for a sec. You need us to come relieve you? Is that what you're saying? Put some of my eyes on this fucking door <laughs> until we get the warrant. Ten two four. two seven two is now ten forty one ten eight. Any actives? I think we're calling that eighty uh, UTL. So uh, that would be a negative. Yeah, so I'm I'm confused. Is he is he suggesting we swing by and relieve him from his watch, or is he just 
I believe so, yeah. So he can, uh, the, there's a prosecutor. Make sure I'm speaking quietly here. There's a prosecutor. Bob, I can, see, I can start working on it. Did they make any suggestions of what they wanted? Right up that warrant for them. Yeah, hey, friend, well, when you get down here, Something. you can just talk to the prosecutor. Yeah, all right. I love how these something. mechanics just steal my fucking gas sometimes. I've noticed that too. What the hell? Although I will say, sometimes they put gas in if you're really you, Provided to you by cash. Give and take. It's uh, this one right over here on the corner that we're supposed to be trying to keep eyes on, right? Uh, yeah. That southwest corner there. That's correct. The one just in front of the island of that stairs. 276 yeah, plus one going to be 76 Davis PD. Normally when I go on a, sna uh, a stakeout, Got some trail mix and uh, a couple <laughs> bottles of water, maybe a beer. Yeah, I am woefully underprepared because I put all my fucking burgers and beers away for to carry this goddamn rifle. Yep. <laughs> you know this backpack I'm carrying around? Yeah. It's full of 556. Five, uh, I'm almost tempted to ask the chief if we can get some kind of police issue duffel bag or something that we can. Uh, Start keeping shit in. If I could have literally anything that looked less ridiculous than this, I would be real happy. Yeah. I wore it for two days and decided I probably shouldn't because it seemed like it was undermining my authority. <laughs> I'm not kidding either. I genuinely feel like people listen to me less. Well, it doesn't help that you look like you're uh, a police officer who's on their way to get to class after work. Yep. <laughs> 289 plus one, show us in round to that latest ATM robbery. Uh, who in the hell is 32? 32 is Maddie, I thought. Interesting. All right, she's up there near that um, uh, catfish view in the lighthouse and whatnot. I wonder who she's rolling with because they're not, uh, their call signs blank. Uh, that is a good question. Uh, 232 from 278 direct. 289, the vehicle, the ATM robbery plus one. Ah, it's probably, uh, probably Biggs then. That was that, the two of them that's over there. Yep. Now, yeah, we've got to get Biggs to uh, update his call sign then. Captain Nolan 272. Yeah, uh, send it. What's your 20 currently? Uh, I'm currently staking out the Pink Cage Motel. All right. Uh, matter of fact, I'll meet you over there. Uh, a firm, try to pull your car up almost directly alongside ours so that we're a bit tucked back. I'm gonna bring a motor back. Uh, Sergeant Gray, you be able to come down to PD? Not presently. 10 four. I can radio for you when I'm back down there. I can come to you if possible. Uh, we need the photos uh, from from the oh. CI. Uh, four. Me and yeah, they're all in my locker. Yeah, me and Gray, we can make our way down there, but uh, somebody's got to relieve us of the pink cage because we can't be there and here at the same time. Tell you what, Murdoch, come on up here, and then we'll head down to Davis, and you can stick around here for a little bit. Uh, you want me to come up there in a four wheeler or on my two wheeler? Uh, I think your two wheeler's just up, just fine. Probably more discreet, It'd be better. Uh, you want me to? Uh, sorry, that's in the pink cage. In cage, we're uh, on the north side, tucked in an alleyway. We can fill you in on some of the details and what room you need to watch when you get here. 
Uh, I already know the room number. It's uh, 14, ain't it? Okay, firm. But does he know where room 14 is? Going back because I'm actually going to be impressed. Only 77s. All right, yeah. Murdoch, can you point to me which door 14 is? From here? Yep. Uh, let me <laughs> And he goes, going for camera. Yeah, it's on the second floor. Yeah, I see it. All right, perfect. No, we're at, before we pull off what, uh, what you need to chat about, Murdoch. Yeah, if you got better things to do, you got better things to do. I'll talk about it later. Yeah, no, uh, we're just, uh, we got a couple minutes till we need to get down to the station. Yeah. Uh, long story short, I think the Attorney General's office is looking for approval to uh, put me on a 30 day period with the Monster Service. And uh, Hopper hasn't been around to review or approve that. Hey, you, uh, was something you approached them with interest about, or did they come to you? It was a combination. I was uh, working with them on getting them some information on some ongoing cases that were of interest to them. And <clears throat> I said, well, I wish I could help you out more, but I'm kind of limited right now. And they said, well, come on over. I mean, I'd already kind of thrown, told them I was interested, potentially, so it was 50-50. No, right. Well, they won't put you on probationary period. You got, uh, you got high command approval for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, right. uh, this, what uh, cases were you uh, providing information to them on? One uh, a whole bunch of cases. Uh, really what I've been Where's doing this, is put, uh, putting together a comprehensive list of all the known criminal organizations. Uh, was also getting them information about uh, involvement of uh, the lost and uh, dealing and stuff, as well as uh, people who have been pushing LSD on the south side. That's pretty much it. No, so those man. those three things and a uh, <clears throat> I think I have a break in a sixty five thousand dollar robbery. Interesting. All right. Well, my if, suspects uh, are oh. uh, Wait, yeah, Rocco Russo and that. Sean Kelly. Okay. What's the what's the rationale? What what, what led you to that conclusion? Well, uh, I. I'd arrested Nixon a little while ago, and uh, uh, I, once I saw the report in there, I reached out to him and said, hey, let's talk about this, because, you know, he's, uh, him and I have a working relationship, we'll say. Um, so he gave me some more information, including a very thorough description of the two individuals that did it. And... Uh, uh, just by your, happenstance, I was out front of the PD when uh, Sean Kelly, I don't know, got himself Davis? hurt, needed a ride to the hospital, yeah, and he was way. with Rocco Russo. And both those two individuals matched to a T the description that he gave me of the two persons who robbed him. So I snapped a picture, showed it to Nixon, and he confirmed that Rocco Russo who looked exactly like the fellow who uh, who did him dirty. Well, that sounds like you might have enough to pull a couple bank records and see if anybody's made any large deposits lately. Yeah, I've already talked to Mr. Roger Hawthorne about that. He's, uh, he's working on putting the paperwork together. No, right. Well, like I said, um, you know, in relation to that other thing, you've uh, you got command approval. Do what you got to do, Murdoch. I appreciate it, sir. I'll, uh, as I told Miss Gray earlier, my loyalty is with the police department, and if I can... Help, uh, let's say, uh, build working relationships between the two agencies and take what I learned from the marshals and bring it back to an investigative capacity within the police department. That that would be probably the ideal outcome. Well, no, right. Well, yeah, we're gonna get down here and get them uh, what they need for this warrant. All right, we'll keep an eye on door 14. Thank you. All right. Well, that's so, you fucking know, disappointing. You uh, not that he wants to go to the marshals, but that he just, uh... 
Yeah. Pulled the, uh, a bunch of, uh, investigations excuse to me when he knows he and I are working on something that, uh... I have been, uh, working, uh, I've been working a case involving, uh, some Russian Thanks folks around service. town. Uh-huh. 276, uh, same traffic. And one of those leads, which, uh, Mr. Murdoch is apprised of, um... Uh, connects directly into the only investigation that the Attorney General's office has been running for the better part of a week. Uh, and he knows that, and I know that. So for him to play the, uh, I've been working with them on multiple fronts thing instead of just being outright honest with me is a little disappointing. Hell yeah! Welcome back. I wonder if he... Great didn't communicate something yeah, effectively yeah. or yeah, yeah. Wait, sometimes no. people have a habit Rams of leaving out details that uh, oh wow the front of this is getting crunched in yeah i don't there's uh, that speed bump is a real monster sometimes <laughs> i know he's been uh i think Chatting with uh, probably Enzo and Muffy about some investigations for a good bit now, but uh, I don't know the specific. Well, yeah, I'm of the personal opinion that, um, you know, we had folks in the war who uh, would make it overwhelmingly clear to their command that they did not want to continue to be in uh, Vietnam anymore. And you would occasionally find those individuals, uh, you know, because obviously uh, most leave requests would be denied. Mm -hmm. And you would invariably find those individuals with a gunshot wound in their foot or uh, some other grievous form of bodily injury that necessitated them going home. <laughs> yeah. So I reckon the lesson that I learned from all that was uh, if people want to fucking leave, then just let them... Yeah, you can't keep people here that don't want to be. They're not going to do. Nine plus one, uh, useful work to anyway. Davis PD. The and from the talks I had with him, he does sound like uh, he wants to take the experience from a, a month in the marshals and bring it back here to help uh, set up whatever sort of detective unit we have. But I got a feeling that a month from now, that's going to be pre pretty well underway. So, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I reckon it will. The, uh, the the other problem with that is that uh, yeah, Murdoch's ruffled a couple of unfortunate fucking feathers on his way up the ladder of the Los Santos Police Department. He was bumping heads with a goddamn chief and wasn't generally following advisor orders pertaining to uh, the issuances of warrants. And I remember having to discipline him for his aggression at multiple... Uh multiple scenes yeah he um yeah he never really took feedback on that stuff too kindly neither uh so well i reckon i'm just gonna have to throw some of this fucking ammunition away because it ain't gonna it's not gonna fit in my locker yep i throw a bunch of mine on the ground Okay, I'm gonna scan in some copies of these in the, uh, the other meeting room, and then I'm gonna see who I hand this off to. Uh, 220, I'm 23 at Davis. Uh, I can hand over those photos. Uh, 10 4, we're down in uh, holding. Uh, 10 4, I'll be down in just a sec. I can also, I can attach them to report if, you, if uh, it's helpful. Alright, uh, let's see. Uh, 
they say they were in holding? Oh, there they are. Right here, right here. Uh, I would do the intersection and where it's located in said intersection. All right. Hello, Captain. I see you've donned the helmet today. Yeah, well, you know, it's a dangerous day, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> Any day with a commercial robbery. Yeah. I mean, this isn't the only thing you guys have done today. You've caught another drug trafficker. Noel and I just passed you that. I figured it might be good for you to see him with your own eyes. Yeah, I'm taking a peek here now. Captain Nolan, I've provided uh, Officer Styles here with a copy of the search warrant forms. I believe that he will have that filled out for you. Uh, if I am not mistaken, I believe that uh, I think just about any, any command member can sign off on that to get it submitted over to y'all for the judges and whatnot, right? Uh... Technically, any really officer, as long as they, they are sworn in on Davis them, Brady, as far as I'm aware, around. can make a request for a search warrant. I imagine your own interdepartmental SOPs would require a sign-off by a command member. No, right. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, this group of folks have been working pretty tight knit on this, so I don't, I don't see the need for personal review if you approve it, and uh, you know, they've, uh, they've, they've buttoned it all the way up. Then I don't see no problem with it. I mean, the main piece of evidence are the photos that I believe you've just looked at. Mr. Bigham's entering and exiting a property with a in possession of a firearm. That is in the photos, correct? That's correct, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. That gives you enough probable cause to search the place for any other illicit firearms. And if you can articulate it well enough inside of the search warrant, uh, stolen property. Uh, just make sure you say you're looking for weapons and ammo. People could keep fucking ammunition anywhere that'll let you look at and turn the whole goddamn place upside down. <laughs> you're all aware that if you find other illicit items, you can definitely seize those. You just can't charge them as they're outside the scope of your search. Uh, why would we not be able to charge for them if they're within plain view of what else we're looking for? Well, if they're within plain view, that is fair. But if, you know... They're not within plain view. You know, you're overturning beds and such. They're yeah. hidden behind walls. You never know. Yeah, just make sure you put on there that we're also looking for ammunition for automatic firearms. The bullets are tiny. They could be just about anywhere. Hell, they might be Absolutely. inside the they might be inside the pillows. You might need to cut those open. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll open up the back of a toilet and search in there. I would. I've heard crazier things. Yep. Feel free to leave an upper decker. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm getting ready to go off duty. Is there any other uh, information, advice, general stories, fun bodily facts y'all would like to know from me? <laughs> oh. Uh, no. I'd take uh, one from that two, last call. Here, let me uh, turn my radio off real fast. Well, the most dangerous part of head trauma, in fact, is not damaging the skull because the skull is your thickest bone, uh, nor is it actually direct brain trauma. What you have to worry about is uh, damaging the membrane that surrounds the blood-brain barrier because it's got all these little tiny veins in it. So if your brain shakes around too much in there and it starts wobbling that membrane around, it can cause microscopic tears in those little veins. Uh, which will then bleed out into your skull, slowly increasing pressure until you ultimately just fall asleep and die. <laughs> That's a pretty fun fact. Good yeah. to know. As a reading, you always want to make sure you get an x-ray or whatever when you're at the hospital, just in case. Uh, who, who has the photos so I can... Uh, I've got I them. Wanna... You want them? Yeah, I'm going to go make copies. Okay. All right. Uh, good luck to y'all. Uh, I'll, I'll get a status report from you then tomorrow night. Yeah, help them to get this Look, done. Very also, uh, congratulate Officer Biggs on getting another drug trafficker. Yeah. And, and Biggs has been doing uh, good fucking work from what I've seen. The individual mm. is very upset. Apparently, <laughs> thinks the Biggs cannot count. 
<laughs> was able to find inside said RV 26 different containers containing battery acid, which uh, more than meets the amount required for precursor uh, or charge of drug traffic. Uh, how many drug traffickers does that bring us up to? Two, three? Uh, that's two alone by Mr. Biggs. The, uh, the, fir total. Is the, the first one's just in there for fucking life at this point, right? Uh, so they're all held until trial. Uh, Matthew Martin is handling the first drug trafficker, at least getting the docket set up for it. And I will have a docket posting here within the next hour or so in regards to Mr. Derek Doyle. No, right. Yeah, put Biggs on that list of folks we was talking about earlier, Gray. <laughs> and four. All right. Y'all yeah, have a good evening and uh, kick kick that fucking door in. I hope we find some good shit in there. Sounds good, sir. Oh, yeah. All right, get some sleep, Cap. I'll do my best. <laughs> hey, sir. Hey, yes. Do you want to say, even though we didn't really work much together, I would say it was great working with you. What do you mean it was great working with me? Well, we were all saying, you know what I mean? We were working together out there. Oh, you mean tonight. I thought you were, I don't know, I thought you were fucking dying or something. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not dying, sir. Hell no. <laughs> all right. Well, it was good working with you tonight as well. Uh, yeah. I'm going to be on shift a little bit earlier tomorrow, so if, you've, if you have trouble finding an FTO, just shout out to me, all right? Copy that. Hey, listen here. If you want to work tomorrow together and everything, I'm just going to look for you. How's that? Yeah, it sounds good to me. I'm like, 2.30, this is 2.36. Where the hell is Nolan? <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll be on shift sometime around 7 Eastern, give or take a little bit. 7 Eastern. Copy that. That sounds right about me, too. No, right. I'll see you out there. All right. Hey, have a good, have a good rest of your night. Yeah, well, as good as it can be. <laughs> Uh, dispatch 278-1042. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good night. Uh, Have a good night. Also, if you're still carrying long rifles from that stakeout we did earlier, put them away until we uh, have further activity on that. Do you want us to continue staking this place out? A firm, until you hear otherwise from the folks down on the cells. All right. How you doing? How's it going, Marino? <laughs> Good. You hear the news? Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the Attorney General. Uh, Seventy-six hey, shots why the, fired. Why the fuck is my radio still on? I just signed off duty, and I can still hear it. <laughs> Let's see. Let's... There we go. Well, sign, sign back in. Oh, god damn it. I hate that I can lock this door from so very fucking far away. Yeah, the, uh, the attorney general was uh, bragging like a child who had gotten a good grade in school. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, should, uh, we should have... Uh... Easy time getting this dismissed, I think. So, so, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't worry about it too much based on uh, what you were saying the other night about, uh, you know, uh, your legal acquisition of things and whatnot. Right. Right. I'm, you know, I was in office. I'm not an idiot. Yeah. I might have done some dumb things here, but. And, uh, going to that. I've always told the AG I'm fucking going to help, going to work with him. But, uh, I mean, I guess that was more bishop than anything. Yeah, well, I mean, look, I've got my professional opinion and my professional face that I put on when I'm in there amongst these officers because I, I am attempting to maintain a political atmosphere between people, but strictly speaking... Alan, between, is that you? Your uh, shiny helmet? Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, so I had an idea just now. What a what a time to interrupt. All right. <laughs> God damn it, wait. Oh, am I interrupting something important? Okay. Yeah, you know, two guys talking, you know, just talking <laughs> shop, that's all. Oh, well, if you need me to leave, I can. 
No, no. I think I knew where that, where that was going, sir, so I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, I think you've got a pretty good idea what I was going to fucking say, so... Yeah, I think, uh, I think so. <laughs> I appreciate, uh, appreciate that, and I'll see you two around, all right? All right. Yeah. All right. I'm about to go to bed. What's your idea, Wade? <laughs> all right, so I was just sitting here thinking, you know, those gate people, they, they stand out at the gate all the time. Yeah. And there's lots of people that speed down this road... You know, consistently. They're just always speeding down this road. Yeah. What if the people at the gate had spike strips? So when they see someone coming, <laughs> speeding down this road, they just spike them. Well, uh, for one, I reckon that that would probably be some kind of endangerment, considering that those people could not also perform a detainment on them, so they would just be spiking them because it's funny. <laughs> Mm. Uh, for two, I'm not sure that I trust them with spike strips. Uh, the one fella, he's been working here for a little while, but uh, Miss Chloe there uh, has a rap sheet longer than the papers that I burnt after I ceased working for my former employer. Uh, she's actually looking for an expungement uh, at some point, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I had. Once we, once we get this new MDT system that's been coming soon for about a month now, I'm sure we'll be able to do actual expungements. Oh, shit. Who knows? When we get that new system, maybe the clerks will just throw all the fucking papers out like they throw them out when people fucking die. Yeah, that would also be nice. All right. Well, I'm gonna go to sleep right. in the parking lot. Yep. Good night, Nolan. Take care. <laughs> Good night, Wade. All right, quick, before we get dragged into something else. Ha! Ah! Does Wade stream? I don't think so. I don't think Bionic streams. If he did, we definitely would have raided him by now. chat we are gonna end things off right there our house got an upgrade we have we have our own car beside it now instead of a random other car instead of a random other car now we have our car all right chat well that was a fun night that was a fun night. Enjoyed that. Who do we want to visit? Who's around? Aaron's got a subathon going. You can go visit Aaron. We can go visit Aaron. All right, chat. Go give Aaron on air all the love in the world. We will catch you guys tomorrow at 6 o'clock Central, 7 o'clock Eastern. I'm going to spend tomorrow during the day playing some Diablo. Uh, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you guys then. Good night from me. Good night from Mrs. Gutsy. Speed.